Okay. So I have Drago Reed with me, and I'm Ileana, the Star Traveler. Welcome, Drago. Hey, everybody. I'm super stoked to be here. I've been following a, I've been following her for so long, and I'm I'm glad she took this challenge on. I'm excited to see the results, man. Yeah. So I did a remote viewing because um, I've just been tapping into wild energy of like this interesting everything is so energetic right now and and i i've heard of you like that you're a great qhht practitioner quantum healing hypnosis dolores cannon certified what level are you two oh wonderful how many i'm at my 500th and second session as of yesterday so that was monumental for me yeah, and you recently said that you've started, like you did a hypnosis with somebody else who remembered you from the secret space programs. Lately, it's been numerous people. A lot of people, <clears throat> since I got kind of known with the QHHT a lot, I, I like to attract people from the SSP. I like to people in any of the Monarch programs, any of the MKUltra stuff, I like to deal with the most traumatic people. Mm -hmm. Because my entire life has been traumatic since... I was young. I have pretty much no memories of my childhood and like it never stopped. Mm -hmm. So uh, people started flying out, claiming they were in the SSP and it started turning out and putting them under. And not only are they correct, but they remember me from the programs. They remember seeing me in the dumbs and these separate programs that are outside the earth and stuff. And it's been blowing me away. So it, I got to the point where four people in a row coincidentally all remember me that I just happened to put over under that I didn't even know. And I also just did Matthew Mornian from remember your, your mission. Turns out we know each other and we were in the dumbs together and he had no idea he was in the dumbs either. I was just like, Holy crap. Well, I've, I've talked to him several times and we've done a few shows. He's very curious and has an affinity for the secret space program stuff, like a curiosity to explore and find out where everything leads in it energetically. And he's not afraid to test things and go for it and just see what happens. Is it's like, if you have some inkling of something, go and explore it. So I didn't even know I was friends with you on a social media thing. I just like, he's so interesting. And I listened to your interview with Matthew about the history of the Anunnaki and I'm like spot on. Yeah, that's one thing I love about you is you you reference Anunnaki material for so, from a very notable person, and I've I've followed her material for so long, and like I love that you always talk about the Anunnaki, and you like to kind of disprove other people for certain Anunnaki claims, and they'll say this will be here in Florida, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna remote view it. Yeah, I didn't see that. I don't know what they're talking about. So yeah. I love on your work because like you're the same way like Matthew. You like to test instead of believe people, and you want to find out yourself, kind of like what I'm doing. Yeah, well, I've been, I'm a channeler. I've been channeling source creator for like two years now. And he gave a message of warning that that second coming of the Anunnaki is like a psyop. It's, it, it's, it's not what we think it is. And, and it's just to uh, get people to buy in and kind of give away their soul energy and freedom to something that's not the most positive. And people are like, oh, you don't like the Anunnaki. You don't like you're you're not a fan it's not that at all i was actually warned in the ssp not to trust any anunnaki that are here now and you know like the typical marduk anki and those ones so for me i was like okay take the warning for what it is and see what happens and explore the history like what is the real history of the anunnaki where they came from what they did here what they're still doing here and like, just keep an open mind because not everybody is bad who's an Anunnaki soul in physical form. So I it's like, like, I like Draco. Everybody thinks Dracos are 100% all bad and like they're all the bad guys. It's not even true, man. Like you're allowed to pursue your own, your own wishes up to a point. Like you're allowed to explore what direction you want to go. And people just think it's like a, a universal bad term. Oh, you're a Draco. You're a bad guy. I'm like, no. Like that's saying like all reptilians are bad. That's, 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 that's a stupid statement. That's yeah. program. Yeah, you know? exactly. It, it's like, and I've been abducted by reptilians and I had my experiences, but you know what? I still find them interesting beings and to explore who they are and why they went through what they went through and why they suffered. 
because it's not as it seems. So you have to know why somebody did something. There's a cause, there's a reason. And to just judge it offhand and not understand where it's coming from, it's, it's just like giving up so easily, which I think is you're not exploring the full understanding of reality. So, and, and you, you try to understand reality for what it is. I guess it's kind of like people, you tell somebody that you're in like Nachtwaffen or like the German program and like they call you a Nazi. Like it's, you have to understand, man, like there's, there's degrees of separation for all of this, no matter what it is. There's layers like a convoluted onion. And then once you complete those layers of the onion, it becomes another onion fractally. And then you go through another set of layers. It's so complex, but like, I know exactly what you mean. They just, they want to assume everything about you. You're a bad guy. If you were in the German program, that means you are a Nazi. If you were a Draco, that means you're single-handedly responsible for everything that's happening, partnering with the Anunnaki. If you're Anunnaki, you're a bad guy. It's just like, do your history, man. Read some Sumerian tablets. Like, it clearly shows that there were different parts of the Anunnaki that would fight each other. Not, mm -hmm. not to do with the kingship, just separate, like murdering each other over what they believe. And you'll have one group that likes the humans and the experiments and stuff like that. And they want to cherish it. Then you have the ones like in Lil, he wants to wipe us all out, you know? Yeah. And, and Anki with the genetics and just uh, capping off the telomeres. So you age at 70 and you only live until 120 if you're lucky. It's yeah. And that's like... on chromosome number two. Yeah, yeah. And, and and it's like the codons have been the energetically have been shortened, like snipped. So it's kind of like um when you snip DNA and you uh energetically cut something off, it it still evolves and it reaches the light codes, but it's slower. So that 12 grail DNA, holy grail DNA that was promised to come back, we already have that. It's just taking longer to activate. So it's not anything that he would give us back that he sort of snipped off to begin with, I think. I like to tell people it makes no sense that there's this return of Enki and giving us back the DNA that he think that they contributed in stealing to make us this race, to take away our abilities and powers. So what is the motivation for Enki to return and be like, you know what, guys, my bad. I want to give you all this shit that we actually took out to you, took out of you and just manipulated the crap out of you. And like, here, here it all is back. There's no, there's no motivation for that. It makes no sense. And I know what you mean about the soul trap. You think about Inky too much. You get obsessed with them. They'll Inky will put you on a ship and it'll use your energy. I've heard that from a couple of people that we talked about previously before we started recording, you know, mm -hmm. like it's hardcore, man. So I completely understand what you mean. And I, I like Lisa Renee's stuff and Ashiana Dean's stuff. I mean, people, some people have said that they're they're also not not appropriate or whatever, but the information is accurate. So it's like whatever. People will resonate with what they resonate with. And I, I base it on the information on facts. And when I get several things that just jive as truth, like energetic truth, I go with it. I'm not afraid to say well, these sources said this and it resonates with, it reads as truth when I energetically read it. And if something doesn't read as truth, I, I'll say to me, it doesn't read as truth. What What do you think about it? I will ask questions to people to, to see what what is connecting and what is not and why, why not? That makes you a good explorer like to go down that rabbit hole deeper than they would have comprehended and you can get more answers that way like me being a good qhhd practitioner like i'm really known to really use the shit out of the socratic method so i will always go deeper and deeper and deeper and want to know more and more for that client nothing for me i don't like to ask personal stuff about me it's all about their journey but mm -hmm. i want to give them the most amazing session period so anyone you probably ever will talk to in the future that i've done a qhhd session for 10 out of 10 i literally try my damnedest to heal everything. I don't care how long it takes. Like mm -hmm. it even affects you energetically when you do such a big healing and it's like going on an expedition and energetically you're just done at the end. You know? Exactly. Yeah. And I, I learned uh, hypnosis the shamanic way through a shaman teacher. Uh, I'm not 
certified QHHT, but I've done hypnosis for memory retrieval and some healing. More so, it's a method for memory retrieval. Like if people are confused about SSP stuff and other things, it's a chance to connect to their higher selves or to the positive beings and, and figure out what's going on. And sometimes they remember past lives, not so positive stuff anymore. That's part of your Akashic history. It's part of the records. So you can't discount good and bad because everything is part of the experience, right? Well, to, to really evolve as a soul, you want to experience extreme duality. So you want to be male and female. You want to be powerful and weak. You have to be both left and right because how can you truly know anything if you've only experienced it from one point of view only? So like I'm coming across a lot of females lately that were males in past lives and they were thrown in the female body because they didn't want to integrate polarity because it's only like the masculine power. I don't want to be a female. So they get thrown in this feminine body, then they get DID, they can't, they can't associate with it. They might go to the extreme surgery wise. No point in getting down that rabbit hole, but like oh, oh well, I horrible. actually like I, I feel so much pain for those people, man. Like yeah. to not ever truly accept yourself and just say, I love you in the mirror. Like I like to tell my clients that it took me up to three years ago to love myself for the first time in my life. It took me breaking down crying in front of the mirror. I I made myself look myself in the eyes and I said, I am fucking sorry for what I put you through. Please forgive me. Cause I realized my body is now separate from my soul. Mm -hmm. So you trash your body, you do things to it that are negative. That's not good for that. It's almost like my, my body is a being separate from me and it has memories. It has feelings and it responds to that. You constantly mm -hmm. tell it you're ugly. You're fat. I fucking can't stand you. You you know, your body remembers that on a cellular basis, on a consciousness basis, a cell by cell. And like you store it in your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I'm I released it. Yeah. I'm a few pounds bigger than I used to be. And I'm like, so what? Doesn't matter. I still, I'm still a loving human being and I'm okay with the extra. I could drop it. I could keep it. It's, it, it's all like physical energy anyways, that you can work with and cleanse, detox, change don't always have to be the same way you were 20 years ago. Things change up, down. And and I actually had surgery because I, I had bleeding all the time and I tried alternative therapies. I tried everything I could and I, I had a hysterectomy and I'm much healthier because I had that done, that procedure. I still feel female. <laughs> I still feel feminine, but I also have a lot of masculine energy. And when people meet me, they're like, whoa, you seem so much like a guy. Your 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 behavior is like a dude, and I'm like, oh, that's okay. That's I'm I'm fine with that too. I I I I I, I even tried to do a show to talk about the feminine. <laughs> it just was really not working. It was funny, but you know what? I'm like laughed it off, and it's like it's okay. You can embody feminine next time. It is what it is. I don't worry about it, what people perceive me as. I, I can be feminine, but I have a lot of masculine energy and it comes off like people can read it. It's mm. like, whoa, you're intense. They tell me that all the time. Yeah. And if I don't want anything down. I, I'm very blunt. I don't like if I'm if I'm personal friends with you, I like to tell you as it is without watering anything down because it's like if you can't be 100% honest with somebody, you're withholding stuff that can be toxic. Is it oh. might be all you think about. So I like to air it out like, hey, I'm hearing this or, hey, it's OK for you to be this way and to step forward into your truth. Stop trying to hide it, man. You know, like exactly. I, I am who I am and I, I I don't change for anyone unless it's something that could be of a positive change for improvement. People tell me like, well, you might be, want to work on this, this and that because it could be helpful for you. If it truly is helpful for me, I will integrate that advice and work on it. If it's not helpful for me, I will just not integrate and just say, thank you so much for what you said. I don't resonate. I'm not going to do this because I don't need to do this. I will bluntly say that and say like, okay, thank you, but... I'm going to do my thing and I know what I need to work on and what I don't. It's 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 really what resonates. You take it in. What doesn't, you just don't have to. It's kind of like people like us. We try to make ourselves to achieve a certain level, kind of like integrating shadow work. Like, I don't know if it truly ends because 
all these other lives we've lived, there's so much stored in that memory. And like, you can mm-hmm. only heal so much in a single life, you know? Yeah. I do shadow work constantly because things pop up yeah. even in this lifetime that are just something happens and you're like, I don't want to keep this karma. I don't want to keep this load. Let's work on it. Let's just clean it out. And because you move on to the next thing today was this tomorrow. It's something else. They so just keep doing the work and cleaning and, you're you're just more balanced as a soul being in a physical being. That's what I told what represents my star chart. So I have a show with Laura Eisenhower called The Rebel Collective. You you know, she's an amazing astrologist. And like mm-hmm. my star chart shows that I have like seven conjunctions stacked yeah. in the bottom right of the the reading. And it's like the average person they say would kill themselves for that amount of karma to work off in one life, because typically there might be two or three houses or something like that. I'm not astrologist. I don't know how to read that stuff. It's always been blocked. I, that's the key to everything. If I can learn how to read charts and know all that, oh my God, it would put me on the next level. But I feel it's always been blocked. It's just like, I am extremely intelligent and complicated subjects is my thing. Physics, quantum mechanics, awesome. But like astrology, <laughs> it's like math. I've always been blocked with math. I suck at math. I know what how to count, I- but like, What's 125? Well, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, yeah. How that in real life, except, you know, maybe trying to figure something out, but like, just, yeah. I don't know. It never computed. Yeah, same. I, I had a brain injury when I was young after the reptilian abduction. So my math skills are like two plus two is four. And um, I can keep a budget. Like, you don't even need these old fashioned calculators anymore. Your cell phone is your calculator. So you just go on like the app. Well, you add it up, subtract it, divide it. As long, as long as you know, like, multiplication, plus, minus, subtract, divide, multiply, like, it's easy to track a budget. It's, it's You only need basics. You don't need calculus or whatever else. That... This is algebra outside of high school in their real life, unless you're <laughs> into literal, like, uh, what's the, the people that work with money? I'm mind farting uh everybody wants to be one like like a lawyer or a doctor it's uh uh accountant forensic accountant uh bankers but like who would use any of that other math outside high school freaking nobody you forget all of it and it was realized it it was irrelevant like why did i was why was i forced to learn that you don't use it life man no you don't you just use plus minus multiplication and division like that's the only thing and even that i can't remember like divide multiply minus plus i can do but the other stuff i i i use my smartphone my cell phone or if like our watch is now our cell phone yeah 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 well i can't even wear a watch honestly because it just doesn't feel good i stopped wearing a watch when i left texas in 2015 in april and i told myself that i would no longer be controlled by time because up till about two years before i ended up moving i made this decision to sell everything i ever had and my tattoo shop is still open in Texas. I sold it to someone else and I made a lot of money, man. Like I would just travel the world. I seen 18 countries before COVID and like, wow. But one thing is you mentioned your traumatic brain injury. I have one as well. I got mine in 2005. So my legal diagnosis is traumatic brain injury, post amnesic disorder with retrograde amnesia and a form of savant syndrome. So it bumped up my IQ, but it made me dyslexic. I damaged the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and reticular activation system on my brain. And that made me view time differently than the average human. So it gave me these cool augmentations along with negative stuff like dyslexia and OCD. But I defeated the dyslex- uh, the OCD in one day. I thought about, I'm really good at figuring stuff out, but I have to ask myself. You know, people would say like, like I like to invent a lot of stuff. I can reverse engineer stuff in my mind like Tesla would describe it and stuff. But like, unless I think about a problem, I can't figure it out. I have to physically stop. Okay, there's an issue. How can I fix this? Mm-hmm. And like, it's freaking crazy, man. Like, it, Exactly. I'm the same way. I'm not a savant, but I, I do think in visual concepts beyond 3D. And I kind of look at, I go to the holographic universe and like, seeing all these connections, seeing all these inputs in how to fix something. And then I'm, I'm applying it to the physical world in this reality. It's like, boom, 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 boom. I had my website crash recently and it had like 50 images with information and buttons and all of that. 
it was all in one page, but it's like, it was just crashing. It's just not showing any material. I'm like, okay, you just overloaded the coding system. You need to stack it in a database. You need to do five pages per set of items. And you need to, like, all of this is hidden. Nobody's going to see 20, 10, 20 pages of code and, and, and stuff. So I stacked it. I, I rearranged it. And it's like, you only see one page with links to the sets of items per page. And, you know, there's like 10 pages. And nobody's going to see 10 pages. It's all relinked. And, and it's like loads quickly because I had to rework something that was in my mind not computing. So I, I went virtual into the holographic universe to to see how this needed to be stacked. Interesting. Yeah, like visual stacking. That's how I try to imagine things. Like I when I do QHHT, when I do people in the in the programs, obviously Omega programming is a real thing. So mm -hmm. I've developed this technique. I don't want to go into detail, but I will say that I've developed a technique where I can holographically make an make an imprint of your memories and or whatever is trapped on your brain, whatever they've installed. I can make a copy of it and pull it outside your body and then remove the traps ish and then have the higher self navigate through it. Yeah. I've never, I've never activated Omega ever once because I don't push people. Like a lot of people that are a lot of practitioners they get selfish, especially if they're really into SSP and they really want to go down routes that they have no idea what they're about to get themselves into. Oh, yeah, I know. I've, I've worked with clients in hypnosis where there's traps. Like they're, if, if you try to go through it for a memory or an experience, it's going to hit them and it's going to create chaos. Like I take it, I unravel it, I remove it and dissipate it. And then I check check for safety parameters so that there's nothing energetically left over to trip the person. Once it's safe, then they go in with me and their higher self or whatever companion for safety reasons they want uh, that they're comfortable with, their guides, their higher self. Then we go in to see the deeply repressed memories that the trap was preventing you from seeing because it's 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 a block for a reason so you don't get to the important stuff that you need to know it's like that's why it's there yeah i would love help with uncovering my memories like i really don't have much maybe no more than 15 20 memories max i don't even think it's even close to that uh well do, do you trust any hypnosis practitioner qhht to put you under who is legit Yes, but I found out a lot of the times, I only found this out recently, and I was shocked, but I wasn't shocked. I expected it, but to confirm it, it was different. So I don't know the last three or four times that I've been attempted to be, be put under, it wasn't successful. And I found out that the grays were preventing me from it, from going under because of my connection from the dumbs and how I'm involved with them somehow. And like, they've been blocking it this whole time. So I've really tried. I've talked to some top people, and I've I've really tried, man. Do you want to know what I'm sensing? Fuck yeah. Okay, so time they're time dilating you into like five different dimensions. So that's, that's why. What, you, that's that's what why. I mean. Yeah, that's why you can't go into a hypnosis because they're they're like soul fragmenting you in five different densities and dimensions, and it's like it's hard to put it all to, together as a whole to step into your higher self to connect with the higher self because they're frat they're 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 diluting the time stream and dilating you as a soul like stretching you out as a soul and preventing you from going into hypnosis like that's a that's a literal time dilation time travel block and you have to take each level of that five five dimensional block and heal it and fix it because it's, it's not like a soul trap. It's just a prevention trap to elongate your soul, to keep you distracted from cleaning that up and going into the higher self in the hypnosis. They're like even blocking you from connecting to the higher self and going into the, like I know QHHT, the steps, because I had a QHHT session in 2015 by a certified uh, Dolores Cannon, um, Marilyn Danke. There's a long list of practitioners. 
Marilyn Danke did my session. Um, so I know how it works, but you're being blocked for even connecting to the steps of it to connect to the higher self. I feel it. And it, 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 it feels unnatural. And like, I tried to tell people about it before I was getting a lot of these confirmations from like notable people like yourself. It was more like you would hear stuff, but like, I don't believe the stuff I hear. I want to believe the stories. Yeah. So when multiple people are mentioning the same stuff over and over again, and the times that I got to go under, the very few times I've been under, it confirmed it all. Yeah. And it's like, for me, you put me under, and I'm like, oh, any blocks, anything is like flying out the door because I don't let anything control me or, and I've had encounters with grace, like a run in. And that required cleaning because they try to insert implants into you. They try to insert energetic bombs into you to explode you. So what you're encountering, they're messing with your time streams. They're messing with densities and putting five layers of density loads on top of you. Like they're just distraction blocks to prevent you from accessing your higher self and going into these memories because there's important stuff there not just SSP, there's other things, but they just, so you gotta find a way to clean that up on your own through your own methods. Because you don't wanna expose anybody, any other practitioners to that. This is your thing to figure out how to unblock these, stretching your soul literally to five different dimensions and densities. Yeah, so Peter the Insider, when he finally, Jessica set it up for me to meet Peter because she remembers me explicitly and the ops we've been on. So she told Peter about me, but she didn't show him a photo. So when Peter got on, he was just freaking out. And like, I'm telling you, freaking out. And he was like, he was confused how I was even in this timeline because he says I'm not supposed to be in this timeline. So what you were talking about, how they stretch me between these timelines, that's what I feel like. I feel like only a fragment of my consciousness is here and my consciousness is everywhere else. And I don't sleep hardly at all. I get, I'm lucky if I get three hours of sleep a night, period, never over three. I walk around in real life with bags under my eyes because I just have extreme pain when I sleep. So I can't fall asleep more than five or 10 minutes and then it hits me over and over. It's like torture, man. Yeah, because it's like stretching your soul to different to different densities and dimensions, five of those. So it's the densities and the dimensions. That's not the same thing. It's like you're being diverted in five five sets of things here and five sets of things there, like like this. Two, diff two different roads, five densities, five dimensions. It's like you're, you're trying to just keep your reality condensed to this timeline, but they're stretching you in different directions. And it becomes worse when you activate these things during QHHD. So it's like, how do you clean that up? Because you are you work on a quantum level, you're a quantum fixer, healer, you work on quantum levels. But how do you do that outside of hypnosis? How do you go into your soul field and start cleaning this stuff? Because you know how to do it. I would like it. to learn how I can definitely use some help. You know, I often tell people I would love help. So if you can really do that for me, I'm asking for it. Uh, well, you have to release it for yourself. It's nothing that anybody can do for you. You're the quantum player in your quantum game. You know how to do this. Now that you understand the mecha mechanism of what they're doing to you, how do you unravel and fix the problem? I had to remove my own Neuralink's implants by myself with some help from ETs. They gave me the mind maps but I had to go in and do psychic surgery myself because I couldn't trust anybody else to do it for me of how complex the energy was, the net and the nanotech. Like I had to do it myself. Um, and it took Especially like, with the tech. You, I don't call it fento. I just call it nano mm -hmm. and energetic core tech um, because it was on a 5D level. So nothing, like I had to really do the roadmap stuff that the ETs gave me and, and literally excise it and clean it. And, you know, so you have to find out your roadmap 
uh, on the quantum scale of how to untangle and detangle these soul stretchings. Because th this is u very unique work, and I don't think you would even trust fully somebody to do it for you. Like you want to, you want to do it for yourself, because you trust yourself as a healer, as a quantum healer. Just take it to the next level. Think of it as a complicated problem that you need to unravel and remove these densities and these dimensions of soul stretching. How would you I'm go good. about? I'm good with problems. I'm good with pressure. And like one of my skills is concentration, extreme concentration over time, like mm -hmm. long game kind of stuff. Well, and so you're... that's apparently one of my powers is extreme concentration. Well, you're a quantum magician with energy play and energy, like you can remove bombs, energetic bombs, energetic booby traps, soul stretching and soul fragmenting. So think about how do you go in on a quantum scale? Because this is on a quantum energetic scale. It's not really physical. It's in the quantum world that they're doing this, but you're feeling the physical results of it. In my mind and my body. Yes. Like my mind is physically tired. Like, yeah. For what I've discovered with QHHT is I've been involved with these wars for billions of years. I was in the Orion Wars. I've been in so many battle scenarios that it's all I've ever known. Mm -hmm. And I remember the only thing I thought about when I was a kid is I was obsessed with the military. I remember being like 12, 13 years old, and I would go out into the woods with army fatigues. And I would lay in the rain, in the dirt, and I would stare off in the distance waiting for a target without a gun. Just I would train myself to get bit by ants and not react, to just stay still and be patient. Yeah. Like, why was I doing that at such a young age? Why have I been a lifelong martial artist? And I haven't stopped since I was 15. Seven days a week, I'm doing martial arts. I'm, I'm doing shadow boxing, and I'm always practicing my moves. And, like, I always do this behind the scenes, and no one knows this. So, like me figuring out that I was in the dumbs and in the fucking programs and shit. I'm like, Oh my God, like all this makes sense. And then it's one after another. Now I feel that I allowed the idea for me to discover my roots. And this was the, the moment. So I started meeting all these people and they started telling me details about me and what I did. And it's just like, Oh my God, like I've had to keep this to myself my whole life. Cause I've had these intense dreams, battles with ETs and a lot. One memory that sticks out, man, I'm on the top of a cliff or mountain or something. And there's a mothership in the sky and it's above water. And out of nowhere, these ships start coming in and a battle starts. And it's the most intense shit that I remember ever feeling. And when I seen those ships come out the bottom of the mothership and they started just going after each other, ships started dropping. Okay, it's not like in the movies when ships are dropping around you and it's happening above you. You start freaking out because mm -hmm. they're going to come down upon you. And when yeah. every ship hits the ground, you feel it. You feel the momentum. You feel the vibration. That It's like it's like feeling a nuclear bomb, but not not a big-ass nuclear bomb. It's like you yeah. feel the – okay, you feel the wave of it hitting you, and yeah. it's very intense my whole life, like you know? Like an energetic wave from the ships repulsing the different shielding from each other and or just crashing down and hitting the ground yeah. and yeah. that energy that hits you it's like you don't experience it in the movies because obviously they can't convey that but like in real yeah. life man it's way different <laughs> it it feels like if i was to put an equivalent on it on it for for people to understand like battlestar galactica the 2000s battlestar galactica where they were just fighting, the Cylons were fighting with the humans, and the Cylons looked human now, but were still robotic, mm -hmm. you know, like but stronger. And they had their ships fighting the, um, the the fleet, the Caprica fleet, yeah. and they were just going at each other for freedom or supremacy or whatever. So it feels like there was some kind of um like Cylons and, and humanoid ETs fighting each other. If I was to put an equivalent of what that energy feels like, that's what I feel. And this is not on Earth. I don't think this is an Earth reality that you were on. What is I, don't, it? I, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, so it, it feels like there was human-looking ETs and augmented 
humanoid looking beings, but like Cylons with more, with more strength and with more energy power to overpower the other ships energetically and drop their shields and drop them. And some of that tech, you can feel it in your body. When it goes by, you feel this humming, like your body vibrates. It's just like, it's just like you can't see it. Or you then yeah. you see it and you're like, holy crap, man. Yeah. And, and, and in the dumbs, it feels like you were creating energetic portal shields to block people to come in, come in and out of the tunnels and, and the facilities themselves. Like you would weave an energetic block to like a block of a portal where you, you hit something and you go boom, boom, you can't enter. And it's like a portal, but not a portal to go through, but like block people from entering the tunnel. Kind of like a shield. Kind of yeah, like yeah. On, on Mars, well, they'll have they'll have a field that you can go through, and when the field comes up, nothing can penetrate it. Yeah, similar, but it feels blow like up your ship if you hit it. Yeah, but it feels like portal tech, except it's blocking tech hmm. at the same time because you could create portals, but you could also block portals and create fields to block physical entrances and exits from the underground facilities. And this is on Earth. It's it's on Earth. It happened on Earth, part of the SSP. Because when I did the remote viewing, it showed me not SSP. It showed me something else. But it, because I'm connecting with you now, I'm seeing the dumbs. And that's on Earth. Because mm -hmm. you can create shielding, energetic shielding. And it feels physical. People are like, bump, bump, bump. They can't see it. They can't really feel it. Kind of like it's preventing the Almost in a way, I, I would remember, I've done this my whole life. I would just imagine a shield where it can't be penetrated and you can't peek through it almost. Mm -hmm. And in my adulthood, I use a double pyramid of white light and I I, I put a, a sphere of light around that double pyramid of white light and try to pull in that six dimensional energy. And like, I'll even put a mirror spell on it. If I felt like I'm really getting attacked, I'll put a mirror facet over the orb and I'll seal it completely and I'll reflect the intentions back to the sender. Yeah, yeah. Similar to that, but nobody... Normal people couldn't feel it. They're like trying to enter the dumps facility or the tunnel and they're like boom, 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 bumping against something but they don't understand. And they're like, how do I disable it? They think it's, it's, um, they think it's some kind of an energy technology that they could just fire a laser at and it'll mm. take it down, but it wouldn't because they had laser rifles. The, the yeah, soldier. Yeah, because technically some of that technology, certain technology would go through that technology. If it's if it's operating within the same field or wavelength, if you know what the wavelength of the shield is, then you can didn't. figure out how to take it down, but you they, have to know how to measure it. Yeah, they didn't. So they just fire the laser rifles at it, and it would just kind of show you some blue energy coming like sparking off, and then it would become blank again. They're like, what the heck is this? This is some kind of a laser shield. Like we have shoot more at it, recalibrate, shoot more. And they couldn't figure it out because they didn't know the frequency and they didn't measure the frequency really. They just fired at it. Like the scientists and me, like what I've been shown is I'm like one of those tacticians people go for because you need specialized people to go after certain people. Mm -hmm. And my brain injury, I can see a thousand scenarios. Like I almost felt like it, it made me part Doctor Strange, where I can see all these scenarios happening at once, and then I choose the most logical way. Like, if you give me a target and all the variables variables of that target, I will find exploits everywhere that no one's ever thought of. Yeah. If you have someone with a steel door, I'm going through the wall. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it does not matter. I would want to know the the width of the concrete in the ceiling or the floor. Yeah. Or if I can use certain kinetic weapons to go through certain material, like, why do I know all that, man? You know, why have I thought about it my whole life and I don't have any enemies or any bad guys to fight? Well, well because because you're 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 literally tapping into universal knowledge of anything you need from different Akashic records and different fields of information. And you do a lot of quantum stacking, your toolkits like, well, you never know when I might need this and that and you just collect information and just- That's what I've told people, like my little Batman utility belt. I'm learning this, like QHHT is one small thing I do out of everything and it's only a facet mm -hmm. of what I'm capable of. Yeah, exactly. I do something similar. I never know when I'll need information. My higher self, 
it's a strange analogy, my higher self, Jania, when I was experiencing all this stuff with the computer failure and all this website stuff, she said, think of this as you're flying a fighter jet and you're using a stick, joystick control, or you're flying a, an airplane, like a Boeing, big bus. You're using a yoke. You don't yank on the joystick or the yoke because your plane is going to go whoosh. You're going to crash it or you're going to veer it off course. You got to be you, elegant with those systems. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got, because they respond to sensitivity. So you can't yank or push. You, you're just aligning, realigning, readjusting, and you're keeping your flight patterns even. So she said, apply that rule to the website developing, how you, you have to stack your database and stuff. To do it gently with neutral, like try this, try that to insert the images and the buttons and the descriptions where you're not disturbing the ecology of the programming, but you're working around with the coding and the editing. Like you're reshifting reality, but you're not yanking the control of the joystick. Same if you're driving your car, you're not gonna put yeah, the wheel on. Yeah, like, car really fast, that's stupid. Yeah, 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 uh, exactly. When you're flying a UFO, non-human made craft, the ET stuff, it's holographic maybe with some buttons. So you're just like, mm, you're just playing in the energy field and you, you don't have a sensitive joystick that you really have to be careful with. So flying a UFO is more free because it's not a mechanical tactile technology. It's holographic more so with some buttons. So you still have to be careful, but it's not as sensitive to if you like make a minor adjustment, it goes whoosh. But when you, if you pull on the joystick, it goes whoosh. Like it, it kicks your, it kicks you, gives you a kick and your plane goes off course and you can crash. So there's different adjustments of energy and technology. I built my own website as well. So like, I know what you mean about all that and like overloading a module or a section and you've got to like, unfortunately there is a maximum input you can put in. Yeah. But they don't tell you none of that. Especially yeah. if you have interactive stuff like videos or like layers of that module, you know, it's the mm -hmm. layers that oh. make it have error codes and stuff. Yeah, but it, it wasn't even videos. I was just doing like, um... Uh, I was doing fleur de -lis healing grids. Mm. <laughs> and I had 50 of them, but they're big resolution images. I was putting one after another and putting information and buttons and descriptions. And I put mm. that 50 images all in one page. It would barely load. It would load, but then the code cracked and crashed. And I'm like, okay, you got to create sub pages, hide them in a database and just link. And people can just click on the link and go to whatever they want. Um, and you still, you have your big list page. You just don't have the extra items. You subset them and it works. It, people are like, well, this loads good. It actually works better than your original. Like, yeah, because the cra code crashed. It could not support that ecosystem. I completely understand that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it needed a different variant. But it was interesting to, that Jenea said, well, I'm gonna simulate you filing not filing, flying uh, a literal fighter jet with a with a stick and then an airplane, and see how you, how you react to the joystick and to the yoke flying those things. And you have your memories of flying UFOs, and then just a, just use that those analogies to the website. You're working with a joystick. You can't yank a joystick. You have to gently maneuver then it'll work for you. Otherwise you're gonna crash it. So yeah. it, it, it's like, I've never flown a fighter jet or an airplane. Like I'm not human military at all, but I've have flown UFOs and the SSP stuff and SSP craft. It's all holographic and some buttons. So you don't have that tactile pull too hard and it'll go boom in the wrong way. You make a mistake, you adjust it in the holographic sequence, you know, it's not going to go too far off the vectoring. You've been more into genetics, right? More in like that kind of stuff, not the physical soldier. Uh, some physical stuff, yeah. I was test piloting craft 
a few things I did for Planetary Corp and Nachtwaffen. But um, Mars basis, that was genetics, yes. It was studying different species, how to hybridize humans with those extraterrestrials, the weird tails, the weird extra legs, extra arms, more like exotic genetics, how to properly splice that so you don't get mutants, like mutational things in chimeras that are just like wrong. Like they but, were doing in Atlantis rampantly. Yes, yes, yes. And I remember that. And unfortunately, I was a geneticist in that timeline. And uh, I saw what they were doing. I, I didn't do that. But in the SSB, I was doing the hybridization. And I was also abducted into Area 51, where gray DNA was mixed with humans to create humans 2.0, maturate them in the, you know, regen tank with plasma, yep insert memories somebody else's memories and off they go train them to put them into society it's like hardcore stuff man yeah but i'm like oh that's normal that's not weird at all it's just part of the experience when you're in creation you're running around and you're playing and creating so it's like i look at it simplistically it's part of the experience because i needed to know something or wanted to know something or understand something so that's why i experienced it it's not good or bad. It's something that just makes you wiser as a soul in your understanding of reality in yourself. Kind of like we were talking about the duality, you know, mm -hmm. you have to yeah. experience all the polar opposites and everything else. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you want to go over your remote viewing a little bit? Because that was the focus and we ran off course a little bit. That's okay. It, it's all part of fun of exploring and, and learning about each other. So the screen is loading. So this is our, just a rough sketch of the remote viewing. Um, I saw a bunch of cities underground, like tall spires with frequency generator on top of the building, floating underground cities, moving islands of energy fields, high energy source field vibration. Um, and I felt like, you were part of some archaeological exchange program studying life force rejuvenation techniques, high energy frequency, powerful structures, light codes being emitted, travels underground on a regular basis, guests of people with light frequency and light codes goes underground a lot. Um, unusual structures, not human-made cities of light and solid foundation uh, exist now and in the distant past. Uh, sacred cities connected to earth alignments and ley lines, pyramid codes. So how does this, it's hidden subterranean worlds underneath the earth. So how does that connect to you? I think I contain the codes to open these portals underground because it's in my dna especially like the pyramids and stuff like i know that my dna allows me to open these portals from what i've i've been told a lot is that uh if i was to be put under giza or something like that more than likely i'd be able to enter the halls of a minty because of my dna because without that upgrade you wouldn't be able to enter yeah well like high energy and frequency outputs here so like all these buildings they have an energetic source structure for emitting energy and using energy for the wide system of these moving floating islands i mean i i don't presume anything when i do a remote viewing whatever comes in like i don't make an assumption that's why i'm asking you what does any of this mean to you I know that I transmute energy and I can move energy and I, I, I can use energy kinetically if I wasn't being blocked. And like, I'm, I'm not saying this physical body, it, it exists, but it's being blocked when mm -hmm. they, from what I've been shown and what I've been told is when they put me on ops, I'm using a lot of kinetic weapons and like energy manipulation kind of stuff, especially when I get angry. Like I've been told I can do a lot of stuff with energy. So I believe that I've studied this energy and 
I've somehow incorporated it into my physical body as a hybrid. And only since I'm a hybrid is that possible because I think this energy is so powerful, it would short circuit the human body. So if I didn't have these buffers installed, I would not be able to do it. And mm -hmm. this is why they told me I have a lot of Zeta gray DNA. I was kind of shocked when I found that out, but it turns out they're with me in the dumbs mm -hmm. and I'm working with them. I just don't know specifically what I'm doing. People have said that I'm doing science stuff. I look like a scientist. They've remote viewed me. They said I'm on, on the moon as a scientist and I'm in, I'm German. And I only speak German. I, I, I speak English, but it's like a broken, you know, broken English. So that resonates as 5% possibility is truth to me, the German stuff. Uh, you, being what do you, in, see? you being in the dumb spaces with other types of tall gray beings and other beings, humanoid looking, that resonates like as 98% truth. So the German thing on the moon, only 5% truth because I read truth percentages, how mm -hmm. far things really were in reality or are. So the dumb stuff really does come up as 98% truth. Is there anything that you hit with? Like what my connection in the dumbs would be? I see. My lifelong abductions since a child and like what they've did to my body and all that stuff. Uh, I see the portal stuff. You building shields and blocks so people can't enter the tunnels and the facilities. Uh, I'm not allowed to access your childhood stuff that's off limits. They're like really too personal. They're not allowing your higher self does not want me tapping into that, especially on a public thing. So um, it, it matters more what you're doing as an adult in the facilities, underground facilities, because your childhood has been fragmented with your soul being pulled in many places a lot as a child so those memories are vague because of that because you've been pulled into many different um factions of et wars and stuff to try to convince you to play their games that much i can say and you're like no i don't want to be here i don't want to do this get out leave me alone i'm fragmented as as a human being enough leave me alone so you put up shielding around yourself to protect against mind control influenced by extra by regressive negative extraterrestrial groups of species who are warring with each other i feel and, that i've done that my whole life yeah and, and they wanted to use you as a tool for energetic frequency like to defend them to to literally build portals for them to knock into other universes and invade other universes you know what's funny this has come up so many times in the QHHT sessions where I'll be talking to a client's higher self and they keep telling me that I'm supposed to invent this portal tech. And like, I know it exists within me. I know, I know how it works. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. But they will never let me, they'll never allow me to bring that forward to the public, you know, like ever, never, never. So to know how to do it is, it's a different, like a lot of people want to claim they're special and they want to make these claims, but like, this is what I do energetically, especially yeah. with the portal. So when you, when you, when you mentioned that earlier, I was like, man, I needed to hear that because like, I'm just really coming into the public recently. And I just discovered the dumb connection just this June when I was in contact in the desert. Lisa Johnson gave me a reading and she got, I got a lot of information from her. And then I started asking about it in the sessions mm -hmm. and then I started meeting people that I was in the dumbs with. So it was just like, holy crap, man. Like, I have no idea how deep this rabbit hole goes, but like the archeological part, I consider myself like an archeologist, man. I see myself as the guy getting sent through portal tech to different existences, different planets. And I try to reverse engineer their technology. I try mm -hmm. to understand how it works, you know, how they're channeling planetary energy through these spires and buildings and stuff like that, and what kind of shielding you need to create that wouldn't be detectable by top-level people, like, you know, top Earth-based humans, like on the top of the land kind of stuff. Like, if you don't, they can, through frequency, they can, they can 
pinpoint it all across the earth where this is happening if you do not shield it. Yeah, and these spires on top of these buildings feel like they they shield and cloak these cities and areas, these hidden subterranean worlds underneath the earth. So you do something underneath the earth with these beings, whoever lives in these cities. It, that's that's the impression I get from this remote viewing. And again, I don't want to make any assumptions because I'm not supposed to. Yeah. But that's just what it feels like to me if we're looking at this from a more psychic perspective and not me, what I remote viewed, if we take a step back. And again, I I, I don't presume to know anything what I remote view. That's why I showed this to you. And I haven't shown this to anybody else because this is yours. And it was private. Now it's like, what does the, any of this mean to you? What What does this reveal to you? It feels like a facet of home. Because it's, again, in this earth-based life of me now, I feel like doing stuff like that is all I've ever known, you mm -hmm. know? So there's a component of feeling like home, even though it's deep underground and it's not natural. But if you've been in a program with like that your whole life, you know, in your mind, it becomes like you recognize it as like a home almost, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it move these cities move on islands and it has energy in whatever platform these cities are on because it says high energy source field vibration. And I guess I again I don't presume to know anything in what I remote view to me. It's like I didn't sit down to remote view Drago Reed on September 12th. This is just it came in energetically and I let it do its thing. I let the ability show me what what Drago Reed is connected to. But again, I didn't plan this. It wasn't, it was like, I didn't sit down to, I'm going to, I'm going to go hardcore and remote view Drago Reed. It wasn't the plan at all. It just came in. I'm like, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down and do this because it's not going to let me go until the remote viewing is done. And it shows me whatever it wants to show me. So it wasn't planned. I, I didn't even talk to you. I didn't tell you I did this. I just did this. And the ability showed me whatever this was. And I then sent a message to you. And it's like, uh, well, there, there was a spontaneous remote viewing. And here it is. And you said, like, yeah, we should talk about this. And here we are doing that today. Nobody has seen this before. You and I are the first to see this. And that is clean as it should be because this is your remote viewing. Um, I don't think like this... I've never talked about the portal stuff to nobody. So like, it's cool to talk about it finally, you know, and you, I said earlier that my higher self is blocking, blocking you reading my childhood. Yes. So my consciousness here would give you permission. But the because higher... I, I truly want to know. So it's, it sucks my higher self is choosing to not show me because I don't authorize that. I mm -hmm. truly want to know. And I want others to help me confirm this like real legitimate people because being a, being a co-host with Laura Eisenhower, that's a big responsibility. And I mm -hmm. want to make sure my story's straight. I don't want to embellish anything. I only want to, I only want to know what, my involvement with this is that's pretty much it i'm mm -hmm. i'm figuring out all this within the last year well the various factions of negative extraterrestrials try to use your young self to punch through literally the protective membranes of other universes and create portal tech that would punch a hole to other universes and create a bridge for easy travel naturally there's laws of the universe that prevent that because it's not legal to just go into another universe and start doing things there that's not appropriate so they were trying to use you as a child to do this to create these like almost like a black hole to punch through a different universe from one membrane layer into another layer of a universe so galactically that's not good it's it's just invading another universe and you would scream as as that child and, and scream in horror and like, no, I'm not doing that. I love portal stuff, but I'm not doing this because this is invasive to me as a living being. This and, is the and also I cherish all life. So for yeah. them to use it in a way that's going to be used to harm beings, I am not cool with that at all, man. 
And like if if I'm involved with some kind of form of mind control, which is standard with like monarch style stuff and MK Ultra stuff, like if I'm doing a lot of it, I don't have a choice, man. You mm-hmm. know? But but you were screaming, no, you didn't want to do this, but they wanted to convince you to participate. This is what your higher self is allowing me to tell you as what was being done to you as a child by different extraterrestrial groups who know how to mind control pretty well. But even as a child, you knew what was right and what was wrong, and that would be wrong. It would be using you as a weapon for creating portals to to just give a free lock and key to another universe without permission of those beings in that universe who like there's a reason why different universes are separated from each other so you don't go invading them you know i have a lot of like soul memory of how i contributed to all that and how many people died because of what i was used for man like (laughs) the memories i have it's pretty overwhelming man um yeah well there you have a lot of complicated layers in what you experienced and what you did uh and it it involves a lot of extraterrestrial incursions on your free will soul being and choices um so the higher self did let that portion in but there's much more that it's private it's you'll you'll learn about it but it's not for public consumption so would this be a thing that mean you can set up on the side and you can help me with that? It doesn't want it to do. Higher self says no, not not for me to do that for you. Am I just not authorized right now? Or is what I would learn would be so overwhelming it would physically change me in a bad way? It wouldn't change you because none of this is surprising to you. It just no, needs no, 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 none of it shocks me. None of it. Yeah, it needs to come in in bits and pieces. So for you to integrate it fully with your soul aspect, it's like finding the right, I'm, I was supposed to give you a bit of the information as as a piece of the puzzle, but there's others that can give you even more for integrating it. So this was meant to be as a primer, but there's others that will help you to piece it more together and work with the higher self. Because I've been looking for my team. I've been separated my, from my team for so long. You know you know what I mean by team. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, totally. I've kept them away from me my entire life. And I'm yeah. only starting meeting, I'm only been starting to recently meet people on my team. And it's taken me to be 43 years old to mm-hmm. just start to start discovering it, man. So that's pretty old in my life. You know, most people that's in these programs, they have memories since a kid. And people think they're crazy because that's all they talk about. And like you ignore them. And it's, and it's just like to know all my stuff was blocked the whole time. And then this bike crash kind of awakened some stuff, maybe accidentally or something mm-hmm. like who knows? Well, it just... it, I don't think it's an accident. We're all meant to know something when we're ready to work with it and understand. As a kid, I did not remember any of the SSP stuff. I remember interactions with extraterrestrials with Pleiadians and Andromedans and seeing UFOs like I saw UFOs as a young kid uh, both in Ukraine Israel so in Canada too and bits of the U.S. where I visited the 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 SSP stuff started opening up to me in when I was like 27 28 it it didn't open up before because I really didn't want or need to know that before then because I was developing as a young person I guess I think people in their 30s could be ready for this 30s 40s some I don't think even most kids remember that unless it's something so traumatic and painful that was done to you in the programs you do remember that and I remember the reptilian abductions in the underground dumps that I remembered even as a kid and it horrified me. I got to see a peek into that about a month ago or three weeks ago, man, when I did mushrooms and they intercepted my mushroom trip and they showed me what they did to me. And it was the most traumatic shit I have ever experienced in my life where I th- I was convinced that they had mind fractured me during that trip and I would not wake up the Drago that I remember before that mushroom trip, I thought I would be permanently broken. Mm -hmm. It was that bad. 
And I can't even really put it into words, everything they showed me, man. Like, I don't know how it's possible to put it into a sentence or a paragraph. Who are the they? The greys. Okay. Well, they, they, they're masters of mind manipulation and trying to scare you that they'll soul fracture you so much. You're not going to be the same being. This the is best. why I fought them two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, when I was put under my last session with someone on my team, they had to fly in from another state and we don't talk online for operational security period. It's mm -hmm. only a person, no cell phones or nothing. And uh, the mm -hmm. grace came through and they were blocking it. Yeah, the, it's and they just... attacked me, and then they went to attack him. And I remember it's all recorded. Mm -hmm. I told them if they weren't blocking me, that I would break their arms, that I would, I would cut their head off. I had no fear, you know. It's just I'm tired of it, and I don't know, man. That's the first time I've snapped, and like I am done with this. If you blocked, if you unblocked my powers, I would energetically remove your damn body. Yeah, and show you, I would, I would project the pain you've given to others back into you all at once and i would want to put it on a loop because killing you would be too easy yeah i mean with the grays they're mind tricksters and mind manipulators on a quantum level so they try to make you think you're going to lose your soul you're going to fragment you're not going to be the same when it you worked back. <laughs> it worked momentarily and don't 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 even let it work momentarily because that's like um that's just mirror smoke screen stuff it's a scare tactic. I get it. I've I've been attacked by greys, reptilians, and like I'm gonna blast you with fire. I'm gonna blast you with this whatever comes to mind. Electrically throw throw at you kinetic weapons. Like create it. You know, like fireballs, orange fireballs, green fireballs. Whatever I can naturally use in my ability, I will like create it and fire it off at them. I think I can talk to this energy and communicate with it underground mm -hmm. because it's a living conscious energy yeah. and I can channel that through my body from yeah. the earth. You yeah. Know? And that can be really dangerous. <clears throat> I, I mean, somebody said that I'm Sergeant Piranha. <laughs> Sergeant Piranha. They called me the Sergeant Piranha. Um, and I would say, you know, I did use fire of piranha to fire off at them to protect myself because they were coming at me with strong reptilian energy and they called me in a public show, Sar Sergeant Piranha. <laughs> uh, well, I did use fire of piranha on them, like orange fireballs with, it's like, it's like I was, I call this the fire of piranha, literally on the energy field that's what i saw it as you know like mario brothers where they have these plants that are piranha plants that fire mm, off yeah, fireballs yeah. similar mm. to that i just call it the fire of piranha like chicken fireballs at the assailant coming at me and it was strong reptilian energy this guy was like plowing it and i was like oh no you don't you're not you're not getting away with this you're not attacking me and then they publicly on a show started, it's like, oh, she calls herself the Piranha Sergeant, the SSP Piranha Sergeant. <laughs> like, whatever. Sometimes you you take a moniker that was given to you by someone else and you step forward into that as a uh, strength, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, I've, I've, I've known that there's the fire of Piranha. I never tried it before. I'm like, let's try it on for size and see what happens. This, this reptilian dude is coming at me with reptilian energy and it's like... <sighs> It's heavy and it's on the energetic, like it's an energetic fight. And he's testing me and he's trying to like thrash me. And I'm like, hmm, fire of piranha, here we come. Let's try this out. Let's test this. How let's start he's throwing green fireballs at me. I'm like, fire, orange, do it, see what happens. And it had electrical zaps in it. So it was like Ugh. these fireballs, green and orange, come and it explodes. And it shields us. Neither one is hit. They just explode, boom, 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 when they come at each other energetically. And I'm like, oh, interesting. It's an experience. Why not? It's kind but, of like my experience with dealing with the energy and stuff like that. I, I, I basically, I'm like an, an airbender energy manipulator in a way where I can transmute energy. Mm -hmm. And I can send it through my hands, not from this body and the programs. I feel like I'm a 
Light Lox Light Soldaten soldier, a light soldier, and mm -hmm. like I can point at you and I can kill you if I want it. I know it sounds crazy, right? It's, it's I've not. got them a whole life when I'm angry with people. I give them that stink eye and I point directly to the center of their forehead and I aim for it. And I just, I don't blink and I won't say nothing. I'll just point. And it's yeah. just like, ooh, if I really wanted to, man. Um, I mean, th this this guy called me a crazy chick that I was crazy because of wait, the piranha sergeant. I'm like, well, that exists on a layer of energy above physicality. It's just what it was, an experience with this guy. And... It just it it reminded me anything that's energetic your your ability is activated to its full strength because you're outside the physical body. He attacked me on the astral plane. Not and astral, the, I mean, uh, anger really activates that power. I I wasn't even angry. He was tr trying to test me and see how much he can attack me and bully me with energy and just like rub me down. I'm like, okay, you come at me. I'm going to see what you got. And then I'll fire off something I've wanted to test for a while now. Okay, Piranha Sergeant, let's see what you got, girl. Go for it. So I just went for it. And I'm like, oh, this is amusing. This is highly I like when Penny Bradley blew off Joseph Powell's head when she was in the programs. Like, Jesus, <laughs> if you really knew us and you could accept that this these realms are real, you wouldn't mess with us so much, man. Like, I, I like to pretend that I'm acting as a human body. Um, And I'm, I feel like, how do you put it into words, man? Like, you know you're something else, but mm -hmm. you've got to pretend to be regular at all times. Yeah. And I've I created that persona. I know what I'm capable of, but I've yeah. never talked about it, right? Because it sounds insane, man. I would only, it, I've, I've, the people I try to tell, yeah. you'll see it in their eyes, that flicker of the, they'll subtly blink. And it's just like, yeah, man, I know how it sounds. You probably think I'm freaking schizophrenic or something. Like, I get it. But one day, something happens. <laughs> I told you, man. Well, yeah, I, somebody tried to mind rape me energetically in 2017. And go, guess who ended up in the hospital with almost a heart attack? That I was public. I've heard this story. Oh, you know, I think everybody, we're not going to name the name. Yeah, exactly. I don't like naming But it. this person was in the hospital. He was videoed in the hospital in the gurney saying, I almost had a heart attack because they attacked me almost like mind break. They wanted to know all my info, infiltrate the brain and crack the skull with energy. And that's what I try to protect the most with what I yeah. know about building. I put a yeah. template over me at all times. And and so I electric, I zap that person with electric, with electric surge of energy, you know, like a, an electric surge. Do you feel it in your body when you do that? Uh, it was on the energetic scale. I just felt, I felt like a huge energy going through me and I zapped him. I'm like, oh my God, I'm almost killing the heart, like squeezing this with electrical surge currents. And I backed off because I don't want to kill this person physically. You just want to be like, back off, man. I'm showing you what I'm capable of, a small percentage, like walk away. It, it, it wasn't small because I, I wasn't sure how to control that energy back then. Uh, I, I just kept squeezing that damn heart with electrical current. And I'm like, no, pull it back, pull it back, pull it back. This person is going to have a literal heart attack and possibly die. So I dialed it back. They backed off because they, they're like, no, this is, this is like, th this is not good. This feels like two predators and I'm a smaller predator than this one. I gotta, gotta go back to my body, but they ended up in the hospital and they filmed that they, they were in the hospital, but they didn't explain why it happened, but they said, I almost had a heart attack. Same thing happened with Penny. She, someone was trying to mind rape her and get into her mind and people like us don't like that. No. If I say I give the public permission to remote view my childhood and my connection, it's because I genuinely want to know. And I'm not trying to hide anything at that point, you know? Yeah. But we agree that doing that, it can they can view other stuff. So yeah. I, I like to be, I'm protecting myself in certain ways. Yes, as you, you should. You yes. should, yeah. 
and, and anybody who attacks me, I have the right to defend myself energetically. And I didn't instigate both attacks. They came at me. I defended. And whatever defense, I don't even think about it. The defense mechanism just activates in whatever the ability thinks is appropriate for the defense action against the oncoming attack. And it's always been energetic. Nobody physically tries to punch me or it's always energetic. Uh, and I can sense where it's coming from. Like, who's the source? On a psychic level, I could sense where the thread is coming from. Who exactly is it that's doing this? And, and in both attacks, I ended up with a, just a nasty migraine afterwards. Because you could feel their energy coming at you. And that was kind of like the side effect. When I feel that energy, it almost feels like someone's in the room with me. Like they're walking around my body. And like, I can sense it, but I can't see them. You know? I don't feel them walking in the room with me. I just feel where the attack is coming from, like which direction, which country, which city, and that I need to repel the energy and cut them off at the source. And just if they're attacking me energetically, whatever counterattack I can do without killing them to, to, to try to end the attack, that's what I'll do. I'm not going to send them a spell three times three, whatever, feel what you sent to me and da 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 No, just stop that attack and cut them off. And that's it. And, and, and hopefully it teaches them, uh, you tried it, somebody else repelled you, don't do it again. Don't try to prove your power premise and think you're the almighty, powerful being here, that you could just go after anybody and get away with it because it's not how it works. There might be somebody to your same skill set equal to you or higher who can repel you and teach you a lesson. Don't engage with anyone if you are not using your ability responsibly. That's 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 the rules of engagement of I follow. I don't attack others first. If somebody attacks me, I repel it, I stop it. They learn a lesson not to come at me again. Yeah, so I respect free will more than anyone can ever understand because free will was taken from me since a child. And so free will is what we fight for, man. Mm -hmm. Stuff that we have to experience you know it's wrong mm -hmm. and you don't have a choice they force you to take part man it's not like i'm choosing to do these things if i don't they will torture me to death over and over until i break and i just yeah. comply you know like yeah so free will man i respect people's free will and i don't like to harm people in any way man like i've been on like a, like a lifetime fighter martial artist and the old me would want to fight people because I know I'm good at fighting and it's weird. I realized only a year ago, for the first time in my life, I've never been punched in the face during a fight. How is that even possible, man? Like, I've never been punched in the face during a fight. That is, that's insane. Well, you don't let people come into your personal contact, mm -mm. not to hit you or anything. For me, I... I learned martial arts, but I would say I'm puny at it right now because I haven't practiced in a long time. But you come at me, the first thing I'll do is punch you and punch you wherever and you're carotid. Like I'll go with the kick, just knowing the points of that I'll like take you down immediately. If you, if, if you come at me, I'm just going to hit you with a huge yeah. where it counts in the stomach, in the gut. In the karate, that'll take, that'll take almost anybody down. I don't care how strong you are. You hit someone in the ribs, right in the kidney, yeah. it is so painful. Or you kick them in the right side of the thigh where that main artery goes, yeah. it'll take your leg out, and it hurts so much and, when they kick you there, man. And knowing the points where I could hit to to do the most damage and just take you out, that's what I go for. I'm it's not like gonna... least resistance. I don't want to fight for seven and a half minutes straight. No. You know how no. long seven and a half minutes is during a fight? That yeah. is. Journal. that is yeah. so long exactly I want to do it as fast as possible and be done and be like yeah. all right are you okay i'll make sure you i'll make sure you're okay man i care enough to make sure you're okay even though yeah. you literally try to come at me you know yeah yeah, yeah. i like, care about people even the ones that want to harm me like the yeah. grays when i went through that with the qhc stuff man i would just project and tell them i only i do not wish you harm 
I wish that you can activate your heart center that's being blocked and you can feel the things you've done. Not necessarily to just know, it's, it's to like, to learn compassion, to learn that what you're doing, you're only doing it to yourself. Especially when they do this, they don't even numb you for nothing. They're not known to numb anybody. They just will do full procedures on you. Yeah. And just remove your memories are like, you're not going to remember it anyways. It's just like, it doesn't matter, man. That trauma yeah. carries throughout lifetimes. But they, they feel semi-mechanical to me. So appealing to their heart center isn't really working because they're not feeling anything. I know. I understand. They have they have a 100% heart center block. Yeah. It's blocked. It's That's how they were designed. Yes. They were the Part of them were created and it was turned off for them to do what they do. But yeah. I try to energetically show them it exists. Even though DNA, yeah. they can block it, it still exists because all life has the chakras, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I still try to send them love no matter what, even though it's futile. You, you got to try, man, because if none of us tries, how is this ever yeah. going to end? You it, know, it, it has to be somebody that will deviate from the average reaction and be like, you are really hurting me. I send you love and healing. Yeah. And and to the two be human beings that attack me, I'm like, I don't want to kill you. I don't want to use my ability to hurt you. Just back off and go away and don't ever come at me again. You learned the message, just go on your way and don't do this again to others. What did they learn from this encounter with me? What did I learn? I don't engage unless you engage with me. I just fight back in self-defense. That is all that I do because I don't want to be interfered with. I don't want to fight anybody. I did enough of that in the SSP. I was a uh, off an assassin, mm -hmm. a cleaner, a fixer. Come, take them out quietly, bag them, tag them, throw them into the um, floating barge prison ship that's cloaked and moves around. It's not on a planet. Crystal clear. Use the weapons at hand, bag, tag. Some of them were criminals. Some of them, it was a thin line what they were. And sometimes they're just good guys and they say they're the bad guy. And you yeah. literally kill innocent people and they convince yeah. you they're bad. And it turns out if you did go down the rabbit hole to try to figure out who they were later, you feel like you killed an innocent person. I never killed them. Bad tag returned to the Bardship prison and that's where... They were tortured, maybe killed, don't know, because they didn't stay, stick around to observe. So that is some big stuff and heavy, heavy stuff. Being an assassin is not a joke. And it's not a good life, man. No. And for me to always be in red, for always, I walk through life as if I'm a soldier and I'm always looking for weapons. Yeah. Whenever I need somebody, a guy, even if they're my friend, momentarily I scan their body and look for weaknesses. I, I do that for, all the time. I look for injuries in the knees or like broken bones or like, I'll ask, I, I don't know. It's weird, but like, that's the soldier in me. I have to know if you ever become an opponent, I want to know from the beginning how to disable you. I, I, I had, I assess them energetically, not even physically. I read their soul frequencies like, Hmm. Well, this I might want to know from Ziliana. Mine are being blocked. So it's, it's inspiring to become someone who's so activated. But you read people by body language and cues how they act and how they- I'm extremely they... psychic. Yeah, I can read, you are. I can read people like crazy. Yeah, well, maybe you're reading souls. Like I look I look at a person, I check your soul, you check out clean. You can talk to me. If you weren't clean, I wouldn't. we wouldn't be doing this. If you're a threat to me on a soul level, it just doesn't happen as a connection. That's how I read people. Yeah, I'll look at them physically and that, but I'll look at the soul component. Are you a pervert? Are you a pedophile? Are you this? Are you that? Like it reads in the soul frequency, just as an example. You read as a clean person, but you've had a lot of trauma that you've worked on and still dealing with. And I'm good with getting past the trauma. I'm good at integrating and stepping forward and using it as a power. Like I feel yeah. powerful going through the trauma because if you don't, you'll never know what you're capable of. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you'll hit a peak in life and then you start dying because there's no point of living anymore. There's nothing else. It's like, if it was yeah. a graph, you go to life and then you plateau, you know, and then you start dying. 
you know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, people, I tell people who I am and what I am, and I keep it straight as is, there, you're not going to get from me anything that I am not. You're going to get what I am and that's it. There, there, there's no extra skeletons in my closet, really, because I try to be with honor and work in honor. It's kind of where I, though I put that public challenge out a week ago or a week, a week and a half ago when I originally said, does anybody remember me from the programs? If so, please explain. So yeah. that was me wanting to, to show people who I am. If you have any, if you think I'm a bad guy in any way, like I know that every single person gets attacked and they get called the bad guy. They're eventually going to get called the bad guy. So from the beginning, I say, people, if you want to view me, look into me and see it yourself. Yeah. I'm very heart-based. I am pretty much, oh, I feel I'm 100% heart-based. But well, I'm a soul. Yeah, which you're is not. It's really weird because you're either one or the other. It's hard to be both. Oh, no, you can be both. I, I don't like the word super soldier, but people call me that all the time. I, I say I was a, what's the word I like, what's the word I use? I like to say an SSP yeah. experiencer and yeah. a lab abductee. That's what I like to call myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a certain word in these, this, I was a cybernetics um, operative or something like that. Cybernet cybernetics technician, that's the correct term when you worked in cybernetics labs and planetary core. Did any, have to, any of that have to do with Kruger? Like a system? No, no, that? no, no. Strictly planetary corp. They don't play well with other groups, actually. They barely tolerate lunar space operations. So is planetary corp also colloquial known as what uh, uh, Corey Good would have called it, interplanetary corporate can go nope. it? It's nope. two separate kind of things? Two separate things. Gotcha. But it is a U.S., originally U.S.-based funded operation that branched out on its own. No mm. longer needs Black Ops funding on its own. A lot of that funding was that $2.3 trillion we were missing in September 10, 2001, when Rumsfeld spoke. A lot of that was going to the SSP, and that's why they had to cover it all up, because mm. that would have brought the covert programs to the public with Congress. Yeah. That already happened with MK Ultra, like in the 70s. They had to, that came to the public. They're like, okay, we're shutting it down, which, mm -hmm. which only means that we just went secret. And yeah. they, were, they were secret in the first place. Like they were operating in universities and hospitals, but it was all compartmentalized. No one knew they were connected to these groups and the Rand Corporation and all this other stuff. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I feel it's more becoming overt. Like I keep hearing some stuff is going to happen in 2026 and 2027. Do you hear know anything about that? I keep hearing 2026 over and over. A lot of these programs will be shown for what they are and what they do. Like a lot of secrets, ex secrets being expressed more openly. Um, I try not to deep dive too much in that because futures can change too. So it's like timelines shift and change. Uh, I live more in the moment. What's in the now? What's important now? What can we do to make a positive change for the now? Mm -hmm. what, what can we do to help? It's like this is and, and telling the truth, like whatever you've experienced, share your truth in the in your truth, because you might be helping others to understand their experiences better. To what capacity you can. Um, I try to focus on that. And if I ever see something in a remote viewing or a future possibility with someone, I prefer to talk to them first before publicly saying, any I know you, you took a challenge and you said, if you remember me, just tell me and write it out here. I asked to talk to you privately like this first to see what's going on because I don't want to take it public until I've actually talked to you. Yeah, it's a lot kind of, of people has sent those messages through DM. So a lot yeah. of it has been some controversial sounding stuff because they they also felt it wasn't, per, it was too personal. And that's kind of what I expected, two different conversations, but I still want the public to know. Mm -hmm. I want to let them know that legitimate people recognize me and remember me. So like, this is me stepping forward to show people I am not full of shit. You're not. Like I had no idea I was even involved with this until... July. 
Mm -hmm. I've had all these dreams my whole life. I've felt like a soldier. I've had these memories that I thought were just in my mind, like they were creations. Mm -hmm. So like, this is all new to me, man. <laughs> and I mean, when I did the remote viewing, I, I, I don't know what to expect. Whatever comes in, whatever comes in, I don't control the remote viewing. So I didn't know if it would be SSP, if, if it would be something else, whatever came in, those hidden subterranean cities came in under the earth. That's what came in as being connected to you. I'm like, well, that doesn't feel SSP to me. Just by looking at that afterwards, when it was done, like, I don't think that's SSP, but that's not for me to judge what it is. I'm just the remote viewer. What came in, came in. That would be like a special access program within that structure because I'm providing the tech and the technologies for these programs to then go everywhere else. So like, yeah, aren't middleized. Yeah, but it just doesn't feel like normal SSP. It feels more like some kind of a inner earth stuff going on. Mm. Like you're their guest because it's like goes there underground, travels underground on a regular basis a guest of light people, nodes of energy. Would this be through consciousness transfer or physical abduction? I think both. I think mm. both are involved. And you're like there, it's an archaeological exchange program. You're studying life force rejuvenation techniques, high energy frequency, powerful structures. It's like, um, I... It just doesn't feel SSP related to me, honestly. It doesn't feel like an SSP program. It feels something different to me. But then I don't question that or judge it. Like if it is maybe something to do with the SSP, there might be more to it than what this initial remote viewing expresses and reveals. Again, I can't I can't say or judge because I'm not supposed to, as a remote viewer, assume anything. <laughs> Like well, that's nothing. a clean viewing. You don't want to come in with your own pre-programmed expectations and stuff because you won't get a clean reading. You have to go in yeah. neutral, period. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's, it's like, that's why I showed it to you. And you're like, I asked you, what is this? I don't know your experiences. We're meeting for the very first time. Yeah, this is our first conversation we've ever had. Yeah. like. But I followed Ileana for a long time. I've been listening to her story for a long time. So Yeah, and I just recently... Re listen to Matthew Mornian's show with you and I was listening to the Anunnaki history because you're quite elo eloquent in the description of what the real history feels like what what actually I was. The Anunnaki the most that is my number one studied subject period I I probably research the Anunnaki almost seven days a week mm. well I've been doing it for the last two years because it's, it's like what's being told is not what it was portrayed as like the real history is a little different and so it's like yep everything you said in the order you said it that is the same thing I discovered in the history and, and it was and, cool to kind of talk about that because that was the f I don't get to talk a lot because you know mm -hmm. when you're interviewing guests it's not about you mm -hmm. so yeah. like Matthew when we had that that was the that's the most fun I've had in a interview I think ever and we were laughing a lot and we were having fun and we were just Anunnaki I'm like okay it starts with a lalu and then this happens alalu and then you know all this stuff it's just like and a lot of my information like a lot of people go by Sitchin's interpretations but I go even farther back I go to Stephanie Dowley and George Smith because Sitchin's got a lot of his interpretations from them exactly <laughs> so the stories are a little bit different but like once you discover that all the Sumerian tablets basically say that there's been these space wars, these beings came down, they modified us, they created this civilization, other star systems were involved, they partially edited our DNA, but other programs were involved in that, and everybody wants to just focus on the Anunnaki only. You know what I'm saying? They weren't the sole contributor to all of it. No. But they were, I think, their most overt. Like their yeah. signature is literally in our genetic code yeah the cross show the cross is literally in our genetic code now i was communicating with what is known as nimna ninherzog yeah, yeah. And, sh and she said she ascended through the grand canyon technology she found a way to lift her light body code and ascend 
So that's what she told me. And she told me they came, came in in these huge motherships that landed in different parts of the planet. And they started doing what they were doing with, a, you know, hybridization programs, tinkering with the DNA. But they came in motherships, like huge motherships that had was cities three, inside. Was it three? Hmm? Was it three big motherships? Uh, more like 10, but they were huge with domes and stuff in, 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 in their own environments inside. They I've weren't seen ships in different sessions. And it's like, I've seen them. My, my ex-wife was one of the builders of that technology. She was an ant being and she would design the modules and she would describe the dome and how it interacts. And it holds this many people and like, yeah, so freaking amazing realms, man. They weren't exactly desperate to mine for gold. They needed the resources, but they came here for genetic manipulation. Like they weren't desperate, desperate. Yeah, they needed it to fix their atmosphere thing on Nibiru, but it wasn't like they were too desperate. They were exploring. They were testing out these motherships to see if they can land them and have them as homes because they would not live in the same homes that the humans built as the kingships. They lived in their motherships. Yeah, yeah, like uh how what is like where Zeus lives. He lives on a ship above the clouds above like yeah. Mar Mount Tartarus and stuff, but it's yeah. literally a craft. Yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah. a floating mythological city. It's literally a floating ship city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motherships like literal technology. It's yes. not physical in any way. Yeah, yeah. So this, I think, is what's considered the Garden of Eden, these motherships. They were the Edens more than one Eden. Like, I believe that the Ark, I don't believe it contained a bunch of live animal pairs. I believe it was genetic information that was stored in databases. Yes, 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 it was. Our, like Noah's Ark was a saucer-shaped silver thing with a bit of blue that uh, collected genetic DNA, collected some people to take off in it, but it wasn't a boat with a bunch of animals and a lot of people crammed into it. And no one talks that Noah was literally described as a giant. When people read the Bible, they took a lot of these gospels out and stuff, but like no Noah was literally a giant, man. Like, And then they show in the movies that the giants, the watchers are separate and they would assist Noah, but he's like a human, like human size. I'm like, uh uh, man, that's not how the original descriptions were. He was literally a giant. He was direct descendant of the Anunnaki, man. Like, and guess what? The word Noah has never, fa never been found in any archaeological record ever. His name was Atrahasis. That was one of his original names, Atrahasis. Mm -hmm. If you read the Atrahasis, it's basically Enki coming, telling Noah, hey, man. My brother wants to wipe you out. Put Take these genetics, store these genetics, because he wants to wipe all these genetics out. Please save them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's history. Anunnaki history is very interesting. It's long in, in its detail. Nimna said she ascended, so she's talking to me in a different realm. So, and I feel like it was safe to talk to her. And she was the one that was playing with the genetic code 320,000 years with the Adamic people, like the blonde girls and boys and the blondes, the blonde Aryan kind of a um, genetic line. Is that really connected to Lyra? I'm All not sure. ever studied that original prototype of the blonde, blue hair, green eyes, red maybe, hair. Maybe, Lyra. maybe she was... She was trying to create that genetic strain to its highest capacity for the, for the children to be born without genetic mutations through the human blonde mothers, which I think she mixed in some of the Anunnaki blondes, the human Adamic ones to create more better Adamic ones. And I was like 10, 12 years old in her Garden of Eden on some island, hidden island on Earth, where she was doing this combination splicing and she called she said I'm your auntie I'm your auntie Nimna um and I communicated with her several times and she said like later on when everything like in more modern times she ascended through the Grand Canyon technology because that's the Anunnaki labs that were in the Grand Canyon 
have you ever remote viewed the Grand Canyon? I know there's so I much did. to there, and that's why yeah. they are making it where it's off limits. Like people are yeah. finding, I know there's pyramids there. They're finding there is, Egyptian statues, full size yes. Egyptian statues. Yes, but Crazy. there's also there's also Anunnaki technology that's ascension technology there that can literally ascend you into your light body and take you off planet, and that's what she used to ascend and go. So she she didn't stay in the warfare politics with Anki and Enlil. She went a different path. That's that's what I've seen, and I remote viewed the Grand Canyon, and it sort of checks out is what she said. Again, I don't put full trust and value into what Nimna said because she's still well, in the Anunnaki. Remember that her own brother raped her more yeah. than a few times. Enlil yeah. raped her more than a few times. Like Zeus is his other name. He was known as the serial rapist. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm a tattooer. I've been tattooing 23 years coming up next month. And you know how many times I've tattooed Zeus on people? You know, it's there's this t image going around Pinterest. It's like this big, bold Zeus face, right? And I'm like, that's the freaking bad guy, man. Like, you literally are tattooing a freaking rapist on your arm, man. I never tell them that because I yeah. would just feel like, you're crazy, man. It's just Zeus. Mm -hmm. No, it's not, dude. It's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Like, like, like Thor, everybody idolizes Thor. He's literally in Lil in the movies. They're showing you that is in Lil, but they're making him sound like a good guy. And you're like, I fucking love in Lil and Zeus. It's the same. No, yeah. it's all inverted. So who's Anki and Marduk? Because they were several different beings throughout time. Are you asking me that? Yeah. What I know is Marduk is allegedly Inki's son. And Marduk was responsible for nasty shit. He was the one that called himself Amun-Ra and he defaced Egypt because he would war with his brother Thoth and did the pyramid wars, the shit that happened with Osiris and Sed, and then it continued with Marduk and Thoth. And then Thoth went to South America where he was known as Quetzalcoatl, Coco Khan. Like he was described as a tall white, white skin, Caucasian beard and everything. That's the freaking Anunnaki man. Yeah, same history I've been reading for the last two years and just trying to figure out where, where all these lineages fit in the true story, what that is. And people thought Quetzalcoatl was a Pleiadian. No. Mm. So it's like some conjecture. I don't believe conjecture. I like the history. For me, I check energetic truth of history, what rings as truth and what doesn't ring as truth. And that's how I collate my information in my books based on that, on the energetic reading. So Nimna's thing kind of checked out. It's like, yep, they came in motherships. They did their genetic projects. She didn't quite go in line with Enki and Enlil. She went a different path. So she wasn't as schemy as they were. She was also a master geneticist. Like she was the, she was the, she was better than Enki was. And that was Enki's main job, but she was, what's the word? She was the, the she was the gifted genius yes. in that realm. And like, I, I always ask people, you've never heard of Ninma or Ninhursag? And they're like, no, I'm like, you ever read the Bible? Remember when God said, let's make man in our image? It was actually three people talking, Enki and Lil and Ninhursag. That was it. So if you know the Bible and you're a Christian, you're worshiping the Anunnaki because Yahweh is in Lil. Mm -hmm. he's the bad guy in the bibles told from his point of view against his brother yeah you know well I, it's a long extended history and i don't consider anki as the good guy either me neither i've never seen him as a good guy and it, it it annoys me because everybody worships inky it's always good shit he's such a he's returning this he's returning that here comes the grill dna dude no he is the reason why we are warring eternally on this planet they brought their wars from nibiru to this planet and they never stopped father kills son son kills father brother kills brother brother kills nephew nephew kills brother they keep wanting to just take over over and over and over who's going to be king and it's never ended all we found out all of our presidents but two are connected to john lackland john wow. lackland has direct anunnaki dna so think about that that's crazy so we've been blood and light controlled in the United States since 1776. Exactly. And what happened, like, you know the history of the Anunnaki. What happened to Nimna? Because nobody talks about her much. 
I remember reading the stories that she was killed. So that can be the, the covering them up of the, the goddess information. It's kind of like when they came to, before they came to earth, we used to worship goddesses, right? And then it became patriarchal. It was like a mutiny kind of deal. And it started with, if you want to go as far back as the Draco queen. And that's, that's the whole kingship shit, fighting over who should rule, what sister should rule. This sister kills this sister. And like, you have mutinies and like, I'm directly involved in that. I would say, ask Penny Bradley what my involvement is with her in that moment. We are directly connected. We well, it, yeah, and you said, uh, I do have Anunnaki past lives, and I'm like, I'm fine with that, as long as you're not supporting the second coming of the Anunnaki. As no, that's... not at all. I'm trying to hear to uncover the truth and show people they are not the good guys, man. They are the reason why we are freaking literal slaves. Mm -hmm. They created this entire monetary system the slave system, the prison system, the education system, all of it is forms of control. Mm -hmm. So come on, man, how can that be a good guy? And they also spliced, they were connected to grace somehow and spliced it with the pharaohs, Akhenaten and the rest of it. Like They were involved in that too. Because I know Akhenaten was the first ones depicted as having an extended skull along yes. with his wife and the pot belly white hips. I yeah. fully believe that a lot of them had that shape, but they were never depicted that way. The shape was controlled to not, because remember it was more overt back then, literal reptilians in a, walking around with humans, mm -hmm. you know, and they had to make hybrids because that apparently didn't work long term and people would freak out. So they started mixing DNA with humans, becoming the hybrids, and these presidents, I believe they're all hybrids. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you can remove the main lineage of the Anunnaki, and they say they left. I don't believe that. I don't believe they've ever left this earth ever. They've been here since they arrived, and they might have emissaries here and hybrids. No way in fuck they ever left. I'm sorry. I will not. I will tell that to anybody. I don't care who you are. I'll disagree with you and I won't judge you for it. You can have your own opinion. I won't attack you for an opinion. We shouldn't be the type of people where we constantly demonize people that think divergently from you. It's stupid. I like when people give me criticism because it makes me see from a different point of view, like constructive criticism. Have you ever thought of this? You ever thought about doing it like this? That's a good idea, man. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I happen to agree with you that I don't think they ever left. I think they just went underground and more like hiding, but still manipulating things on the surface. It feels to me like Nimna did leave, like she ascended through that Grand Canyon tech that she left behind in the laboratory. That's what my findings show me, and I've talked to her. She's literally in a different place, different density. And she wears clothes with DNA protection codes and stuff. Like, wow. Really into flower of life and DNA coding on the clothes itself. Like capes, all these weird dresses and stuff. It's like this woman dresses in everything that has sacred geometry on it. It's like almost like a form of literal protection. Yes. Like, yeah, like a lot of DNA coding, flower of life, genetics. It's like interweaved into the clothing. A lot of blue, a lot of like different silver. I like this woman dresses and every time I saw her, she was in a different dress code with this stuff all over the clothing. And I tried to draw that the best I could. Like, what are you reading into that? I'm, I'm curious how tall she is with what you observed. Uh, she's like almost six foot eight, I would say. Is it? Yeah, six foot eight. It's way shorter than I had, had thought. No, but like, she would have been more of the light in the darkness of the Anunnaki. And it caused a lot of separation because when they came here, there was a lot of malevolent reasons for it and manipulation, like you say, DNA and because we know DNA is the number one currency in the in the cosmos, period. Oh, DNA. yeah. It's not yeah. gold. No. Gold is everywhere. Gold is all throughout the asteroid belt. It is literally floating in chunks near Ceres in the asteroid belt, really. Mm -hmm. But, like, it was cool to hear the story about how the Anunnaki could never pass the hammered bracelet. 
So you realize reading, reading these ancient texts, this shit happened way longer than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And it's not so linear as a timeline as the way they describe it. And they, because they describe this, this happened in their ancient past, the Anunnaki, the exploding of Tiamat. Yeah. But think about this. The story goes is Inky sent Marduk to kill her and he used a wind weapon. I think it's called the Kalu. And he ended up killing Tiamat and he split her body. Part of it became the earth. You know, the, the, the mythos of the story about yeah. The, the the water of Apsu is the salt and the water of Tiamat is like the spring water and like you put the dome over that, over Tiamat's body, stuff like that. Like I study that shit heavily, man. It's very fascinating stuff. Because if is. you're there, it's almost like you're re-remembering this stuff the more you research it. And that's why I'm so obsessed with it, man. Yeah. And Tiamat feels like it was an actual planet and so is Maldek and both of them exploded and created the asteroid belt, the hammered bracelet. That's what it feels I like to me. I almost feel that Maldek and Tiamat is the same planet. No, it's they feel like two planets. Like I know history says it's one planet, but to me it feels like two planets. I'm not saying history says it. History pretty much says it's two different planets, but if yeah. they were all described as this, as this asteroid belt, where yeah. does the other planet exist in what galaxy? Because yeah. I've never seen NASA come out with a galaxy where they announced there was an asteroid belt between planetoids or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So it's convoluted. So like, I don't know the answer. I've only known the stories and I'm trying to make it make sense. Yeah. Like, I don't like to read a lot of Anunnaki books written by humans. I like to read the actual Sumerian sources directly. Mm -hmm. Like you go to like YCLA.com and they have online um, interpretations where you can see it and it'll, you can read what the Sumerian tablet says. So mm -hmm. I like to go straight to the damn source or like Ashiana Dean, like her information, goddamn, that's like, she's one of my number one people, period. Like I would love to meet that woman. She doesn't do interviews anymore. No. I hit them up and uh, her assistant said she doesn't do interviews anymore. I'm like, oh my God. It's freaking Ashiana Dean, man. Like I, ugh. I've studied and Re Lisa Renee too. They both write similar things, so I don't know if the Guardians gave them the same info or what or how that came to be. But they're both ha disseminating the same information or similar. Like, and her their their information is so complex that only a complicated mind would see it as truth because, yeah, the way it's being. I have trouble with small words with my traumatic brain injury. I, I can't use small words. It's freaking hard. So like complicated stuff, I can do it. Use big words. I can't with find me. a word, man. I can't you, find a word. Uh, I would say com complex. And I deep dive their stuff quite a lot. And I reference that in my books because it reads as true history of what happened. So and like to Lisa me Renee stuff, like uh, Laura uses Lisa stuff all the time. Like because the information is freaking spot on. You know, because, like, yeah, I referenced that too. And I don't think Nimna died. I think she just secretly went and ascended and quietly built a lab in the Grand Canyon and did her thing. <laughs> it's, that's just what I'm getting. And that's what she told me to. So it's like, and I don't trust on Rocky fully, even Nimna. It's like you take it with a grain of salt and you kind of start to put the information together. I mean, this woman, sometimes she has red hair, sometimes she has black hair, sometimes she has blonde hair. Her hair changes all the time because they can change their physical appearance energetically. Once yeah, it's like every, everybody, everybody likes to say these watch devices that the Anunnaki wear. They say they're all time travel, but I also believe because the Draco use them as well. They can project another form over themselves with this watch technology and make you, they can make you think they're anything. Yeah. And this is where a lot of the shape-shifting stuff came from. And no one believes in shape-shifting, but if you believe it's a technology being projected, they're showing you since the Sumerian tablets they were using this technology. And they're yeah. telling you they were using it. And no one believes it. And it's the oldest writing we ever discovered before, before language. Yeah. So, so like the Sumerian language, that freaking language is from another planet. Oh, yeah. Sanskrit, those are ET languages. Sanskrit is an ET language, man. Like... For and it, sure. it's cool if you think about like the Christian Bible, you have boring names like 
John, David, Michael, you're like, I don't want to ever be named with those boring names, but you realize those names come from other planets. Yeah. If you can think about it that way. You, I see it differently now. Like I just, I can break down the Bible now and it's just like, it's all about extraterrestrials. Yeah. They talk it, about ascension. They removed all the shit about ascension and space wars. The book of Job, Ali, the book of Job, all that stuff. Uh, book of Enoch. It's just like, it all talks about reincarnation and like consciousness and like, Mm -hmm. frustrating yeah well for me she she doesn't wear the watch she says because i'm on a higher dimensional capacity i can just change my hair color energetically because there's no thing as time where well, she asks her genetics if you can consciously talk to your dna would that not be cool i think she does that because she's all into she's like i can change my appearance with a thought pattern well think it's about the frequency if if you're studying DNA and you want to be a master geneticist, you got to stop thinking so literally about how to physically do it mechanically because DNA is created through consciousness. It's not creating with machines on the other side by these creator gods. They're using consciousness yes. from non-physical bodies to create a material physical body. Mm -hmm. So you can consciously program those codes in with your mind. I come from another realm. A higher realm that is non-physical and i've been told it's called the golden phoenix fire and one of my roles of a creator was to help create universes and physics the roles the beings for example and one of the one of the main cosmic laws is if you create beings and it starts to revert and go back in evolution you have to destroy the beings that's mandatory so i'm coming from that Mm -hmm. and having been a geneticist in atlantis we were taught don't create anything with mutations that you have to destroy and dispose of make sure it's perfect you can't make mistakes with it if it's mutated mm -hmm. it's not good and, and all the mutants they made fight to the death in the coliseum man it was it was so fucked up man so much innocence literal innocence was forced <sighs> yeah it was a mess. I really want to make them pay for what they did, man. It was a messy time where they were experimenting with breeding chimeras, sons of Belial underground, under the Atlantean outposts. Again, underground. You take it all underground, put it in labs, you hide it. You think nobody will find it, but eventually it will be found. Well, and you escape Earth laws if you do it underground. There's no real laws for subterranean parts of the planet. There is no system by any country or the United Nations that is public. You can say the country is owned, but it's the top layer of where that geographic part would be. But mm -hmm. underground, there are no laws. Yeah. There is no oversight. So it's just despicable shit one after another with no accountability same with taking it off planet with these corporations planetary corp lunar space operations kruger nachtwaffen all of it is off planet fair game for whatever they want to do they do in these programs and i'm sorry i don't believe that the galactic federation of worlds is now taking over these programs and made them all good I said that the same thing. I'm glad we, we see eye to eye with a lot of shit. And exactly, why would they care now? This has been going on for not only millions, but billions of years, yeah. eternally warring. If they could have helped us, they could have helped us 100,000 years ago if they wanted. Because the difference in technology 100,000 years ago is not anything different from today because these technologies today existed 100,000 years ago and a million years ago in other different existences. Yeah. So like everything we discover, it's just we're discovering old technologies we think are new. Yeah. Well, I, I remember being a guardian and I still still do guardian work here on the planet. But I remember going into these Federation meetings and like they're just sitting there talking around, talking, talking for hours or maybe months, even like, well, how do we save this planet? How do we do that? Oh, how do we make sure we don't encroach on anybody's rights? And it's like the more you talk, that planet is going to be gone tomorrow because you keep talking about it. You're not doing anything to actually save it. You're just talking and planning. There's too much diplomacy instead of action. Yes. Agreed. I'm like, walking out of that meeting, like, I'm just going to go to that planet, 
clean as much as I can, take care of business, take out whatever I need to take out, clean whatever I need to clean, free whoever I need to clean and leave it in better shape than what I came in finding it as to the best of my ability as a guardian and report back to them to what I did and let them like talk it out and tell me, oh, you shouldn't have done that. You broke, you know, like um, you broke that law of non-interference. You went and cleaned it up like, it would have been gone tomorrow anyways and destroyed because it was being invaded. It's funny, the whole non-interference thing. I don't get it because we know we've been in Our first writing ever said beings came from another planet, manipulated us, and forced us to worship them. Yeah. What part of the prime directive would be violated if the first history that was ever taught on this earth, that's remembered? T it doesn't apply. It literally doesn't apply because we've been told since the beginning who the gods are, lowercase g. Mm -hmm. How is that a violation of prime directive? It, it, it doesn't violate it, man. It's not organic. If they would have, before the manipulation happened, the genetic stuff started happening, because remember there was other genetic programs going on. Yeah. It wasn't like manipulated to the fact of what it is now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was hijacked. Yes. You know, because people, they like to say Anunnaki's were the first ones here. No, they weren't. No. The Draco owned this planet a long time ago, and they leased it to the dang Anunnaki. They have, they own every planet in the solar system. Mm -hmm. And people's like, the Draco's been kicked out of the solar system. The Anunnaki's been kicked out of the solar system. What are you talking about, man? No, they haven't. They're, they're still lurking around behind the shadows and the secret doing what they do best, manipulating. And, and people tell me, oh, Atlantis was only 26,000 years ago, according to history. I'm like, I remember Atlantis being here 2 million years ago. Think about this. The Emerald Tablets of Thoth was dated to be around 36,000 BC, right? Mm -hmm. Thoth literally says in the beginning of the Emerald Tablets, I am Thoth, king of Atlantis. I am Thoth, king of Atlantis. A deluge happened. It already existed before. The pyramids yeah. were already there in Egypt. They didn't just arrive in Egypt and build these pyramids after Atlantis. That was part of Atlantis's expansion around the planet. Atlantis wasn't just some damn island. It was a large chunk of the earth. That's mm -hmm. why we find their pyramids and their building structures and their ancient technologies all over the damn planet. Yeah, specifically on certain parallels and you know it's rampant mm -hmm. on yeah. all these parallels you see it it's just like all across it it's just like and you see that they're building circuits and once they complete that circuit all around then boom all energy pulling it in sending it out like yeah and i remember the, the past life geneticist two million years ago and i remember a mermaid lifetime it's just like it I remember Atlantis started 2 million years ago, according to my past lives. What do you read into that energy? I don't know, man. I've heard so many scenarios that I've tried to piece it together, but everything contradicts each other. Mm -hmm. As if we, if we think about timeline, they say the Anunnaki arrived 450,000 years ago, and the main genetic editing they did for Homo sapiens sapiens was done exactly 200,000 years ago. So there's a big-ass gap, you know? Mm -hmm. They only arrived 450,000 years ago, but they've been here for a couple million years. That doesn't make sense. Well, Nimna said she started doing the Adamic lineage, the blondes, 320,000 years ago. Well, think about this. In the mythos of like the asteroid belt, the hammer bracelet. The timeline, according to them, doesn't make sense from the Sumerian tablets. It just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. because the battle with Tiamat involved Enki's son. That gives you somewhat of a time frame, right? Mm -hmm. But literally what you see and the experiences, it just, it all contradicts each other. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's way more ancient than we've ever told. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Not and at all. Yeah, and it's like now the current scenarios is Nibiru is parked by Jupiter and we're visiting the Anunnaki and we're friends. It's like, according to the history of the Sumerian tablets, Nibiru is outside of the hammered bracelet. 
So yeah, mm-hmm. considered like when when Alalu came from Nibiru, he was describing the first planet, which was Pluto. He described the size. He described the atmosphere, all that. Then he goes from planet to planet. And then he approaches the the asteroid belt. So all that shit happened in their ancient past, which would suggest millions of years ago. But for it to make sense for Marduk to be involved in those stories, either they have lifespans that are way longer than we can imagine, period. If they can, if you're a master geneticist, you can ultimately take your consciousness and you can put yourself in a clone body for millions of years and mm-hmm. never go back to source for judgment ever. Yeah. And I believe that's what the Anunnaki did. Their nuclear war obviously made them sterile. Yes. But I think they got so out of control that they created a process where they would prevent being judged. And this is why the Egyptians, which are direct sins of the Anunnaki, they would place the scare beetle over the heart and it would block allegedly Mott being able to see what truly happened in your life. Mm-hmm. So it was like a technology that would block the gods from seeing into you, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, Cyrus would control that and you'd go in the do And then you would have Maud and her 42 people take your heart out, put it on here. And if it doesn't equal a feather, then the devourer will, devourer will eat your heart. Yeah. That's and Amit, Amit, the devourer would eat your heart. So for them to do that, they are literally saying that we are God and they're using a prototype of what exists with the cosmos naturally, organically, and they attempted to hijack jack it and do it literally. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the current story going around with the galactic princess is that, oh, Nibiru is an energetic mothership and it travels and it's sparked by Jupiter. And we all know who we mean is the galactic princess. Again, not using names, but we 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 yeah, it's like we're not trying to badmouth anybody. We just no. have a different view. It doesn't mean we're the damn enemy. I've seen people yeah. blacklisted for having a different opinion of the princess. That yeah. is insane. That is freaking insane. Agreed. How Agreed. far are we in humanity if you you basically do what the bad guys do? You shadow ban, you delete, you deplatform people because their views don't agree with you. Like who are you, man? Yeah, I, I don't do that. I just don't name names. I use kind of code. Me too. I always, I just, I don't want to disrespect people. Like, no. I respect people's free will. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be a damn public debunker of other people in this field. I'm not going to take part in that because people yeah. who take part of that, it's super negative. Yeah, I will say this, like, I feel like that's a holographic simulation that Nibiru has traveled and parked itself by Jupiter. It just feels real, but it's holographic simulation simulation of them thinking they're having a real world experience when it's something different. Well, think about this. They say, if it's a mothership, why does a mothership have an exact orbit of 3,600 years? That doesn't make sense. That would only suggest if it was an actual ship or a hollowed out planetoid that was being used as some kind of arc technology like the moon, right? Mm -hmm. It would be dead in the water because if it never goes out of that elliptical orbit of 3,600 years, which is called a char one year old, like people don't get every orbit around our solar system. They are one years old for every 3,600 years of our timeline. They are one years old. Think about this. The earth is based on the distance around the sun and how long it takes. 300 and six, whatever 300 something days yeah what about 65 mars? what about mars mars might have an orbit of 720 days so every 720 days is one year old for a martian yeah think about that the farther you go out like pluto it's even worse it's even more intense so like you have beings even farther out of that rotation and they base time on the revolution around that sun yeah, time literally doesn't even exist at that point then because it's all perception planet to planet existence is this existence what time actually is yeah so i think nibiru is actually does exist but it's not traveling to park itself by jupiter because it's an actual planet not a mothership that or maybe it's a hollowed out planet that, that can travel but it doesn't go around parking itself by different planets every year just to visit and talk to you I don't think it can because in the Sumerian tablets, they say when Nibiru approached our solar system, it would cause all these things to happen in all the different planets. It wasn't just Earth. Mm -hmm. It would cause these different planets to start suffering from volcanism. 
and electrical activity and it would discharge through aurora borealis and aurora australis yeah and like people think that that's only on earth but like mars has it all these other planets shoot this electricity out the poles they are they are all anode and cathodes all these planets are unless it's a dead planetoid right it's not going to have that mm -hmm. but that's what i believe i told brad olson on the first interview me and laura ever did that my opinion is the core is not solid like they say it is. I believe it's some kind of portal. It's some kind of energy. And that energy has to go somewhere. The earth is geodesic. We know that. So mm -hmm. I believe this energy is a core frequency and it shoots out north and south because if it doesn't, it'll explode the planet. And that's why there's openings at the north and south poles because this energy has to discharge out. If it doesn't, it'll implode on itself. It's like a torus field. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's, yeah, what a, it, that's what the planet is. It's a torus field. It feels like it's a crystalline energy to me that keeps spinning and vibrating. That is not... technology, crystals. Like yeah. that is, that's the secret to everything, crystals. Not the physical metal components and the integrated circuits, it's crystals. A lot of these ships are powered by a single crystal. No technology, no circuits, no wires. Like the ship they're, they stole from me that they're using against, they're, they're using it against me. They're holding my ship. My ship is me. When I go on my ship, it responds to my thoughts. It protects me. It anticipates my actions. And it's dangerous because when I use that ship, unfortunately, I was a Draco Alpha General. And that ship is one of my favorite ships because it's consciousness assisted. And if I ever went to go attack an enemy, I was, I'm really good at that. I am known for doing that. And I would play cat and mouse a lot with my ship where... I would go after a target and I'd play with them. There's no way in hell they're escaping me. I wanted them to feel torment and fear to the last moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, even Planetary Corp, um, the scientists, through the, through the various hypnosis sessions that I did, one was QHHT, others were different. The memories that I got back is that they took me into Planetary Corp specifically through the memory Ingram, sta memory Ingram stations to try to take all my memories where I was developing crystalline ships to integrate that technology into their physical ships now so they can go beyond the speed of light. Like that's the, the main- The thing about the crystals, go ahead, finish. Yeah, the crystals, think Star Trek dilithium crystals, but much better, like as a primary example. They want to integrate that into their physical ships, which is metallic, but then they have to convert everything to be more frequency consciousness, thought consciousness connected. Can't be wires and things. It has to be more holographic. So their tech now, planetary warp, is holographic on the ships with crystalline components. And that was it's damn like, hard to convert. And they, they describe it as like space reduction technology. It's smaller on the outside, but once you go in, it's like expansive. Yes. And it's awesome because like you can build an entire ship with nanites. You can program nanites to build an entire ship. And not only can they build a ship, those nanites will form your weapons, kinetic weapons. Mm -hmm. Just like you're showing on Iron Man, how he went damn near AI with nanites and he can make these weapons and stabbing weapons. That is real technology mm -hmm. and crystals. Oh, sure. yes. Those things themselves are dangerous in the wrong hands. Yeah, and they had me testing that technology when they developed it because it came from my memories. So, and I had Neuralink implants to connect with the, the systems, the navigation systems on these craft to test pilot them. Was your Neuralink here on the left side? Like it was back on the bottom part of that bone? No, it was in the left side of my brain, left hemisphere of my brain. Was I this Neuralink? Neuro. No, not Neura. That is, that is, so Elon Musk, Neuralink has nothing to do with Neuralink. Because yeah, Neuralink, because they were using that on Mars first. Yes, the Nordics developed it. Because there was tall, tall Nordic blondes working with the human personnel on planetary port Mars bases. I, I remember 11 bases with coordinates exactly where they are on Mars. And I put this out publicly years ago. So it, it opens up as energetic pores inside your brain. I had four of them. They have weird sigil-like stuff. 
energetically connected to the cores. Think of an opening blossom of, of a blossom flower. It opens up as energy core. It activates, connects to your nanofiber gold wires, connect to your neurons and axons, and it activates the whole implant. And there was four of those in my brain. And, and how did you get them out? I worked with the Solipsy Raw, and I hear they're Pleiadians, gray hybrids. They're not fully gray. And they gave me different mind maps of circuitry. And I wrote this out, and it's in my book. And I use those imprints, like energetic imprints, to disconnect the energy cores of the implants from the nanofiber components connected to the neurons and the axons, disconnected everything, and then psh, energetically like, destroyed the implants in the brain, like dissipated them. Do you see me having something like that installed? No, I don't. That's you're right. you're anti-implants, like you're anti I any am implants. very anti-force technology that would harm, yes. You, but these Neuralink, Neuralink, Neuralink implants, they actually leaked nanofiber gold into my brain. The MRI showed white matter lesions in the left side of my brain, <laughs> like scarring mm -hmm. from these implants. What would that gold do psychically? Um, in the body. Uh, honestly, those Neuralink's implants were my psychic abilities. They literally were working as my psychic ability. And when they, the implants started failing, I was told by Planetary Core, come back to Mars, we'll energetically recalibrate them so they work again. But that means you work for us again. No way. I'll be like, uh-uh. I I'm said, good. no. I said, you know, I'd rather have my brain implode. I, I had memory gaps. I couldn't, I, I had blurry vision. I couldn't see anything. It was, it's like brain inflammation with white matter scarring on the left side of my brain. So I removed these implants and then I'm like, I need to do some more hypnosis and I need to figure out how plasma can restore my brain neurological damage. So my vision can- plasma is the life force. Yes. I, every week I use human plasma that's injected. I self-inject in myself. Mm -hmm. I got it medically approved to do these injections. Otherwise- I'll have neurological damage again. It's kind of like when, back. People, when people find out that they can get paid a lot of money to donate their plasma, never, no way in fuck, sorry to be cussing so much, but no way in hell would I ever allow my life force to be taken from me for a couple of hundred dollars. You I know, know, but that helps me to survive, actually. No, I'm saying for me, I want to yes. protect my energy force. Yeah. I am totally for using that life force to help others and to heal. I'm not against that. Yeah. Oh, I'm well, saying I want to keep my plasma. And you're more than welcome to keep it because you have free will choice. But on Mars, I remember working with different plasma serums and antigens, like replicating them in the replicators and trying them on myself to see what worked and what didn't. And inoculate- Like a battlefield cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And inoculate those- other SSP assets first coming to Mars because it's a harsh atmosphere. Give them a shot of that. They can like breathe and not feel the altitude sickness, altitude sickness. So like biological drug serums, that's what it's called. So, like, okay, well, let's try this experiment. Do we have anything like this on Earth? Yes, we do. Human plasma, white stuff separated from the red blood, separated clean, they, they screen it for to make sure there's no diseases in your plasma or your blood. It's called blood product. It's at the blood bank. You go and collect the plasma. You inject it into yourself. And that's what keeps the damn neurological symptoms away from me. Because it, it, it literally re, regenerated and kickstarted my immune system. Because it was faulty. Kickstarted. The gold, the gold that's in these implants, do you think that is a component of maybe the obsession of the Anunnaki? And it was, they knew that they can, even far back as then, that they could be using that in these implants. And that was one of the components that activated it. I think gold is part of the nanotech, nanofiber tech, because it cre created a neuronal link in my brain. My brain became a supercomputer with these Neuralink implants. And I was afraid if I, excise them from my brain that I wouldn't have any psychic ability. 
but guess what? They only augmented my psychic ability to make it slightly better. So implants gone. Like an electromagnetic pulse, like a yeah. control EMP pulse that won't short circuit the heart. And if it does short circuit the heart, maybe someone would be there to de defib your ass. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. how I would think if I'm a scientist or if I'm a tactician, how do we do this without, you know, yeah. what can we do? Yeah. Well, I mean, my psychic ability just works fine without the implants. So I don't really need anything to augment me. I can, but it, it took me realization. I was scared to get rid of the implants because I thought they were my ability. They're not. They just augmented my ability to the next level. Guess what? Yeah, because again, it's holographic within the layers of your body. It's not yeah. physically stored in the human body because yeah. there's the Legoic, the Buddhic, the astral. There's all these layers like the, the Russian nesting doll. We're very complicated. We're not just the physical form. We have layers and templates that are built in with everything. It's all just layered. Yeah, exactly. So I realized I am more than my implants. Get rid of them and see what happens because this is a life experiment anyways. So, and I just took time to heal and just took time to learn all the stuff that can just improve my psychic ability, psychic development courses, found the teachers I resonated with to raise my frequency and raise my abilities, like learn psychic development, learn energy healing. The more you learn, the better you are at your craft. So oh, I agree. Yeah, it seemed to work and I'm doing my thing and it's fine, you know. I would never trust anybody to implant me with anything. I, I like I need a hernia surgery stat soon. And I told the the doctors, like, no way you're freaking putting any mesh into so, my body. Yeah, because the mesh lawsuits, everybody who got those mesh damn hernia, everybody is like dying from them. Yeah. Everything they say is safe in the end, if you give it twenty to thirty years, it turns out it kills you. So I believe anything they say is safe. I do not mess with it. I do not do over-the-counter drugs. I do not do prescription drugs. I do not do hardcore drugs. I like marijuana and mushrooms. I'm very natural, right? Yeah. That is and, it. Yeah, and I, I take, um, it's a biological component of um, desiccated thyroid because I have thyroid issue. Pit porcine gland, that's what the medication is. When's the last time you had a QHHT session? Uh, 2015. Are you buying, are you any chance, by any chance going to Stairway to the Stars in Vegas? That no. Show? Hmm. I will no. totally give you a free session to help you with your hernia and everything else because I've done those in sessions and like, yeah, I, I don't they are travel. Gone. Yeah, I don't travel physically. So I'm not like, mm -hmm. I, I don't travel physically. So. Whatever, but I told them. Well, if we could ever figure it out, I would give you a free session, man. Like it's yeah. it's not about me; it's about yeah, your suffering and you're doing all this extra stuff. But I can help you from the metaphysical side. Yeah. So figure out I, why the hernia is there in the first place, and then integrate uh, that. Or yeah, it's a genetic thing. My dad had it. I have it, so I know why I have it. So I and people are like all oh, the doctors like do do it do it do the surgery with the mesh I'm like i'm not doing mesh forget it no way i am going to do a hernia surgery to repair it but i told the doctors like don't even put anything freaking in my stomach he's like it's a small repair it's just an umbilical thing it, I'll, I'll repair it quickly and you're out so I'm like, that's fine i'll try it i had i had a full hysterectomy except my ovaries were kept and I've been healthy ever since. So, so body modification, I have no issue with. If a life-saving surgery can help you, just don't allow anybody to put stuff that is non-organic into your body. That's what Dolores Cannon found out. She said that all these metal implants we get to reconnect bones and stuff, they're not supposed to be in our bodies. And they are, they, they are not compatible. Like energetically, they will fuck you up. Yeah, it, and I told this, I said, only use organic stitches on me. Do not, because a hernia is closing up a small hole. This is an umbilical thing that's this big. It's an in and out. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it, whatever. I'm not afraid of something. It's just a physical body. I'm energy. I'm a soul. It's This is not ultimately me at the end of the day. It's just a representation of me, slightly. 
Uh, and I like, did this is just the avatar I chose for this one video game. Yeah, and I honestly I did QHHT to try to cure hemiplegic migraines and it didn't work. I would say that probably the person that put you under wasn't qualified. I think she's not qualified. Because you gotta realize if you don't know a lot about what you're doing, if you haven't done this in numerous past lives, ultimately mm -hmm. you're coming in like an amateur. Like you can read in a couple of books, get your certification. But ultimately, you're doing this blind, and you're only relying on the material you were taught. Mm -hmm. Bringing in stuff from all kinds of lives. That's why I know mm -hmm. that if I want to access someone's mind file, I can ask the higher self to access it from the astral. Yeah. Or from a different layer of the body that doesn't have the physical traps installed. Because they can't install that in all the layers. No. They can put traps in other layers you're unaware of. Yeah. But I can find all that. I scan all the different layers of the body. I literally name them for the higher self to make sure you're not just scanning the human body. Yeah. Quantum. A lot, of these implants, a lot of the implants, they're not in the physical body. They're, they're in, in the fustral. They're in they're 5D. Other layers. Yeah, yeah, 5D. Exactly. Other layers of the body that you don't even know exist. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. And I've seen implants because because I'm a medical intuitive energy healing. Like I want work on the quantum level. And I've been able to heal the hernia enough that it's not painful. <laughs> like it energetically healed it. Uh, sometimes it has twinges. So like it's a physical body experiment. So I'm curious what it will feel like to even have the surgery. I just like to play with the body. That's what I am. I like to play with everything. I think it's exciting. So for me, it's like, okay, we'll go in, see how he fixes it. But no fucking mesh because my immune system will attack the mesh. And try to excise that because it thinks it's an implant. Well, so try to force it uh, out from the yeah. body and go nowhere, so it'll only cause problems. Yeah, and it was trying to force the implants out the same way, and 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 literally excise the nanofiber gold. But I love gold. I can wear it on my fingers. I have I have my dad's big ass ring. You know those family heirloom rings, pure white gold. It's like, and it has the um. It has inner earth pillars and, and it's it's freaking beautiful. I used it to access the Akashic Records the first time I went in. And it's like a gold has a frequency. It really even has a healing frequency, I believe. It, well, I mean, if gold can heal the ozone, that nuclear war has taken from your atmosphere. That is a healing energetic kind of thing. It, it is, and I still have this ring to this day. It's locked up nice and tight. Nobody can get to it. It's my Solomon, King Solomon's gold ring, literally. It has that vibe because it can transfer. When you said the twin, the two towers, I was thinking like Freemason towers, like Yakin and Boaz you're talking about? No, columns. You know, like those Grecian columns, swirls and all of that stuff? Not 9-11. This ring literally has embossed columns on the sides of it. Is it only two, like side by side? Yeah, it's side by side when it has these weird symbols all over it. Yeah, that's Yakin and Boaz. That's, okay. that's, what, that's, that's the name of those pillars. And b uh, above each pillar, you would see a star and a moon. Doesn't have stars and moons. Yeah, and but there are, has... the art depictions, like all the details without removing them. Because when you're etching that on a gold ring, you can't put all those little details and all those elements from those teachings because mm -hmm. Solomon, those were at Solomon's temple. He had Yakin and Boaz there. Yeah. Well, it reminds me of that kind of a ring. And it has my dad's initials, AK. I'm EK, E, Elena, K. I'm not going to say my last name, but I prefer Eliana because that's my spiritual name. So I just flip it. I've always uh, like the, just the, the, it's like Ileana. It's, 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 it's also derived from L. So I've always wanted to ask you, do you feel that you're the house of L? I'm. Go by the, El Ka as well. Yeah. L race, the 12th density beings. I don't say the house of L. I just say the L race. I only really know to really call them the house of L. That's one of my chapters talking about the Anunnaki, the house of L, the Elohim, all that stuff. But I don't think they're the Elohim. I, just I don't think it's the original. I think it's only yeah. derived. Like, yeah. it's kind of like they have bad Elohim, but I don't think it's the original good Elohim. But I don't even think they're the Elohim. They're a 12 density race that can change anything organically and appear as 
physical beings, but they're 12th density. Is so the 12th density the highest? No, there's the more. There's I thought more. it kind of caps out at 12 and then... No, 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 no. It goes beyond that. Hmm. I've seen worlds like 24th density and above. So, but they're 12th density. That means they're, they, they've achieved going beyond the physical body. They work with energy of their soul vibration to create anything they want. They can appear physical. They can create ships. They can portal you anywhere. And, and they were, it's rare. They're mentioned as the, when they came to earth millions of years ago, they were giants. They were huge. And then they created a bunch of things on Earth, then left. Like the ancient builder race? Is that what you're talking about? Similar, to? yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Similar to them, but they don't call themselves the ancient builder race. They call themselves the L race. And it's mentioned, um, there was this guy named Brother Philip, Secrets of the Andean Mountains. I got to buy that book. It's on my Amazon list. I heard <laughs> there's a lot of truth in that book, man. It'll blow me away. Oh. I got so excited because it's the first book I ever read that reads as truth. Like all of it reads as truth. And that's the first book that these L race beings are mentioned in. Hmm. And I reviewed this book uh, a year ago or something and read about the L race, like read it out loud from the book. It's an amazing book. You should definitely get it. I get so, you saw how excited I got. I was like jumping. Yeah. For yeah. Joy. I seen that. Like it made me more excited to want to read it even more. Like just maybe just buy it instead of, having to buy all 60 books I have on my damn Amazon wish list? Um, well, I mean, I, I, it's the first book I ever bought from a spiritual teaching perspective. It's hmm. because I fully feel I'm connected to Peru with certain things. And it, it felt right to me, like the Andes and all of that is part of history. It's where the Atlanteans went after the delusion started things all over again, the Morians, Atlanteans. There were people in Peru even before them, but they all intermixed. And um, I believe there's a Stargate, a Maromuru portal Stargate under Lake Titicaca. So it's... yeah, because Lake Titicaca is one of the deepest lakes on the in the world, and they said that there's ships. Of, there's I've heard about the portals, but there, I also heard that there's ships at the bottom of the dam, bottom of that lake. There is, there is, and it, it takes you to the Andromeda galaxy, it takes you to other places. I've been astrally there, and I like travel through that golden sun disk because it's under there, under Lake Titicaca. So I would like, love to see that place sometime soon. It is amazing. Like I, I can't describe it. Well, I can because it's now in my books, but it's like if if that if you want to read about that history, that book, start start with it. Because that's where I learned about the L like I knew I'm connected to the L race beings and I go on their ship constantly. And they 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 have um two ships that I've been on. Um one is smaller, the Akishan. The Akishan is the big one, and the Anishan is the smaller one. Like, the names are weird. Akishan, Anishan. What do you read into those two names? It seems like it's derived from something original. Like, I'm... I'm... That name seems very familiar to me, but it seems like it's subtly different, the name I recognize. And I feel that's derived from that original source. Mm-hmm. And, and these are biological ships that they can create because they're 12th density. They can work with any energy and create physicality. That's kind of what I was mentioning, the Golden Phoenix Fire, like my non-physical existence and like what I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. But they can come into our reality, physicality, and you can work yeah, with them. Yeah, any other higher dimension can go down in vibration, but you just can't go up in vibration. Yeah, exactly. So, but when you're on their ships, you feel like you're on their vibration because it matches a code in your system. You yeah, because we find out in all of our ships and the programs, they have to play a certain hertz, kind of like the the Earth magnetic field, uh, the the Schumann resonance they mm -hmm. put on the ship. Because if you don't, it affects the circadian rhythm of the human and how it. Yeah, I don't know what it. It just affects everything about the human body and all life and the planet and the plants and everything else because yeah. that specific hertz is our vibration. Exactly. And if that vibration is changed, 
it can be very detrimental to any life if yeah. you don't reproduce that in some way externally on a craft. Yeah, exactly. No one talks about that. You yeah. think I want to be on an alien craft, beam me up. No, you don't, man. <laughs> well, unless it's a craft that's biologically compatible with humans because they're 12D, they can create anything that's biologically compatible with you to interact with them. You feel like you're on a physical craft, but you know it's energy-based. They don't mm -hmm. hide who they are, what they do. They're like, this is what we are. This is how we do it. If you want to learn something of wisdom, of soul healing, whatever, come on up. As long as you're vibrating good, come on up. I'm like, well, do I check the safety parameters? Check, check, check. If it checks out, then I go. If it doesn't, I don't go. So I always scan where I'll go or not go. And 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 that that uh, Nibiru thing felt, no, that's not to go on Jupiter. It's not past parked near Jupiter. Doesn't feel safe. I'm not going. I've had experiences where I think I have visited Nibiru, where there's Anunnaki and Syrians on the planet itself, that Nibiru. But it's not the same as what it was during those wars. It's changed. So, yeah, like a lot of the Anunnaki are from Sirius. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one of their outposts, right? And no yeah. one no one can make that connection. That's why Marduk, his literally name, his I'm going to break down his name. Mar means son of. Duke means dog, the dog star. Son of the dog star, Sirius. They're telling you where they came from, mm -hmm. right? Part yeah. of that. So it's not just Nibiru and stuff. It's like when we had all these ancient wars started in Lyra with the Draco, everybody, all these refugees went to all these different planets. Mm -hmm. So did the Anunnaki. Yeah. So that's one of their main outposts, I believe, is Sirius A. And or Sirius B as well. Yeah, and they have, like, what I saw is different quadrants of Nibiru, where Syrians live, where Anunnaki live. They don't disrespect or diss each other, but they respect the quadrants. Hmm. I didn't know that, so that's, that's, that's only dovetailing with what I just said. Like, it adds to what I just said. So that's Yeah, awesome. that's what I remember as my learning experience on Nibiru. But it wasn't traveling out in the universe, parking itself by different planets. It remains in the same spot. Sometimes the energy field of it, sort of, we experience that when it's a bit closer in the solar system. But it doesn't go tooling around in the galaxy, parking itself beside Jupiter and other planets. As if it's just a battle star that travels around and plays around. It's not what it is. It's a learning hub station. For people it's like learning schools where people can go and learn if they want that's what it felt like to me when i was on neighbor it's just part of the experience i remember is it mm. fake i don't know it just i feel like i went there and that's what i experienced you know, it's funny i just remembered xm satellite their logo is the dog and it's serious what are the odds oh well i saw a lot like it's almost like they're saying that that corporation is a product of Marduk. Okay. It's like well, they're I, telling yeah, I saw a lot of Syrians working with crystals, working with harmonic music technology in one of the quadrants of Niebuhr. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what I saw. Well, I mean, they, they're credited for creating music and acting and all that other stuff. So, like, if they started it, why wouldn't that be plausible to be actually happening? Yeah, they have like their own quadrant little colony on Nibiru at this time. So Nibiru isn't the same thing, just Anunnaki and nobody else on it. It's it's been it's been changed because the times have changed. So that's that's what I experienced on Nibiru about 10 years ago when I had my field trips there learning as you know those learning light schools. Like, have you ever heard of those? That's what they have created there for those that want to learn. That's what I experienced. I know I learned a lot of that on ships 
from what I've been shown is they'll put me on a ship and I'm learning a lot of this light language stuff and they're teaching it to me. Like the ETs mm -hmm. are literally teaching it to me. Yeah. But they teach that on Nibiru now too. So it's like, that's what I experienced. And I'm not saying my experience is right or wrong. I'm not saying anything is just, that's what I experienced, but I don't feel it's the same Nibiru what's being expressed now being parked by Jupiter. It's, it's, I know it's not by Jupiter, so we can just both agree that that's not correct. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 like I'll never argue with anyone, but I think it's something different. Prove me wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. I love to admit when I'm wrong, and I will be the first one to admit it to your face because yeah. I feel the in that, and it gives me power to know that I was wrong, and I yeah. let you know I was wrong. So like. I, I don't know how to prove any of that. I just base things by the energy frequency that I I was feel. only talking about fighting the word of the princess, right? Uh, I can disagree with you, but if you prove me wrong, I will be the first one to admit that I was wrong. And I was yeah. literally wrong. Just yeah. prove me wrong. That's it. I but think that, yeah, I don't think we can prove that it's wrong or right. It's based on their experiences. I just don't think it's it's accurate what's being described energetically i just don't i'm i can't connect it doesn't feel right same it, yeah it does not feel right to me and again whatever it's their experience i will just say i don't think it's that what's being described it's not accurate it's not what is in reality in history at this time and i'll leave it at that because you know what i don't have time to argue and i don't want to it's like me. I don't want to be combative and like be that guy that calls people out. Other people has that role in this field. I still want to take part in it. I don't want to lower my vibration. I don't want to take part in the battle process of who's right, who's wrong. You know what I'm saying? I'm not yeah. here for that. You can yeah. have your own opinion. That's free will. Fine. Yeah. But a, a lot of stuff we learn, it contradicts each other. Kind of like have they been here for a million years or were, did they come here 450,000 years ago? But then the asteroid belt refutes the 450,000 year hypothesis. So like, who yeah. knows? The, the history seems like it's very complicated and layered. So it's even hard to put a time scheme on timestamps on these dates. Uh, I think it was 450,000 years ago, their time outside of the yeah. physical earth time frame and measurement you know what i'm saying yeah and no we're just thinks about these things it's just we assume yeah it's our time yeah remember before they invented time it was allegedly they came here 450,000 years ago and they introduced the the component of time yeah so if they introduced time they control the narrative of time yeah yeah i think it's just dates to put a time stamp on when approximate history happened that's why i say approximate history because i would want to know what the akashic records say you know like what do they reflect uh, what i got from that akashic record is that that is not the exact time period of what it is because time for them works differently that's it's what i was saying like that's what I, that that's the simplest way of what I was trying to convey to you. That perfect what you just said. Well, that's what that's what that Akashic record tells me when I and you saw my eyes go uh, check in check in going into the Akashic record. Sometimes you look left. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll say something and you'll like. Okay, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, because I go into a record and I check to validate. Yay, like when yay. I said the German on the moon, you automatically you went. And then you didn't say anything. And I'm like, she disagrees with that statement. It was obvious. Psychically, I can see it just like that. I'm like, okay, cool. Because I've yeah. only heard about that aspect. I, I told you I didn't prove it. I yeah, want to know you heard it's it. true. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, uh, let me check that for you because I have to read the energy. As, like I, I read everything in percentages. And sometimes it's not even, I just sense, no, not true. And I'll say, no, 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 no. Or I'll go, let me check what it reads as a frequency, how much it reads as an energy. And then I'll tell you 5% or whatnot. And that's, but right now I went to the Akashic record and like the time frame is not the same. So what we have as 450,000 years is not the exact time frame that for them it counts as that time. It just helps us to, to put timestamps on something. 
I believe it's older as well because the the plate subduction, all Atlantis mm -hmm. being so far in the ocean and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense timeline wise because that would suggest it's way older than you can imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. after a flood, you're going to have lifting of waters, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the water's coming from something. Exactly. It has and to return back to its source eventually. Yeah. And like I said, from my past lifetimes, I was there 2 million years ago in the first creation of that Atlantis experiment. And so people are like, you're not saying it was 2 million years ago. History says otherwise. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, following more of my past life history than earth history in the textbooks so it's like i i don't follow earth history that much me neither i've always had cognitive dissonance with the dates like i remember being in high school and like all these dates i never wanted to remember them because something told me deep down even as a high schooler or a junior higher that no, it was all it was all lies something always tell me these are lies these are lies i knew that at a young age and this was like mid 1990s man that's pretty long ago to have an awakening because a lot of the stuff people's discovering now is more new within the last 10 or 15 years yeah but like to be a child and be like this is wrong this date is wrong this narrative is wrong but i could have never proved that as a kid but something told me it was wrong yeah it's like intuitive ability just says follow your truth find the truth understand your truth and just go with what you know as a truth what you sense, like hypersensing. Uh, I think we all have that ability and it comes online more so as we get older and start questioning reality. This reality is more than a 3D world that we exist in. Yeah, I think once you get out of that childlike mentality where you're all just thinking about life's dramas and what you want to become, once you become what you wanted to become, you start thinking about what I didn't do. Yeah. And then you start being very existential you go on the inside you're like i've searched for these answers my whole life now i feel like i just want to meditate and then all the answers start coming you're like man i could have i wasted my entire life if what we knew now as an adult us you and i people like us i would have my childhood would have been completely different if i would have this awareness mm -hmm. of this position in my life now it, i would have created so much man well, I think as grown-ups, we have more ability to find ourselves in our freedom than as children. Because as, our, as children, we're just in the program, the school, the study, the learn. You have to fit a box when you're older. You're not part of that system because you don't have to choose whether you go to high school or not. You choose whatever you want to choose in the experience. It's not a limiter of you're a kid. You have no choice. It's like that goes away as you become older, if you give yourself permission to experience your true self and who you are. Like saying, you know what? I'm not the programming that I was as a kid. Let's see who I truly am on the spectrum. I will say that you exceeded my expectations. I thought this was gonna be more of a brief interaction. Kind of think I thought you did it as well. You thought it would be more of a brief kind of thing. And then the shit we started talking about, it just kind of like started going down rabbit holes. And I was like, heck yeah, man. I let it be whatever it's supposed to be at the time, honestly. Like expect the unexpected. That's what you can expect with me because I might go here, I might go there, I might swerve. I, I'll let it be whatever it needs to be because I want to know you. What you I like to be surprised, about. like not to put what you think the interaction will be and just let it just develop, man. I, that's the position I am in life now. I don't like to control anything. I don't expect anything. I just want to see where it goes. Exactly. I did not expect this to be eight hours or anything, but we're getting to know each other. We're talking. I wanted to ask you a lot of questions. Because I listened to your show with Matthew, I'm like, but I'd like to know more and more and more about this, this, and this, and engage with him. Why don't we do a second show and we'll talk about the Anunnaki and nerd stuff? I love nerd stuff, man. Yeah, well, Matthew let me use the history of what you said about the Anunnaki and compilation video that I'll be making. What? That's amazing, man. I asked him permission, so I already clipped your Anunnaki history for Damn, the compilation. I'm, I'm super excited, man. I'm honored. Yeah, this is why I was like asking you all these questions because I'd seen that show already. So it's like kind of in my memory bank sort of had what I wanted to ask you. And you're sort of filled in a little bit more. 
And I was really curious about Nimna, what happened to her? Because it's like history just sort of cut her out as if she just gently died and nothing happened. Well, her brothers cut her out. Yeah. Well, what she told me is that she left her brothers because she didn't want to be in the insane politics. I did they... hear that. I did hear that. She was like the, the she was the defiant one mm -hmm. that didn't want to take part in a lot of this negative shit. Yeah. And that's why her name is Mommy, M-A-M-I. She was the root word of mom. Yeah. She was like our mother. Yeah. Quite in a literal fashion, if you will. Yeah. Well, I I call her Auntie Nimna. I can't, I don't feel comfortable calling her mommy. Uh, she's not my mommy, but she played an interesting historical role and she went off to create her own lab and to put aside a plan to ascend through technology and light field energy and codes, like frequency codes, to find a way to as ascend outside the physical body with technology and light codes. She hid that stuff in the Grand Canyon, I had a hidey hole, she went and did it and left the planet that way. That's what I got from I wish her. I could truly discover the Grand Canyon, man. Like real, like take the status where it's government owned. I, I truly believe that a lot of these national parks, they were taken through eminent domain because what's in those parks and what's underground. It's wild. A lot of gold stuff, a lot of Anunnaki tech is literally, it's like Nimna's lab is there. I would, love, I would love so much. Like there, I feel that my roots would be there discovering that place, like going there, like, oh my God, I, I, it would, that would be like a, one of the most epic times of my life. Well, I could show you what I remote viewed. If you give me a second, I, I just need to cue it up. Do you want to see what I remote viewed in the Grand Canyon? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll just... That rocks. I'll, yeah, I just need to pull it up because I, did, I didn't know we were going to discuss it. I, I just like let it go where it's supposed to go for our talk. Uh, so I will pull up remote viewing. Grand Canyon, where is it? You know, I have so many files, remote viewing. Let's just type it out, Grand Canyon. Canyon. Uh, see what it pulls up for me. Well, viewing the Grand Canyon. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I'll just pull this up because I, I just want to find that image. Okay, let's see. Okay, perfect, perfect. I have it queued. So let's share this. Okay. Are there any giants there? I did not find any giants. This is what I People found. People kept saying that and I didn't believe it either. No, I found a lot of giant technology there. Uh, are you able to see this? Yes. Um, so tell me what it means to you, because I've talked about this a million times, but this was her lab, and this is what she used to ascend. That's what she told me, because I didn't understand any of this, so I had remote viewed this first, and then I went to talk to her, because I felt a lot of Anunnaki energy from this tech and she said well it, it was my lab i created it and i used it to ascend i'm pretty much resonating with all of it like i totally see all of those components being her because yeah. a lot of this is natural a lot of this is natural what we can achieve naturally without like using technologies is one thing but a lot of this it seems like a lot of this is natural like this is millions of built like billions of years old like you know and like super super ancient mm -hmm. I, I mean i definitely resonate with all of it Antares, yeah. what's up with the Antares technology? What does that mean specifically? It comes from the Antares system as light code frequency and stargates. And it's part of the ancient language that the Anunnaki used to create technology of ascension and DNA coding, resequencing, light field chamber codes. 
So I think she used the Antari technology as a base code for this other Anunnaki tech that she created. I think that's what it means because it says DNA library systems and that's an Antarian. It's like non-binary languages from different worlds, Syrian, Antarian, Anunnaki mixed together into this high vibrational field light tech and light language. Yeah, because no one really, really talks about, they always like to just call them Anunnaki, but you don't realize that like these Anunnaki, depending on which brother or sister, or which family member, they're cut with other DNA from other races. Like yeah. one of the brothers is part, he has a Draco mom. The other one doesn't. So like, I don't even see how a lot of them can even look exactly the same because they're they're coming from different star systems with their DNA, so they have to look different, and they're always depicted as looking the exact same, and I've never resonated with that. I've never seen Anki and Enlil as blondes. They're depicted as blondes. I've always remembered them as having black hair and green eyes. I seen I, I actually I resonate with that more than a blonde archetype because a lot of the Middle East people, the Persians and stuff like that, where it's derived from these root races, they are dark haired and light eyed. And Nimna, I resonate with more as having had brownish blonde hair, but not totally blonde. Hmm. Like mixture of brownish blonde. I don't know. It's, it's just how I saw her 320,000 years ago when I had a lifetime as that Adonic little girl and met her. So it's like, um, and again, it's like, I remote view this and I'm like, this is interesting. It feels very much Anunnaki, Syrian, Antarian. And I'm like, I, it feels like Nimna. It just has her energy all over it. And, and that's what she used to leave Earth like to ascend in a more organic fashion, but using light-coded technology. Like, I would love to be the person that becomes her protege. You know, the one that observes all this happening and be there behind the scenes and just watch this magic happen. Like, that would be a fulfilled life for me. Yeah, and I've never talked about this openly with anyone but you because I, I could feel the, um, I, I could just feel people saying, oh my God, she's weird and crazy. <laughs> for saying any of this but at this point you know what simply don't care and I just want to sh share information and just talk about it freely and openly and not worry what people think about me that's the secret to everything man I stopped caring about opinions I don't I don't remember when it was but it liberated me because mm -hmm. I no longer cared about impressing people and doing this for them or like wondering what they were going to say about it or trying to exceed their expectations with tattooing or something. You know, it's just like when I stopped caring, that doesn't mean I turn my heart off. It just means your opinion no longer affects me. It doesn't affect me emotionally. You can have your opinion. Cool. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I won't go deeper than that. I won't let it affect me emotionally, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And this and it, stuff it freed me, man. Liberated my life. And this stuff feels so frequency and DNA coded, this lab, and it feels feminine. It doesn't have, feel like male energy. It feels feminine, at least underground. What is the representation of the cylindrical parts of the vertical shaft on the drawing? Um, that is the literal light field thing you step into physically to start changing your molecular body structure to ascend because your your dna changes more into light code than physical dna structure very awesome so she stepped so these two cylindrical things those are the ascension modules and that's the thing the antarian portal star portal can you use your mouse to show me can you yeah. do that from, okay so this is the ascension ascension module itself yeah. mm -hmm. that changes that more structural DNA into the light code DNA. That's why it's called the light field chamber. She stepped into one of these and ascended because her DNA changed in more light code DNA. And this is the portal, the Antarian portal that you can literally take to go traveling through the cosmic web somewhere else and then the nerd in me would want to observe the portal system and how it works 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I know, I'll be like, what kind of system is it? How is it? How is it functioning? What's what power source are you using? You know, it, it's using streaming light field sequencing of some sort, and it has these dial-up frequencies through the Antarian language. So mixed in with Anunnaki and Syrian as well. That's the blend that creates this type of tech and activates the energy. And it has that DNA library system, which I'm very curious about, but I can't really read Antari. And I just scribbled what came out of the remote viewing and just like, so it needs is, more interpretation. Is there a way you can ask your higher self to convert it into English? Probably yes, but it feels like that's not my job. Somebody else can is supposed to do mm. that. So I'm just supposed to bring this forward and let people interpret it and start breaking it apart for disseminating what these things are, what the characters are, what it means. So that, that's just how it feels like to me. What do you get from it? I just see a bunch of Egyptian stuff also there peppered all throughout that. Yeah, because I, I feel like the Anunnaki actually created the Egyptian language as well. Yeah, it's directly derived from them. Yeah, so it feels like very mixed Syrian, Antarian, Anunnaki, Egyptian. Um, but it's like, it's a DNA library system. It has to do with genetics and light code and other things. It's kind of like a lot of the Atlantean stuff they put in Egypt. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. it was even older than what was there at the Giza Plateau and every other the place around the world. So that was like they're building prototypes. A lot yeah. of that a lot of that technology was standard. So for them to stop using it even underground wouldn't make sense. I can yeah. just see huge ass pyramids under under the parent un, under the Grand Canyon. Yeah, and it feels like the layers of the Grand Canyon were specifically created to cover this up. Hmm. It was, it was specifically formed this way to to cover up what's underground, to be like a distraction. So people focus in on on the high high mountains and the you know the ranges, and they even call them with Egyptian names. It's like it's just a distraction. I forgot that you're right. A lot of those major parts, their name, they have Egyptian names. That's crazy. I completely forgot that. That's what if. Well, that's what I got from the remote viewing. Like they that. call one of the places Osiris something. I forgot what they called it, but yeah, that's yeah, terrible. exactly. And that's what these layers are on top that look like pyramids. Some of them mm. to make the humans forget what's really underneath. Because there's entry chamber, underground chamber entryways. Is any of it you feel is holographic? I feel it's very like physical covered up with holographic technology. Hmm. I mean, these things, the stone layers, that's what they built up to cover everything they built underground. That was her doing. Grand Canyon was her experiment. She was playing with energy frequency codes. I would want to ask her why, what would later be called America. What is here under this ground and that Grand Canyon and what's the component? And if so, is it so unique that she had to go to that point of the earth in order to use this technology? She went to this point of the earth to get away from Enki and Enlil so they can see what she was doing. Mm. Because they were dividing the land and who's who and what's what, what belongs to who. And she's like, I don't want anything belonging to me. I just want off this planet now. This is my part of the little lab. I'm going to do what I have to, and I'm going to ascend beyond all of this kind of uh, infighting and politics because this stuff is going to go on for longer than it should have. And it's created everything that is now that is America and everything else that we're experiencing right now. That's what the, I get from her as what was her intention and what that this dragged out longer than it should have these ex, Anunnaki experiments on Earth. I mean, if you think about it, would they truly ever end? It wasn't supposed to, they w weren't supposed to be here and let it go on this long. So this was her like, this, this was her safety net to get off planet. 
without them knowing that she left. Was it just her, or did she involve other family members and other? No, it was just she hers. Her, just for her? Just for her. She didn't, nobody knew that she did this and left. So it's kind of like her exit strategy, if you will. Well, I mean, them saying she was killed would make sense because if she just disappeared, what story could they truly tell at that point? You know, because they would have to derive a location would have to derive from the story somewhere, somehow. So, like, I think it would implicate if they didn't didn't just say that they that she died. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's easier to just the story ends, she died, and yeah. no one follows the story after that because there's no more story. Yeah, there's nobody really to check where she went and what she did. She's like out of our way. She no longer is here. Who cares what she did, right? And she didn't want to play their long game. She just wanted off the planet. And this got her what she needed. So I think it has its own motives for what she wanted, what she got. And I don't think it's evil what she did. She didn't hurt anybody doing that. I've never had any negative feeling towards her. It's only been really towards like Annie Winking and Lil and Marduk and all, you know, even Thoth. Thoth is a bad guy. Everybody says he's this good guy. He's really not. He was he was involved in a lot of negative stuff and it's a lot of that stuff isn't talked about. Yeah. You know, they say he's like the Oh no, they just they just they always compare him to this like amazing god that brought us knowledge and stuff. If you really knew that the Emerald Tablets was derived from something he stole from the Emerald Covenant. He did. I read I read that in Ashiana Dean's Voyager books. I also read the Emerald Tablets of Toth, which is I I think he's telling history, what history was, and and what he stole is explaining what he stole and sort of letting the public know, well, here it is. If you want forbidden knowledge, come read this because this is truth, part of truth. If you want to understand secret history, it's part of it. It's stolen history, but it also is a component of reality that he decided for one, for whatever reason, to give to humans. Maybe some reden reden re re redemption, maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know for all the wrongs that he did, repent a little and, and just give something back. I, that's what it feels like to me, what this book is. Well, I mean, think about it too. Like when Thoth came down as Quetzalcoatl and Coco Khan, he required human sacrifice. So like, how can you say someone's good if they promoting human sacrifice? Like they would kill some of these events they had, they would kill 30,000 people in a period of less than a week. Yeah, that's not good. Usually a couple of days they would kill that many yeah. people sacrificially wise. That's wrong. That's insane. But I feel like I when I went into the halls of Amenti after having the Emerald Tablets of Toth sort of activate me, I met him and he said, Redemption takes a long time to do to right a wrong because history is not what we think it is. So I think the Emerald Tablets of Toth is to let people know some of the reality that's true. And it represents a, a better aspect of him for what he did before. Well, I mean, that is his story. His story. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't feel anything bad from him right now because I met him. Maybe mm -hmm. it's all delusion and mind control. Maybe it is. I just ask don't... Penny. Ask Penny what she knows about him. She has a really cool story. Yeah. Well, I mean, I experienced meeting him almost half a year ago. What does he physically? How did he show himself? In he showed. Form? He showed himself as a person having dark black hair, like ringlets, and wearing this weird kind of a cape style thing with glowing symbols on it. If he's wearing glowing symbols and Ninma's wearing the same stuff, I believe that energetically that is like some magic they're putting out and it's technology they're using, like it's protecting them. 
Yeah, they're using oh, like sigils, I, sigil magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I saw a lot of what would call the holographic medical pods under the halls of the menti, like in the halls of the menti. It's distorting time space continuum. Yeah, he did talk about how he would go to those those technologies for so much, and then he would he would revive himself and live, I think, I don't know, seven hundred years, and he would go back for so long and. Well, he is now the guardian of that technology so people don't accidentally stumble in that place because people can't stay there for long. It is not vibrationally compatible to living there because it yeah, can fry you. Yeah, hybrid to, yeah. to be there long term. is like It's like being in the presence of a Draco Alpha. Like They will short circuit your electrical system fast and it'll kill you. If you're not a hybrid, you cannot be around these, these Dracos. Well, you actually have to vibrate on the seven density to even get there to that place. Halls mm -hmm. of Amenti. I had to vibrate at seven density and it felt damn uncomfortable. I felt like I was lit on fire, like my temperature was higher than normal. They have these different colored chairs, gold, silver, like thrones. And out of one of them, a golden sphere, blue sphere came out and it's like, here is the knowledge of the future, the wisdom of the ages. And it went into me. I'm like, damn, that feels hot. This is more than my human body can handle. And my human body was like on fire. But it went in and it integrated. I'm like, I don't feel it was evil experience. I just feel like not all humans can go there unless you're of a high enough vibration to enter that space. The official milita military stories I've heard about the times they've had excursions to the Halls of Amenti, what I've been told was the people that try to enter it, they were obliterated because they weren't authorized to be there. It's like there's a field, there's a force field that will kill you. And yes. if you don't have the DNA to enter it, you can't enter. It's kind of like the Atlantis, uh, the st uh, Stargate Atlantis. Yes. I know I have the DNA to activate all that shit. I don't know how I know. But I couldn't, if I didn't have it, my portal tech would not work because when you enter a lot of these portals, they recognize your DNA. You don't have to hit a button. You don't have to do anything. It's like it just recognizes you and anything that's not authorized will be obliterated. Exactly. Like my vibration had to be 7D level to even enter into it. Reading the book activated my vibration to that frequency and allowed me to go in and look at what's there. No. I've also heard they did something to my heart that allows me to survive other densities and to like go underwater really deep with other bodies of myself in the programs, like holding my breath and go really, really deep swimming. And they said, there's something up with my heart. It's a, it's not, it's not a normal heart. It, it, it beats faster and it vibrates at a higher frequency set level. It's like a sonar beam <laughs> high energy output and it's intense because i feel on a regular basis like all yeah. this energy is being stored here and sometimes it's, it's tantamount to feeling like right before a heart attack yeah because it's like boom 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 and it's vibrating it's all pressure it's all this pressure i always yeah. feel and like i feel it during my qhht sessions like when i'm really going places in qhht i start feeling it right in my heart well like it's someone's sitting on me yeah, it's verifying that you're on the right track of finding something that's correct. It's a signal. Like right now, I just got, I got, interesting. I got frequencies in both of my ears at the same time. Usually it's one side or the other, but it actually jerked me. It was, that was weird. Right When, when you said, start talking about the halls of Amenti and about frequency and light code upgrades, it feels like, like this, like you're shaking all over the place. I came back hot. It was a two day period. After I read the Emerald Tablets of Toth, I started going. I also went to Vakuntha, where the other blue gods are, you know, like hmm, when you start. Like Kali and like all the Indian yeah, stories and like yeah, the yeah, Mahabharata, yeah. the Vedas, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. That's, that's high. Cool. Yeah, I went there and that's higher frequency than the Halls of Amente. I've always wanted to meet those beings because the timeline I'm from, open contact is a thing where we have the star trek universe where all the beings are all walking together simultaneously as one homogenized community and like it sucks to only interact with humans 
I don't connect with a lot of humans because humans are boring as hell. They're just, they're right here on the vibration level. They only yeah. want to talk about sports and celebrities and human drama. I'm like, I'm thinking about portals and magician magic stuff and like existing on multi levels in a multiverse. And like, all you want to talk about is like fast cars and stuff. It's just like, I want to talk to an alien. Yeah. Well, I like fast cars. The conversation is way more interesting. At least we could talk about cool technologies yeah. or something, you know? Well, I can relate to fast cars because on Mars, I drove hover cars that were fast and the SSP. So fast cars do something for me. I like the speed, the thrill. It reminds me of hover cars on Mars or it motorcycles. I don't like fast cars. I've built numerous fast cars, but like, I don't know. It's just like if it's only people want to talk about like football or sports or if I'm a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, like I live in Tampa, but I'm not a fan of all the local sports like it's a form of programming like it's a yeah. distraction i don't like any sports the only sport i like is mixed martial arts true competition you know not football i go forward you go backward you go forward you go backward nascar you make a left you make a left you make a left baseball you make a left you make a left you make a left it's like it's like kid games man give me yeah. something like make me play a game that's so complex that it's like squid game style like you really have to be a tactician in order to play this game or this sport or whatever you know i agree with you physical sports do nothing for me i never like to play them when in gym in high school or middle school never oh my god this is boring poker does interest me sometimes because it makes you think really it makes you be the tactician it also, yeah. and if you really tune it, instead of focusing on your own energy, if you observe others, you can build a baseline. Mm -hmm. Every time that they want a hand, observe the body right before it wins. Every time they're about to lose, observe the body right before they lose. It's very easy with my augmentations and what I can see in slow motion, because I can see in slow motion. So like the average human process is 24 frames per second on average, up to 120. 120, you can't even see it so fast. The human mind yeah. can't comprehend it because the human mind only processes 128 bits at any given time out of mm -hmm. 1 million bits of information that's surrounding us. It's like, we're like a freaking Super Nintendo or a PlayStation 1. We're a PlayStation 1 of processing power. Yes. That's insane. That is nothing. They have, Enki and Enlil, you're the reason why we have 128 bit processing power. You're not the good guy. What the <laughs> hell? I agree with you. I can't stand casinos. I've never been inside a casino. Like I've seen poker games being played in private homes just for the fun of it because they want to challenge their brain power, you know, sit around a big lovely poker table and just play for the thrill of like outmatching each other. That's what I know about poker. Watching I like my chess. I like to play chess. That requires even more brain power than poker. Honestly. Yeah, because the old me would just make cocky moves and I'm like, crap, I didn't see that coming. Now me, I try to think about five to six moves in advance and think about all your possible main players and what the possibilities with each of my positions are. So if I remove a position, you now flanked me because I forgot one little piece because I focused on moving my queen. Yeah. Now I'm learning a lot. Now I love chess. I used to like, I didn't like chess a lot when I was a kid, but like, that's the battlefield. Yeah. You know? it, is, it is the greatest battlefield on earth. People have tried to teach me chess and I'm, I'm dyslexic with it. It would take a lot of patience for me to learn chess. Uh, you got you to gotta be a 5D thinker. You got to yeah. think numerous steps and involve, like the, the reason I'm a good tactician is because if I have an enemy, I can predict how you're going to react to something I'm going to do to you then since I can predict your reaction, I now what you're going, I know what you're going to deploy in response to that. Now I know that you're going to deploy secondary forms. I've already thought about how I would defeat those first and what other mechanisms you would deploy. And I would already have those mechanisms installed first before yeah. I make the first move. I'm a very poor chess player. Um, I have 5D thinking capacity, but that's for book writing, that's for creating presentations, videos, 
more of knowledge information chess for me it's like i become itchy and i start moving around it's, it's just not i i like the concept it's just not my game i and i can freely say that it's just not my game <laughs> i would rather just do the book writing and it's like how does the history fit here how do i put this component in how where is that truth how does that fit so I, I'm a bookworm. I write books. I have 12 books that I'm writing at this time. I'm writing my first set of books. What I realized is I've always wanted to write a book, but I realized it can't be one book because I don't, I know so much stuff. It's hard to throw everything I'm trying to convey in one book. That's only six or 700 pages. And who wants to read a book that's six or 700 pages, not the average person. So it oh. has to be volumes. Yeah, I've done volumes. I usually make a book 598 pages because I like eight and a half by 11 format, like that big thing you can hit somebody over the head with and knock them out cold. And it's your book, it's your weapon. You can carry it in a big ass purse and just go, what, what I, when people buy these books and they show people, they're like, what the fuck did you buy? This thing is huge. And they say, we like eight and a half by 11. That's the size of a piece of paper. That's the size of a nice tablet where you can read the text. So that's a huge book though, man. Eight and a half by 11, that's a huge, heavy book. Oh yeah, I like them that way. It, it People are like, when, when somebody takes that out of their big ass purse, because women carry huge purses nowadays, when they take that out, old, not so old people, and people are like, what the hell is that? What is that thing? That's a book. That's a good book. It's funny. I have a, let's see, where's that book at? I, I like the shock value because it's big and it's like, it fits so much info in the images. I do everything with images. Whatever. I can't find it. I have uh, uh, the book called the Tanakh and it's very heavy and it's nothing close to eight and a half by 11. And that book is heavy. Like you can bludgeon someone to death with this book. It's probably a couple of inches thick almost. So I can't imagine a book eight and a half by 11. That is freaking huge, man. That's the size of a piece of paper. To me, that's nothing. That's a big book. Oh, it's small. Trust me, it's not that big. And, oh, there and, it is. And, and um, I mean, if you're writing a physical book, uh, eight and a half by 11, uh, Amazon stops you at 598 pages. Oh, that's nothing. That's nothing. To that's me. what I'm saying. And this is not even eight and a half by 11. And look, this, here's my head and this is not even eight and a half by 11. So I'm like, that is a huge book, Eliana. Good Lord. I'm used to being on ships that are like 12,000 feet in size. Can you imagine 12,000 feet? I just see you reading the, the Anok books, you know, the books that are like five feet tall and you're like, you got to really lift it up. And it, each page is like freaking huge, man. I want to read those books. The ones that they have hidden in the Vatican and in Tibet and all that stuff, the giant books. Yeah, me too. I'd love to. Uh, the Vatican is fascinating with all its secret vaults. I just find the book size for me, eight and a half by 11 is the perfect fit for everything I want to format and the info. Like people are shocked. Eight and a half by 11, are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, that's the perfect size for well, a book. That was my reaction. I'm like, Jesus, I don't have many books that are eight and a half by 11, man. That's fucking... I, I mean, have one. the size of a sheet of paper. I get it, but like, good Lord. I love it. It's like people get a reaction out of it and people have purchased a lot of my books and they're surprised by how much information fits into it and all the images because I include image I write and then I have to visually represent what I write so there's like an image after each thing that's written and people are like you're crazy when do you have the time to do this I'm like I hyper speed write and put images like hyper dimensional writing like I'm a visual, I'm a real visual person. I love to see images in books, man. And they're not common. You might have a couple images in directly in the center of the book, like two or three pages or 10. I like to show illustrations when I'm writing my book, I will be, I'm drawing a shit ton of stuff. Well, um, then you might have to do several volumes if you're doing them in smaller size. I don't see it being any, any less than five or six books just to convey the base message of what I need to say. 
Yeah, mine are 32 books so far and 12, 14 more in the works that I'll have to finish at some point. So for me, that's that's my 5D experience being in 5D. That's That's where I, my ability works well, writing books and visually playing around with everything and fitting it in. So... Uh, and, and and people seem to be shocked because it's I only on Amazon I only do physical copies of books. I don't do EPUB. I do PDF. I do sell PDF on my own website through my own website, so I know who's buying my books. But the print copy, they can't really do anything with it. They can't copy it. They can't even photocopy it because it's so frippin' big. Yeah, copy it. And eight and a half, eight and a half by eleven, literally fits barely on a printer. You ever try to photocopy a page of a book and you can't even open it up wide enough to make the damn copy? Oh, I can. I've done it with huge books. I just know how to bend them correctly. I I was a library technician. I would help people photocopy. Like I was an actual library technician in a physical university, and I was responsible for helping students photocopy different types of materials, including big books. But I, there's a way of fitting it on a scanner to do it. There's cheat There's cheat sheets for how to do it. And you always got to push down on the rounded part so it yeah, gets a full copy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you have to angle it a certain way and just play around with the angles. It can be done. I've done it all the time. I still do it. I have a flatbed scanner at home that can scan right. eight, and a half, eight and a half by 17. Hmm. Like huge. Oh, yeah, I love it. It's like I can scan virtually anything on it. Uh, when I do my remote viewing, I do it pen and Maybe paper. that's what I need. That would help me a lot with my books because if I can physically utilize stuff from these books that I've read and I can physically have something physically on a platform to instead of figuring out where the hell it is in the book, I can already have it in a library where I can use it. Yeah, like I've, I just use the internet as the highway library to find a lot of my knowledge to put as reference points in books and credit the people who wrote it, of course. But a lot of the stuff, the remote viewing, uh, I do it at eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. What I was showing you, the two remote viewings, that's done all by hand with black ink pen, eight and a half by 11, always landscape. And then I have to go and scan it in and just make sure, you know, if, if, Scanners aren't perfect. They create lines and smudges and whatnot. Then I have to just do basic edit to whatever the scanners found funky because black ink doesn't transfer well all the time in scanner. So it sort of um, it sort of makes a little blurb. Like it reflects whatever scanned. So I have to fix that. It's easy, but I love the flatbed scanner. It's like. It does eight and a half by 11, but it does 11 by 17 inches. Landscape or portrait? 11 by 17 is the size that tattoo flash used to be. Remember we used to go into a tattoo shop and then all the flashes on the wall? Yeah. Everything's 11 by 17. They don't do yeah. that no more. Flash doesn't exist anymore, but every that was that was the measurement, 11 by 17. You can put a lot of information on that. Well, almost that kind of a scanner is almost a thousand something. It's going to cost you, but it's doable. They sell scanners like that. Six more inches, they charge that much more. And you're only getting six more inches than the standard 11-inch width. Yeah, but you're getting 11 by 17 when you're yeah, actually... What I'm saying is they're charging you an extra $800 for yeah. six more inches, and that's crazy. Yeah, but it also gives you freedom to maneuver the book around and scan mm -hmm. it. Then mm -hmm. you create your little cheat sheets for how you scanned it so you can repeat the same template over and over again. Because you don't have to squeeze the book. It gives you that parameter of 11 by 17. Almost like you can get both pages at once at 17 yes. inches long. Almost. Yes. If it's, if and it's I have half, that's roughly 19 inches. So yeah, you can't get it. Because there's gaps between the information. Yeah, so. and let me just tell you the secret. 11 by 17, I checked out books that were huge from the library that were like heavy and big was able to do two pages it, it, I don't have to push on it it lies flat the lid covers 11 by 17 scans it perfectly and I don't suffer I don't have to bend it I don't have to press it I don't have to go 
do weird things to it. It's, it's like little tr tips and tricks, having had worked in a library, knowing how to cheat the system with a scanner. <laughs> and I did it. So I, I still do it on my flatbed scanner because it really, like, okay, it was a one time investment. I spent a thousand something on the scanner. Plus, it's a printer, color printer, and black and white. So I just invested into functionality of scanning and printing. So it's not a waste of my money. Yeah, I'm looking at my crappy eight and a half by 11 sitting over there. I'm like, I want a 17 inch long freaking printer. Well, then do it. I've had this thing for six years now and haven't regretted it since. It does take more cleaning. Like you have to clean it more often because it uses a lot of uh, heavy duty color inkjet, like per ink a lot of color so that's the only thing I, I clean it four times every four months I'm like getting it to clean itself otherwise it prints with lines because I use a lot of ink when I print even in black and white I put it to the highest quality level to print my um if I want paper copies I just highest quality for my remote viewing stuff Otherwise, I don't print much in color, but it's still on the highest quality, even for the black and white. And I do a lot of that because I compare the remote viewing stuff. So I, I sort of need the functionality for that. But if, if you really work with a lot of books and stuff, you need to scan two pages of the book. Eight, 11 by 17 is the best way to go for a flatbed scanner on top that also prints in color and black and white. And, you know, know stuff for the future man because like uh, i've been writing for three and a half years straight and like when you're trying to write a series of books it feels like there's no end to it because like i could totally just release a book now but i don't want to do that but is it to, it's so complex yeah is it to the high standard of quality that you expect until i feel it's to the standard of what i want to publish i don't publish it i know what i'm saying it's just like it's yeah. it's there's no way it's, it needs to, I've yeah. got to perfect it first before I release volume one, you know, it's exactly. I've never read a book, I've never wrote a book before. So like, I'm just starting. It, it's also your language and your style. Like, how are you, what perspective are you writing? Is it just from history? Is it personal experience? Like mine is a messy blend of history and personal. It sort of blends sometimes there's an I and sometimes there's not. And it's like an Encyclopedia Britannica. When people read it, they're like, it's so scientific. It has personal aspects of me and it has very dry aspects. And it's all a mesh of everything mixed and blended together as a weird style. And people are like, that is so cool and so rad. That's nobody, how I'm writing it. Yeah, nobody does it like I do. And I find it hilarious because it's your own blend of interesting creative writing and, and I don't follow a strict guideline of how to write a book. I just don't because it doesn't work for me. It's boring and it's dry. Hmm. So I use historical aspect of, you know, this is history. And then sometimes the I am of personal experience also falls into that. It's blended this way. It just works. And it, 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 I don't even have to think when I write that way. It writes itself. It's just creative writing. It, 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 I'm not censoring myself or limiting myself in how I write. I just express and emote what I feel and, and what comes in as information. And I blend that with history. I just go for it and have fun with it. I can't wait till my book comes out, man. Eventually it'll come out. Maybe by the time i'm 50. oh no 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 you, they always you say that your first book it takes like 10 years to write it especially no next four months i give it four months and it's out the door i've have i've given it two years as a series but you know what it's the craft man because every day you write a bit more and you add a bit more and it looks like a fat tone i love it it's you can protect yourself with it hit it someone over the head with it and it's like Lights out, man. Love it. So um, just understand there are limits. If, if you're using certain sizes and if you choose to go with Amazon, 
look how much page limits they allow per book size. Like how big is your book? Because for me, I found out I wrote something that was six, 800 pages. And then when I like selected eight and a half by 11, I'm like, damn, you only allow 598 pages. That's piddly. But on all Amazon books? No, just the eight and a half by 11 size that I specifically like. I'm like, damn, I have to break this up into a series. <laughs> so I broke it up into a series and every book was 598 pages. And people are like, ooh. I that's... didn't know that there was restrictions like that. So that's there interesting. Is... I know that when I read a book, I'll, I'll think about that. Yeah, when you write a book, like think of how big you want your book to be. Six by nine? What's the typical book size? Because it follows a format. I think it's six by nine inches. Six by nine seems like a little small book to me. I liked a little bit fatter books. Well, no, that's just the size. It could be as fat as you want, but it's... I know, but it's like the, the, the text a lot of times is smaller. And like the information is, it, I don't know, it, I think it conveys it better with the way you're describing because you can put more information per page. More yes. illustrations, just you can really blast your message there. And I, I like that idea. And that's how I do it because for me, I don't even have to adjust the size in whatever word script document I'm writing the book in. It's already eight and a half by 11. I don't have to shrink it down to a smaller size in the word editor it's automatically eight and a half by 11 because it's a print page it's the size of a print page and that print page will never change sizes it'll always be eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17 but it doesn't offer the size just imagine 11 by 17 as a book print amazon doesn't allow that mm. eight and a half by 11 and eight and a half by 14 it's as big as it goes, but I didn't want to do eight and a half by 14. That's a little too big for my comfort. Like a big Bible or something. Yeah, eight and a half by 11 is as far as I go. Anything bigger than scares me, literally. Like, that's a little too big, but it's four inches only. But think about it. It's still only awful. four inches. That's That's a good amount of information, man. Yeah, but it's still too much for me. Like, that is beyond my carrying capacity. I can carry 598 pages in eight and a half by 11 and easily carry that in my hand, just in my hand, and do heavy lifting. Like, it's, it's also good for your arms to get stronger. Eight by 14 is too heavy to hold in my hand. Like, my hand starts struggling and suffering. Yeah, you're you're holding a chunk of a literal tree in your hand. Yeah, that too. See, it's trees. It's paper. Paper is heavy as hell. Just a ream of paper. Yes. It's pretty decently weighted, but then you put that into a book. It's a lot heavier than you can imagine. Uh, I have several books that are 598 pages that I specifically chose to buy. Not my own books. I don't even buy my own books. But people have, and they've showed me what it looks like. And I, I love it. It's perfect. And, and people carry man purses, big purses. That's the thing now. It's like, I see them taking it out of their purse. And I'm like, <laughs> they have a giggle because it's funny. Like this big ass giant book comes out of a giant purse or a backpack, you know, like. <laughs> the size of the backpack. I'm surprised. Like, this is my book holder on my back. There's nothing else in it. There's just one book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People have several books in their backpacks, apparently. It's like um, people are walking, talking encyclopedias these days, and people are buying print books. It's back in style. It's funny. I've, I've, I've read over 4,000 books, but I never, I never count PDFs as like a book, even though it's a book. You know, I think I stopped counting with PDFs. I don't even count how many books I read. All my books are now PDF. I don't buy physical books. I've been I write them. PDFs lately because it's so convenient because you can get a book online for free. Yes. Just buying it and taking up space. I like that idea. Yeah. The entire wall is all books. It's it's not just this section here. It's, it's a pretty big wall. It goes all the way up to the ceiling. Yeah, I, I have a special room with books, like a special cabinet filled with my books. 
but I don't have premium space for books, that is not filled with books. That is filled with crystal grids and, and sacred geometry geometry under the I some of your original books were all like crystal orientations and grids and stuff like that right yes my very first book was just about that and then i split it into companion compendiums because i had more to write and it's just then i started with the other book stuff um but everything physical that was my crystal grids is behind these tapestries because i have glass cases but i covered it up with tapestries because i really don't want people seeing too much of that during interviews is distracting. Mm. So, I can see myself just staring at the crystals while you talk. Yeah. Well, and you can see the window too, because I have a window here and I just, I wanted to cover it up with some nice artwork. So I did that. And you know what, man, I cannot wait to rewatch this because you told me earlier that you made that little compilation video and stuff like that. That's pretty cool, man. I've, I've, I've never had a compilation video of me talking. So you're going to be the first one that, ever made one so that's well, cool. yeah it's a blend about reptilian Anunnaki history so it has you it has another person speaking it's like I'm blending plus me speaking about history too so it's gonna it's like uh, it's almost two hours now in the compilation when are you gonna um, release it I'm not sure yet it's still working on it I will post this uh, interview on rumble because we talked about a lot of wild things that I think I don't I think want. We will always talk about wild stuff. Like we could probably talk all day and then you're just like, where did eight hours just come go? You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like we covered a lot. So I think this will go on Rumble because it's safer, if that's okay with you. Totally, man. I'll just repost it on my freaking Facebook because we're posting everything on Rumble right now because we were both deplatformed off of YouTube. So you know how that works. Yeah, that works. It's much safer. And it's to the same degree as YouTube. It's getting there, right? The platform itself, its user features are better. I hope so. I think it is. And that's why I have a backup channel there, because YouTube is just slamming everybody with censorship. It's like you can't speak anything of the truth. And I look forward to doing that video where we talk about the Anunnaki. That would be freaking rad. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And it was fun meeting you and talking to you. Yeah, I never really thought I would have talked to you on a video. So like when you took that challenge, I was like freaking Ileana starting to help uncover my past. I was like, I will accept that, man. That freaking rocks. Well, it felt special. Your past is deep and interesting. And I like deep and interesting. I don't like the boring stuff. For me, it's well, like, if you want it behind the scenes, if you want to maybe discover some other stuff and we talk about that on something, hey, man, like I value your opinion. So, well, the usual that I get is like, what were my past lifetimes? Which, which, which being was I? Like Pleiadian, Andromedan, Syrian, Antares? Like, those are fine too. They seem a little, those, those seem like boring stuff to me. Like, Everybody I expects the, the people to ask the same questions over. It's like you get barraged by the same comments constantly. You know what I'm saying? I don't find them boring because some of them have had extraordinary, exceptional lives as world I wouldn't builders. Say boring, more like repetitive. Well, it's your typical one because there's a lot, lot of Andromeda galaxy, Pleiadian galaxy, like Pleiadians, Andromedans, Milky Way galaxy. It's just the the typical human template. So, but some of them have had extraordinary lifetimes. My clients are like, I agree. man, man, that Pleiadian went around town and did this and that. And that name resonates, you know, like it's an energetic name. Even I don't attach myself to names, but these people, when they're past lives, when they, when they connect, they're like, Whoa, I can't believe my name was this. They just want the history of the past life. That's interesting to them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whatever, whatever you'd like, it's your session. I don't, I don't put limits on what they want to know. So they're free to explore whatever past lives they want. Pleiadian, Arcturian, whatever galactic comes in, I'm good with it. We'll explore. And it's just to me, yours is not the typical one. So I'm like, I want to, I want to know what what he is about because it's special so like let's let's take a look at you 
Have you seen any of me and Laura's content on Rebel Collective? No, I have not. I want a fresh perspective on a person, so I haven't watched any of that, honestly. Episode one and two is about my traumatic brain injury and my abilities. It's it's pretty involved. Like we only talk about like two percent of who I am because you can only talk so much in a couple of hours between videos. I listened to the whole thing with you and Matthew about your bike accident, about all of that stuff where you had to rebuild your body basically from the ground up. So, like, I know your past because Matthew allowed you to talk. So and that was fun, man. That's like I said, the first time I got to just really just relax and talk without having to interview somebody. Yeah. And I so like it's nice to be the interviewed, you know? Well, even when I do interviews, it's like we're just talking, you and me. If I really want to do the journalist interview style, that's one thing, but this is not that. It's a different totally different style of just chatting and it's like an interview but it's really not it's just us sharing info it's more of a deep dive when you do that versus yeah. like just talking about a couple of canned subjects and you keep moving on and on to other subjects because like you want to go through a guest's life and experiences and stuff like that and you can't really go deep with anything because if you do you're only talking about one subject for 45 minutes straight yeah out of a two-hour video so that's that sucks well, I like to do two hours with a person usually as an interview and I'm like, it's based on topics, but it's longer than 10 minutes. It's like, I prefer to give 20 minutes or 25 minutes per each conversation. I have tons of questions for people always, and you won't know what to expect from me because I really don't plan these things out. I'm like, boom, boom, boom on the spot. Things just come to me psychically, what I want to ask you. I just go for it. Because I just like to play, like get to know the person. Well, I'm super excited for your awesome questions in the future, man. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for like being patient with me and looking at that remote viewing stuff. That was the purpose, man. Like all the time you spent doing that. Thank you for spending that time and doing that for me. It really means a lot, man. Well, thank you for taking a deep dive and like actually resonating because I kept asking you, what does that mean? What do you get from it? What do you feel? So for me, it's I'm like, not used to that either. I'm used to people think they're the know-it-alls and they know everything. And like, it's cool to ask other points of views because it shows you're just a regular human being and you're still searching for yourself and you don't have all the answers. Exactly. That's respect. That's respect. To say you know all the answers is cocky. If I don't. Even, I don't. I, I like to tell people, I know a single grain of information of sand on a single beach, in a single state, on a single planet, in the ocean of the cosmos. Mm. That's what it feels like. There's so much to know. We're not, we can't comprehend how much exists. Exactly. And you're in Tampa, Florida? Yep. Uh, do, you got, do you got any beaches that have beautiful shells? On them? Sarasota Beach is right near Tampa, and the entire beach is 99.9% .9 quartz crystal. Mm -hmm. All of it's quartz crystal. The whole beach is quartz. 90, you know how resonating that is with energy, man? It is yeah. crazy. I remember the first time I seen Sarasota Beach, I could, I could barely see because it was so white and so blinding. It was just like, holy crap, very inundating and overwhelming. Mm -hmm. so i think you're in because there's other parts of florida where the beaches are filled with crustaceans like shells everywhere there's shells in the ground here all over florida there's shells everywhere all this, florida used to be, be submerged yeah so there's shells everywhere across florida even inland shells are everywhere you dig deep enough you find seashells yeah i like the ones though that are the true tulips the tulips the like I watch a shelling uh, YouTube channel that's all about shelling on the different Marco Islands, the 10,000 Islands. She goes everywhere and she picks up shells every Sunday. There's a video of shelling in Florida, somewhere on one of the islands. I didn't know it was called shelling. SWF shelling, I think. SWF shelling. Hmm. And this this lady is just dedicated. She's like, that's a true tulip, that's a tulip, that's a horse conch, that's 
she like identifies it in the video she holds it up it's like oh my god i got this out of the wave and she shows it up and you can see it and I'm like oh my god best shelling ever so it's like if i could have florida on my bucket list i don't know when i would do the shelling like i would just come for shelling we have a bunch of amazing beaches through everywhere, man. Like they are, the Florida beaches are known and probably one of the top destination sites for beaches in the United States. Exactly. It's like, but you guys also like have- California beaches suck compared to like Florida beaches. I don't know why. I don't, I don't it, they're just different. They don't have shells, honestly. Yeah, Florida, it's, like, it's like just sand. Like, Yeah. I'm sure I would, like if I was to come to at some point to Florida, I would have a huge suitcase going back with shells because I love crystal collecting and shell collecting. That is all that I collect. Plus beautiful artwork. And direct you to a bunch of cool crystal places if you ever come down. God forbid they ever throw a lot of these major shows in Florida. It's always California, man. Like we need to abandon California with all the consciousness shows bring them to the east coast because it's 10 times cheaper the venues are cheaper the destinations the locations are way better than la this la is so depressing and dark and yeah. dirty and there's no grass there's no life it's just mechanized masculine energy everywhere yeah I cannot stand los angeles um all the major events are there conscious life expo mm -hmm. Uh, there's something called Joshua Tree, and it's like takes place in Joshua Tree. I don't, I forgot. I, I uh, well, hey, the Galactic Princess is gonna be in your neck of the woods soon enough. Sure is. I'll be there. <laughs> I'm going there to support a lot of my friends because a lot of people who have these shows they always go there. So like, I go to hang out with my friends to talk about experiences. I don't necessarily go for the guests because mm -hmm. I already know their information. There's nothing they ever say that they haven't said last month at the other show or two days ago on their YouTube show, mm -hmm. you know? So if I know you as a person, I already know what you're going to talk about because generally a lot of these speakers, they just talk about the same shit over and over and over and over and over. And it's just like, I can't pay to see you talk about what you have talked about forever, man. But to that event, you can't get in unless you've paid 700 So yeah. are, are you able to see your friends outside of the conference itself and just hang out? Yeah, we have, a, we have an event that we're going to be doing. Just a couple of us friends. We're going to be going to... We're going to be going to Miami the day before the show, and we're going to Coral Castle. Cool. We want to make a, we want to film a bunch of stuff and maybe make that into like a little mini documentary or something. Who knows, man, but like a couple of cool people and then we go to the show together and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, because that, that conference is, I believe is called Jessic Galactic Informers something. Conference? Galactic Spiritual Informers Con Convention, GSIC. Jessic, right? Connection. Yeah, Connection. Galactic Spiritual Informers Connection. Jessic, right? For short. Pretty much. Uh, she promises she's going to have the newest Atlantis stuff, how the Atlantis tech worked. Last year, it was how the UFOs work. Today, this year's is Atlantis. Well, I do like learning about Atlantis stuff and Anaki stuff. So, I mean. It might surprise you. A lot of her information in the past, a lot of it was spot on. Some of it very deviated but like i like her information some of it's just off you know uh, it's just the latest on anaki stuff that's off the rest of the information previous stuff was more aligned and on point as a I truth agree, 100%. of like, history I, I see that it's just this latest book with that anaki stuff it just, I don't know, it, it felt like it was spelled with energy. That was weird. I couldn't read it when it came. To, I read some of it, but when it came to Anunnaki history, it was like a spell was all over it. And the energy felt wrong. Hmm. I have, the book itself is like, when you, when it's not Anunnaki related, it doesn't have that spell stuff. When it's Anunnaki related, it felt like a dissonant spell. 
like a booby trap or something. Mm. That's what it felt like to me. And that's so I couldn't resonate with the rest of it. But I read some of it and it was interesting in the beginning. But when it got to when I got to Anki, honestly, him wearing the DNA robe, I don't know. It was just weird and creepy when Nimna was wearing the robes with all that DNA stuff in the flower of life. It felt okay. I don't know. What's the difference? I don't think there is. If it's all a form of higher protection, then you think every member in that family would be wearing it because it would be open knowledge. So you would think that Annie would be wearing it as well. Even Anu's grandparents. That has to be a thing because mm -hmm. I don't think it's a new technology. I believe that they were wearing that stuff a long time ago, but they were never depicted that way for specific reasons because they controlled the narrative how they were depicted. Kind of like Thoth was the Ibis. It's definitely not an Ibis. He's not a bird. No. But they made sure he was depicted as an Ibis. So that's just controlling what you want the public to know when you want to leave some stuff out, you know? Yeah, but... In her book, latest, it's portrayed as Anki having this big, bald head that looks like a gray and kind of wizened and old. I, I do not resonate that. I, I, I can't connect with that at all. N not a single part of it. <clears throat> all I connected was the robes. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Their robes seem so familiar. And then Nimna's like, well, because we wore them before. I don't believe that the flower of life is inverted in a bad thing. That's just me. I don't get anything bad from the frequency, even though Ashiana Dean has said that it is not a good thing. I, I still get a clean frequency that it's it's a energetic life rejuvenation frequency, and it's also a knowledge of universal knowledge, like an Akashic record. What do you get from the flower of life? The negative I get from it would be the corporations that use the original part before it ex expands out, and they use that as their logo. Mm -hmm. So it's almost they're claiming they're part of Planetary Cor Corporation, and they're part of all this control. So it has negative context, but I believe it is completely natural, organic energy that was... It's kind of like you can take something that's good, and then, like the swastika. Hitler took it, it became an evil symbol, but it never really meant anything evil whatsoever. So it depends on the person projecting that symbol out and what it means to them. Yeah, I've always used it in my crystal grids as a purity. It just connects to higher knowledge and it rejuvenates your energy. That's all I've ever used it for a purpose. And people is like, how can you also do Metatron's, you know, the Metatron? I'm like, it doesn't have any bad energy to me. Is just a star, five-pointed star with more angles added in. Metatron. And that's a complicated symbol, man. I think it's all the platonic solids all mixed together, and it's that it's... master symbol. So that has to be a powerful symbol, period. Oh, it is. I always get, like, a lot of downloads from it. Knowledge, holographic, like, how to create things, staffs with crystals, images. That's It, it, it opens up ability to download higher consciousness technology i would say whenever i look at it that's what i get from it it sends me information about how to do things correctly and i guess if i wasn't being so blocked by those guys i'd be able to access a lot of this stuff because i know it exists within myself but i just feel that um three percent of me is allowed to exist and 97 percent is being blocked that's how i truly feel yeah but nothing truly ever blocks you. It's like, get that out of you. Take it off. One thing I learned from Penny Bradley that I practice daily is she has this mantra. She says, there is no firewall. Exactly. And she said she repeated that for two years and it defeated the programming. It took two years. But guess what? I try to say that almost every day because she told me she repeated it every day. There is no firewall. There is no firewall. I say that I don't know how many times per day. Well, they are trying to block you, so clean them out. Like, literally clean that soul stretching mechanism. Like, you have, you do healing through quantum hypnosis. Why don't you try to do it on yourself? Record your own voice taking you through quantum healing hypnosis. 
I know it has to be done. The rules like in person, somebody else has to do it for you. There's no rule saying you can't put yourself under. So, okay. Put yourself under and do your healing through it. <clears throat> hmm. Heal thyself through hmm. your own mechanism of healing. Cause you only trust yourself to heal this. You're having a hard well, time. If, if they're not going to block that, like we agreed earlier that they've been literally blocking it. Well, they can't really block your true self healing yourself. So when other people try to put you under, it fails because they're not, they don't know how to do it to remove the processing. I think if it's you recorded yourself putting yourself under, it'll lift these blocks. Because you're a powerful quantum healer. It's just other people doing it, I don't think will work. It has to be you doing it for yourself in a quantum healing hypnosis session. I'll definitely do it. I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've had people do hypnosis sessions for me, QHHD and other styles. With some, it worked because their voices are pure harmonic. With some of them, it didn't because the voices did not resonate with the induction. And I'm like, that's not doing anything for me. It's still giving information from the hypnosis session and some healing, but it would not completely resonate with me. So I recorded my own hypnosis induction methods and I could go under quickly. And when I hear my own voice, it's the most healing thing I've ever heard. And it goes boom and starts working in a hypnosis session. So that's why I like you, man, because I, I learn stuff from you all the time. So that's freaking awesome. And I mean, this is just trial and error. Like I've tried many hypnosis sessions. Some worked, some didn't, and I'm honest about it. And the QHHT, I know the technique because she she inducted me correctly, induced correctly, but it didn't really connect. Well, it did connect to the higher self, but we had a lot of questions and it focused some healing, but it wasn't the full purpose of it. And I don't think she energetically connected correctly. That's why that, it worked a little bit. It worked on emotional healing, but not physical healing. So it also is the style, like you said. What's their intent? What's their style? What? How do they in, induce you, induct you? You have to induce yourself for this to heal you. As you say, quantum healing hypnosis heals anything, like hernias, blah, blah, blah. It can heal you if you heal yourself with it. You have to do it on yourself. That's the only way it will work to get this stuff out of you. Because mm -hmm. you are the quantum magician. You are the quantum healer. So, Matthew, you, you said I'm the quantum healer. I keep thinking of what Matthew entitled the graphic for the video we did for that interview. And he called, he entitled it Path of the Rebel Mystic. And that really stuck with me. It's almost like if I was to write a book just about my own experiences, Matthew just named it. The Path of the Rebel Mystic. It was very powerful. I was like, holy crap, man, that is cool. I love it. Well, before writing that book, you must write your own hypnosis induction for yourself and hypnotize yourself and get that going. Make sure you have um, whatever technique you create, have that running so you hear your own voice and have a second recorder recording whatever comes in. I always I, I have myself running the hypnosis, what I have recorded, and then my higher self takes over and you know does the other stuff as it always does in hypnosis, correct? You have your technique and the guide and the induction, and the higher self is guiding you and you're answering the questions, the healing, whatever healing you request. Make sure there's another recorder of some sort recording that session. So you can listen back to it and see what went on in the details. And what you mm -hmm. can further tweak to even make it better for that healing. It took me yeah, four that's years. That's really a thing. You hear yourself perform something and you're like, I don't like that aspect or I'm too fast or I'm too slow. And like, you don't know until you hear yourself because I never record the induction. We only record the moment you go under, because if we were to record the induction, everybody would try to be putting under with hypnosis and QHHT. I, I record the induction and nobody tries it because it's just, they don't know what they're doing. 
Let's just put it that's this the way. problem. Like we don't want people thinking they can just become a practitioner and it's dangerous because if you don't know what you're doing, you can harm yeah. people. Because if someone goes somewhere yeah. and they're experiencing trauma and you don't know what to do and you don't know how to remove that trauma due to the outro or the count yeah. out and you install the subconscious prompts, like yeah. you will have no physical or mental symptoms of this session. I want to make sure that you will not experience everything in the past is from the past. We will leave it in the past. I fully understand. But for yourself, you need to record yourself with the induction with the middle the start, middle, and end, so you understand what's working for you and what doesn't. That's the toughest part with self-hypnosis, getting that perfectly, and you have to record it. Well, I mean, this will be private. You're not going to put these out publicly, so people are not going to hear the induction. But for yourself, you have to hear yourself back that it's a smooth process that works for your healing. It took me four years to get it right, to, to record hearing myself how I induce it, and like tweaking it, like you said, perfecting it until it was like the most healing thing I could do for myself. And people are like, that has to be the toughest thing you do as a hypnosis practitioner. I'm like, yes, it is. But it's also the most rewarding, brilliant thing you can do because you're improving your own style and technique based on what Dolores' style teaches you. You use all the rules, but you have to do it on yourself. Because you're taking the healing into your own hands. Like you, you, you yourself have said, people have tried to put you under and it's not working because they're blocking. And you also, you're right, it was, their, it was their induction. The induction, a lot of times, it was so bad. All I could focus was on how bad they were. And it's just like you can't okay. relax at that point. Well, you feel like you're the professor allowing a student to attempt to put you under. And I literally mean to attempt, not even to yeah. be even successful. So it's like you're, you know what I'm saying? Like yes, just, I do. It's hard because to view it from that point of view and you can't connect with it. I've only had two or three hypnosis practitioners that could put me under properly for a good session. The first QHHT, I just, I got a lot of answers, but I didn't feel it was everything that I wanted. And I felt like I came out of it, not much was healed, except the emotional level, the physical wasn't. But okay, take that and learn from it and, and start working on it. Like now I can induce myself in the hernia pain I almost don't feel. Because it knits itself. It's not perfect healing, but it's the best I can do with self-induced healing through hypnosis. Man, yesterday I did an 11-hour session. That's That's involved. That so. is very top-notch. But focus on yourself. You've do, done this for others now. You want your healing through so certain. I desperately need healing, man. I, more than anyone could ever imagine. You can see it on my face. Yeah. This needs yeah. to be healed, people. Yeah, take it on into my your face and my body too. Take it into your own hands and start doing it for yourself. It's the most brilliant thing you can do for yourself. I removed my implants of, myself. Indiana, I was, I've learned a lot. Like, like honestly talking to me with all this it's the toughest thing you can do as a hypnosis practitioner to do self hypnosis with that qhhd technique on yourself like start recording it start planning it start practicing it until you feel it's right in the recording that it resonates for you to do it on yourself start working with that because you could take it to that level for self healing that's what i feel will benefit you the most because trying with other practitioners isn't working. It's not hitting the spot. It doesn't resonate. It doesn't remove what they've done to you. I know QHHD is like, it could heal anything. You said it could heal my hernia. But if the practitioner is not what's perfect to do that, it won't work. I agree. So be your own practitioner. Be your own healer and start working those mechanisms of induction until they frequent until the frequency of your own voice resonates perfectly to induce you. Yeah, sometimes the pitch, the tone, how fast, how slow, in the beginning it might be clunky. Just repeat it over and over again until you get it to the right degree that you want for your own recipe of healing induction. And then the higher self will take over and do the rest of the work for you.
Get your technique, induction technique, right with yourself, for yourself. And you'll, you'll find what works. It took me four years, but I'm happy with my induction technique. And people seem to be okay with it too when I induce them. So it's, it's like it took four years, but I've gotten it to where I like hearing myself. Because I don't like hearing many practitioners when they try it on me. Honestly, it just feels like it doesn't vibrate correctly with the soul frequency. And I think that's what you've experienced, correct, with others? The same ex explanation, same feeling. And are they QHHT certified or do they do different styles of hypnosis? I know a lot of people who do beyond quantum healing, but what I've had a couple of beyond quantum healing sessions that were online, but most of everything I do is QHHT in person, period. Like I don't do any online sessions. It's forbidden with QHHT. I understand. I do all of mine online because I can't travel, but mine is shamanic. It was shamanically taught. I'm definitely, this coming year, I will be QH certified. So it's nice to not have to travel so much all the time, full time doing what I do because I travel a lot for people and people fly in a lot for me. So like, so like, I would... is there a degree where QHHT can be done online or is it totally forbidden? Like completely totally forbidden the only way to do it is if you go outside of quantum healing which is basically beyond quantum healing which was started by a student named candace crawl goldman which i know her yeah I know. yeah so we're allowed to, to do the online sessions because it's similar to a qhht session but candace just changed the induction yep and the mechanism but ultimately it's the same process but well, i'll be allowed to do it online well you can try That's that on cool. Like you offered it for me for free. So if you want to practice on me, when you get to that stage, I'll be your first test subject. If you want. I'd agree to that. But I want you to focus on creating your own induction with QHHT or beyond QHHT so you can induce yourself for your own healing. Because that's ultimately what will get you healed of this manipulation by the graves. Unless you trust Candace to do the beyond QHHT for you, to induce you, because she's amazing. She's the first one I ever, or the first person, I, fourth person I ever interviewed. And I was, I liked her vibration. I liked her voice. So do you, would you trust her to induce you? Of course. I think you should try it. Hmm. I think you should try with her. And, and I think that could work. And if it doesn't, you need to do your own induction on yourself. Because I feel she could actually do it because she's pretty good. And where and is she? Better because the script's completely different. And I won't be one of the people where, like, I know the next sentence you're going to say. When I'm trying to sit here and relax, close my eyes, I know the next part of the script. So it's hard to know the script while someone else is about to say it because you start filling in the blanks before they say it. So that's really yeah. distracting. So BQH yeah. is more logical. Yeah. Well, I mean, where does she live? I don't know. I think Arkansas or something. Because she's she's definitely not in Florida. She's on a farm. She's on a farm. So are so are you taking her certification so you can do the online ones? I will be. That is a great idea because a lot of hypnosis. I actually have all of the complete material from BQH, a friend of mine gave it to me. So I technically have all the material, but I never wanted to really read it unless I was approved first. Because I think if I started doing BQH without being certified for yeah, it. Yeah, that's unfair. That's cheating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to give what she deserves and do it the right way. Yeah, you want to be certified in it. Um, like my shaman teacher sh certified me in the shamanic protocol and then years later i modified it because it needed to be more advanced it wasn't enough for me so i i created my own specific things based on the same teachings just more advanced because i outgrew the old technique honestly I think we all we all outgrow all of it eventually so it's inevitable yeah. to create your own technique because after a while you start seeing the limiting factors in every technique and you're like, you have to add to yeah. it. You have, we yeah. were talking about the tool belt earlier. Use this, use this, use this, use what works. 
Mm -hmm. hybrid style. I'm a completely fan of that. Like, yeah, never be, I will do that. I've always thought about it. Well, I believe that energy still resonates and you can do hypnosis through online like Zoom and record it. For me, it's worked for me. And and I got over the limits because I had to self-induce my own hypnosis. <laughs> like literally. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I didn't trust anybody with my SSP stuff. Like zero, except my shaman teacher. I let well, him most, induce Most SSP people don't trust anybody for that in general. Because like, if you don't know what you're doing, they can be killed. They will kill themselves if you activate the wrong programming. And they'll kill you too. He was the most amazing person I have ever met. And he did it correctly, the shamanic way. And I'm like grateful for him because that caused a lot of healing, a lot of healing that I needed, both physical and emotional trauma. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't worked with him. Let's just put it that way. And it just forced me to learn self-hypnosis and to learn to do hypnosis for other people. But it, there's no limits where I I could do it in person or I can do it online. It works both ways. There's no limit. There, there's no forbiddenness. It's not forbidden, which I like. So I'm going to do so. I'll, I'll be able to offer BQHN, QHHT. So I'll do in-person stuff, but also do beyond quantum stuff so I can do online because it sucks to live in another country and like you get a fly in just for a session when I can just do it online. Yeah, exactly. That's why I like it. People ask me for hypnosis sessions all the time and I can do it online. I, I don't have any limitation with the way he taught me, but I had to upgrade his teaching to make it better just to get more healing, to get more information out of it. So, you know, I haven't, I haven't modified it ever since, but I, I think QHHT does limit in the fact that it's in person only. And why is that? Like, that's the question I've never been able to ask anybody else. Can you explain it to me? What has been explained to me is if you attempt to put someone number with QHHT and you do it online, what happens if you lose connection with the internet? Because you have to realize you have to do a count out for people. You have to program commands and at the very end so they're not going to suffer mentally with what they just experienced if you have someone experiencing trauma and they're at a moment and then suddenly both of you lose or one of you loses internet connection you know what that would do to the person laying there in trance typically if you're as far as deeply in trance you're waiting for the next command mm -hmm. You don't move forward until you're told to. It's very fixed with trance. Like you don't just to explore it when you're under, you have to help people guide you. Mm -hmm. Remove the guide. Who knows what will happen? Eventually yeah, they'll hook up, but again, you never did a count out. Yeah. You never programmed any script saying you're not going to suffer from any symptoms. You're going to leave this in the past. You're not going to bring it on currently into your life now. Oh, so I do that with my hypnosis. There's a script and a countdown and everything, but I always put protection around them. So if something is ever interrupted, it's not going to affect them, even if it's done online. So there has to be safety measures. With BQHHT, is it the countdown is there, everything is there, but how is it different from QHHT? It expands it into things and topics that we're not allowed to acknowledge. Okay. I don't want to go in detail what those are. Yeah, I understand. QH is a little bit more, it's more of a compilation of other things you can do without saying you cannot use this in QHHT because, like, for example, Reiki. You typically do not use Reiki in QHHT, right? That's I never do. Reality. So it's a different modality. Some practitioners use Reiki. If they get caught using Reiki, they'll be like, you can't do that during a QHHT session. So like BQH, you can do everything. You can do Reiki. Yeah. You can acknowledge entity attachments. You can do all kinds of stuff. So Dolores kept it pure because she got certain results. And it's funny, Dolores came through one day in one of my sessions, she gave me this advice. I'll tell you about this in person. But um, she told me that QHHT is limited 
And she always told people to break her own rules and to expand it. And it's not. It's very fixed. Mm -hmm. If we break the rules like we were told we were allowed to do, that's frowned upon. Yeah, so you have to go to a different modality that's similar, but it takes the brakes off and it adds certain things that you need. Because in the hypnosis that I do, you have to follow the technique, but you can add in healing. I don't use rape. I don't sit there and like rape. This is the rape. There's no time for that. I go on the quantum, wherever the soul trap is, wherever they're suffering. And I say, you need to allow your higher self to do the healing, but also allow me to help assist with this healing for you. Because sometimes their higher self is standoffish for whatever reason. So in that hypnosis, I have to be allowed to go in to help them heal. I know that sounds crazy because that's not how it's done, but that's what works. It, it works more when you go to assist, kind of like when we're doing a body scan. Yes. Sometimes the higher self isn't capable enough to do it without you assisting. So I will literally assist and I will do my own thing. I can't say what that is, but I will assist yeah. the higher self and the higher self will ask me to assist. Yeah. During that healing and do certain things. And it's kind of frowned upon in QHHT because you're not supposed to interfere with the client. The higher self is supposed to heal. But you know what? It doesn't always work. It's kind of like yesterday. I was doing a body scan and through numerous lifetimes ago, she, her mother installed this contract that she was unaware of. It was against her will, but she hid it in a layer of her body. Mm -hmm. And when the higher self scanned the body, I always ask it to not just scan the physical body because the script only says, start the body scan. It's not very specific. No. I always ask it, scan the logoic, scan the buddhic, scan the astral, scan the other templates of the body yes. Yes. that typically wouldn't be acknowledged. And I find a lot of traps, a lot of contracts are stored there and the yeah. higher self doesn't even see it. It blew yeah. me away. The session yesterday, the higher self didn't even see it. And only because I asked them to scan it, they found it. And they said they were unaware it was even there. And it's got through numerous lifetimes and they had no idea that it was installed there. So that is nuts. It, yeah, body code can be hidden in the quantum, in the soul field, or it can be hidden in the body, in the organs, behind the organs, anywhere. And you have to feel it out to find it where the specific entrapment is like the origin source of it and you have to follow the energy and what it is and black magic is the most hardest thing to unravel and curses and hexes is like it's there but it's not something i do anymore as removing that because it's hard it's a hard energy frequency to break when you do that constantly it can wear on the physical body of the practitioner Removing dark magic, blood pathing magic, dark spells with hexing and cursing, like true dark magic. If you don't remove it from your own body after you help them, it stays in your body. So I, I learned long term that I was pulling a lot of energy into my body from the client and I was same. not giving it back to source. Yes, it was same. Literal side effects, physical yes. pain, disorientation. Yes. Craziness. Like it's crazy what you what we do as humans and what we're capable of man yeah exactly we are way more magical than we've ever been told but if you do those kinds of sessions on a daily basis you have to do the cleaning and the removal of it as well and it can wear on you it's wear and tear and i'm like no i'm cutting i'm not doing these anymore for a long time because i don't want to physical to do these for people on a regular basis and people and, don't get it you know they don't get it what it does yeah. to you as a person they think it's just like Oh, thank you for doing the session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't think it really affects you emotionally and physically and it like and stays. It, it does. And you have to clean yourself and remove that energy of that curse from yourself, give it back to source, dissipate. And some of it is so dark and nasty sometimes in layers of blood magic where actual blood, blood magic from a person was used to make a doll of them or their hair or whatever. And you have to unravel that and clean all of it to get them free. And then you have to clean yourself. Doing that on a daily basis, like sometimes being attacked by these curses, you have to repel it and protect yourself. It's a lot. And I'm like, I'm stopping that. If you want me to remove 
Curses, hexes, I am trained for it, magically certified and trained, but I don't do it anymore. I do energy healing, I do hypnosis and the psychic stuff, but I don't touch curses and blood magic and hexing. I can tell you if you have it in your field or whatever and what it is, how it was done, but you have to go to somebody else to get that taken care of and removed because I'm not going to do it. I've, I've, I've had enough, like seven years of that, that was enough for me. Yeah, there's there's long term side effects that no one talks about in these fields. They don't talk about it when they're training you, or it's not in the material. No one talks about it. Yeah, until you experience doing that for seven years, like every two three days, every week. That's the sessions I was doing for seven years. What? Yeah, well, I mean, constantly being attacked by the curses themselves. That's like, oh my god, that's number one. Then having to go take that out. That takes four hours in a session like dealing with that every session for four hours it was just too much it's not that i'm selfish it's just i can't do that anymore yeah even sometimes the money's not worth it even if no. you was charging a thousand dollars a session to me it's not worth it it's too mental it's too physical and it's too emotional because when i'm done with sessions i am mentally gone i am drained i'm like Oh my God, that was a long session. It was such an amazing experience though because I healed them and it's just like, it just lingers with you. And yeah. like them affecting my sleep and that happening on top of me never getting sleep ever, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Like that session yesterday killed me, metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Like I had to invest that amount of time because she flew down all the way from Hawaii. Yeah, like, oh yeah. Like, I have to heal people completely if I'm going to really do this. So like exactly. a person like me, if God forbid I didn't heal you, I won't allow you to leave to think that I can't believe I just flew across the ocean and I didn't get healed. You know what I'm saying? I am connected with these people. So I want to yeah. make sure I give them the most amazing session. Just like what Matthew said, I blew away every expectation or every everything he thought it would be. It was nothing like he thought it would be. Because mm -hmm. I truly care about every freaking person, man. I want to, I desperately want to heal you. Yeah. Because healing you is healing a part of myself. Exactly. I feel the same way. And I think that BQHHT will allow you to heal more people. Because I've seen people heal through the internet with my sessions. They're like, uh, I didn't see you in person. But yes, you saw me in person on the internet because I'm literally in your soul. Yeah, yeah, those sessions do work. It doesn't matter where you are physically. If, if it's on the internet or in person, like it's equally as important. It's equally as viable and exactly. it produces the same results. And I think hypnosis can do that as long as you're not limited by limiters. So I think for you, the upgrade with the BQHHT will give you a far broader sense of healing. Hey, hypnosis. no firewall. Yeah, there's no firewall. Um, my hypnosis, the way my teacher taught me, never had a firewall. It's like you can do it in person or online. There's no limiters. Because when you put limiters, it's like you close off the healing process, honestly. It's like belief systems. I don't believe I'm targeted with the technology, what happened to me. It's stuff that happens in the universe. It's not perfect tech, Your Honor. I know that. I realize that. It's not any one specific source attacking me because if somebody or something was messing with me, I would know. It's just, it's just that energy stream is messing with tech. That's what I sense it is. Plus, I, like, I didn't even know it was Mercury retrograde. I'm like, what is this? All of it is failing. It's breaking down. And Janae is like, that yoke, you're flying the airplane. You're, you're flying the... Uh, fighter jet with the joystick it's like keep keep flying keep sometimes holding steady sometimes the retrograde is so hardcore for me that i want to take the yoke and i want to push it all the way forward and crash into the fucking ground and just in my Which fucking can't. life because it's i can't i physically can't it's you, not with me yeah you have to keep that analogy of steady hands neutral calm and, and i was like she's like giving me a military analogy it's like we're in a simulation and you're driving that yoke and you're like doing the stick steady your craft have to be your your human craft has to be steady you're not flying a ufo where you can go like mm -hmm. you know and it stays steady 
joystick you pull or the yoke you pull and it goes boosh, splat. Yeah, because that's physics. ET tech, there's no physics. Like you can literally make sharp 90 degree turns at a thousand miles an hour and it doesn't nothing to do with the body. There was no momentum inside the ship because all the dampeners, there's nothing inside the ship. Yeah. It's as if we're in this room right now and we're in a battle fighting each other and we're crazy left and right. We're here and there. And we're just both kind of just chilling, just yeah. using our consciousness to go after, but we're not feeling anything in the room. No, 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 no. That's... And I don't think these jets and these fighter jets have consciousness assisted technology yet. So that's like, you're very tactile. You have to be very physically involved. And I think that's great because it prevents you from making mistakes and you learn something from tactile experience. That's wonderful to be on this planet and experience that, but it can be challenging. You pull too hard and I'll bang you to the ground. So. And I actually checked what she said to me. And that lingo, how you work with a joystick, the joystick and the yoke, that's exactly as she explained it. That's in the material, how joysticks and yokes are made and how they function, how you have to fly them. I found the article about it today. I'm like, confirmation, good. What she said to me is actually how it is. As, as I just imagined myself, this website, I have to be careful with this joystick. Don't pull on it. And it helped me to stack my layers of the website. It's like, it's interesting what your higher self can help you with actively. You just got to be able to listen. I said, they came in through the hypnosis. I have two higher selves that I work with. And now the hypnosis unlocked the key to talking to them. Now they just come in. Janaea comes in and just it's mostly her and there's another one um and I just and I just listen because oftentimes they'll have valuable information that I just need in the situational moment to do what I do so you know I'm like wow these gals are really here multi-dimensionally talking to me helping me out why not if it's, it feels right and if it's of the highest good why not no limits we have galactic helpers so it's now it's that i know they're available and i have a team i mm -hmm. look forward to all those interactions in the future well honestly start doing your experimentation with the QHHT to self-induce um, and talk to Candace honestly about what you and I discovered today and about what's going on and see if she can give you any advice on how you can use the B see if BQHHT if you can use it for self-induction or if it's QHHT that would be best like ask her which technique will give you the most leverage to do what you need to do to work with it on your own i'll try it on me because i have a script i can use i can put under 500 people in, a, in an auditorium or something so i can just tailor that to myself so that sounds cool yeah you need to because that will i feel 100 percent that will help you to lift the grays from your soul field and your physicality because you need to take your own healing into your own power to, to remove your limiters on what you need healed because you haven't been healed fully yet. And why? Ask yourself, why haven't you been healed from this? And what do you get back coming from you as a response? It's been blocked. There's nothing truly that can block you unless you're blocking yourself. Apparently my higher self is, remember? Your Early, higher... You were saying that I want information about me, but you're like, you said your higher self won't allow me to look. I'm like, mother. Uh, your higher self will allow you to look and it will tell you the information you need. There's, there's security aspects why it's not telling me that info. Because you will get it privately when you do your own QHHT or BQHHT or whatever you decide as a script. It will tell you. And it told me a few things. It did give a bit of info, 
But that's not, I'm not supposed to know the other stuff. I'm not supposed to know it. Because you'll know it through the work that you'll do with yourself, with the hypnosis. That's for that's your work for you to do with you. And it will tell you. It's not supposed to tell me because I'm not supposed to know that info. I'm not going to do anything bad with it, but it's something that's security level, you know? I'm not meant to know that. And the higher self sometimes, even during QHHT, will block something. There might be questions being asked, but I'm like, no, it's not right for you to know that yet, or it's not time, or you'll know it later as you're meant to. Sometimes, right? So have you ever had in hypnosis the higher yeah, yeah. self? Yeah, they mm -hmm. said that the, that session wasn't the time and they're not meant to know now because it would affect their patterns in the future and create a different timeline or a deviation from what their path was supposed to be. So knowing the answer now would change everything. The higher self isn't blocking you from knowing. It was blocking me from knowing what you, what you need to know from it, working with it, with you and the hypnosis, one-on-one -on -one personally. Hmm. Because it's not blocking you. It's just waiting for you to create a technique to work with it and communicate. So it's not really blocking. Just wouldn't give me the information you need to know through me. It'll give it to you when you do the technique. You, yourself, and I, and your higher self. That true, sacred, private connection. Because some of us are not meant to know your information. It's neat to know. It's neat to know with you, with yourself, and your higher self. Well, I mean, I just assumed with remote viewing that there really are no real blocks. And like anytime someone tries to block something, real good remote viewers can get through it no matter what. They can, but some things about you I'm not meant to know because it's between you and your higher self. That's what it told me. Interesting. And I'm not going to push it to tell me, to tell you, because it's against its free will choice too. Just like in your QHHTs, Sometimes the higher self set will say, not now, maybe later when you're ready. You're ready for it, but you have to do it. And that's privately. what they literally say. Next time, the next session, maybe after you listen to this recording and you prepare yourself and you come to other understandings, it'll be authorized in the future. Exactly. But it's already authorized for you to get access to, but you have to do it through your self-healing of your own induction, of your own hypnosis, to connect with your higher self and let the higher self tell you and ask your higher self questions during the session. You're doing a session is just going to be quite different because it's self hypnosis. Master it, it will heal you and your higher self will give you answers. You're not meant to do it with somebody else as a third party interface in between inducing these sessions. You're supposed to do it for yourself, with yourself and your higher self. Those are three components, ingredients for you to do. And see what happens. You can't fail an experiment that's supposed to help you heal. Just try it and see what happens. Because that's what you need at this time. I'm freaking stoked to try it. I never thought about it. So again, you get that point of view from someone else. You're like, thank you, man. That is an awesome idea. And I think you would need to know that point of view with somebody who does hypnosis and can like understand these weird little idiosyncrasies that come along with hypnosis and higher selves. Because if if I didn't do hypnosis on myself and others, I couldn't, I don't think I could have this conversation with you because I wouldn't understand what happens in hypnosis these protocols and what's involved. Like, I'm not a fake in hypnosis because I know what is involved in protocols. Mine is different than QHHT, but I've experienced having QHHT and doing other hypnosis protocols, being taught different ways of doing hypnosis. So this is why I can talk to you on this level, because I understand the components of hypnosis. Whereas maybe... A psychic wouldn't if they don't do hypnosis protocols. Because it's like, it's not working with the other. I think maybe it could work with Candace because she is highly, highly trained well in what she does. So with her, it might, she could maybe take you under. 
So I think her name came up because she could potentially take you under because of her experience. Proper training. And she's like, she's always motivated to help. She does it correctly. But I think you need to try to do it yourself with yourself to have that deep healing and connection. You know, heal thyself and you're healed. I think that's, Jesus said that. Heal thyself and you're healed. Don't depend on me walking around behind me to just notice me and heal you. Because people were walking behind him. Heal me, heal me. Put your hand on my head and do it. Heal yourself. Because he wasn't always there to heal others. He was a busy man walking around the world, spreading the message and doing healings. He's like, you have the power to heal yourself. Use your energy to heal and you're healed. Don't depend on outside external sources. You are your power to heal. You are your healer. How does that resonate? Big time. Okay. Try it out. It's an experiment, man. It's a life experiment of healing. I must have felt I would try it until it works. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, say just nightly if I have to do my guided meditation and my, my induction and just... See what happens. I did it as a strict regimen for four years. Because the memories of the SSP stuff, it was coming in and out sporadically. I'm like, what the fuck did I do here that I cannot repeat? What I did on Mars and I cannot repeat in this human world. I want to know. I want my healing. It's like self-hypnosis. Because I couldn't depend on my shaman teacher every time to induce me. I needed to do it on like more than what he could come in and do his sessions because he lived in one town and I in another. So it's like two, three hour drive just to come to see me or me to come to see him. It's like, uh, they're got it. And, and his technique allowed for self induction. There's no forbidden anything in these protocols. It just took time for me to, to get it right. Like the pitch, how long do I need to hear myself talking? You know, that stretching. Of, of the the induction sequence get that in start recording yourself doing the induction like so you could hear back the method and then put that on for yourself and go into it it works i mean if 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 it didn't work on me i wouldn't have done it that's the only way i could access anything i wanted for knowledge and healing It really was the only way. And I'm telling you this from the truth of my heart. <laughs> I couldn't stand listening to other people, other hypnosis practitioners, except my shaman teacher. And I tried Marilyn Danke because, like, what did I have to lose? I did learn more about myself and my past lifetimes, which was interesting to me. Why not? That is valuable to me in a hypnosis session, not just the healing, but knowing past lives I value that so that was that was fine and it's it's recorded anybody can listen to that hypnosis session it's public it was like no whatever nothing to lose right except help yourself be the change you want to see in the world exactly be to, be the change for yourself service to self is also service to healing Service to thyself and service to others. It's a balance between both of those things. So I think that's a good point to end at, because I think we've gone like four or five hours now. It's It's been a talk, man. Like, I, I can't imagine what we covered in this amount of time. Like, it's a lot of different threads. Mm -hmm. I think it could help anybody. Like, anybody wanting to learn about hypnosis anybody wanting to learn about any of these topics i think this comp like because i'm not going to edit this just edit the beginning and put it on rumble and let people listen to this that's what i like i don't edit nothing i just oh start to finish i put the full recording online even me and laura shows we never edit anything there we you go we just we're the rebel collective we're not going to censor ourselves will we say it is what it is if we say something that was a little bit private oh well we're not going to edit it out hello world we just told you something private about ourselves so there's a there's a spontan 
spontaneity in it. It's fun. Yeah. The thing um, is, I haven't told you anything private about me because I've talked about this publicly <laughs> before. So you're getting things that is out there on me already on the internet. You're mm -hmm. just getting a bit of a deeper dive. So nothing to hide. And it'll go on Rumble because I'm not going to put it on YouTube. That will be freaking taken down immediately, I think. <laughs> so um, and I don't want to lose YouTube right now. So I'll put it on Rumble. People can go listen and get educated on whatever they want, what we talked about. Right? Let me know when you're going to post it and I'll start disseminating through everywhere it needs to go, man. Sounds super exciting. Yeah, I'll try by next week to have it out. Awesome. No well, rush, man. Time is a construct. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, uh, I will be going away for uh, my hernia experience. So I want to. I want to. I'll send you love and white light to start now and to heal that and to integrate yeah. the lesson there. And yeah, well, yeah. Well, it's 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 part of the journey, and I don't like I don't like traditional medicine much, but uh, it's part of my journey, and I'll learn what I need to from it. Oh, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to know Drago Reed on a much deeper level today. It was a ple pleasure to know Eliana for the first time ever. So thank you. Thank, Truly thank you. Yeah. I'm studying. I'm starting to stutter a little because I should eat something. So I'm just going to go grab a snack. And I think you might need water and a snack too, right? And a bathroom break by this point. Totally. We can hold it in longer than most because we're trained. People like us can hold it because it's what we do. It's like we don't have time to go to a bathroom break or whatever. We can't feel nothing when we are doing interviews. It's like, yep. I could totally have used the bathroom 30 minutes ago, but like, I'll use the bathroom whenever. Yeah, but when you start to stutter, that's a signal you need food and bathroom and water. So <laughs> we'll, we'll end it here and we'll come back and do more, I think, because we... These conversations are awesome, man. Yeah, and especially the Anunnaki stuff. I look forward to, especially that compilation video. I don't even know what I talked about, but it'd be kind of cool to watch myself edit it. I, I listened to it fully, and I, I only kept the Anunnaki stuff, the real stuff, like the history. I did cut out your personal information about the accident and stuff. So people, I'll link that episode so people can listen to the whole thing. And hear all of it. I just took the snip about Anunnaki, the real, the other interesting bits in history. Because you're like an open encyclopedia source, man. You're so learned. You just pull this stuff and reference and reference. I've studied hard as hell, man. Like, I feel that I'm writing, you mentioned the Encyclopedia Britannica. I feel that I'm writing the Encyclopedia Britannica in these volumes of books. And I could tell by what you're saying, because you're talking true history, that I was just researching for the last two years, like reading that similar stuff. Yeah, I read it from Zach Zechariah Sitchin's history, but it, he doesn't deviate that far off from events. So it's like, I feel he had a genuine connection to tell the truth, but it was a little skewed in his personal thoughts. But it's the history is close. So it's like, and I read several sources of that history about Anunnaki. And you're like, he's telling the truth because he studied the history. It's not this convoluted history of what's coming out now. So it's, it's I guess it's, people watch too many YouTube videos about Anunnaki instead of studying the actual tablets. That's the problem. Well, they listen to one galactic princess for Anunnaki history. And that's where they're getting their history from. They're not even looking at other YouTubes about Anunnaki history. They're just listening to the cult of personality. That is giving you a weird history because it's a fractal virus controlling her perception of what the Anunnaki are and what she's experiencing. That's what I'm getting, that it's a fractal AI virus thing. What what are you getting? What is that thing that is talking to her? I would say that's a private conversation. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, I, I freely said that I think it's a fractal virus. So mm -hmm. I have nothing. I've, I've, that's what I'm perceiving, that it's AI control of a, 
of, of, of a fractal thing coming into physicality to give something. That is a component that would be a component of an implant. Yeah. Talked about. So like that's that would be a side effect that you would have to accept as a possibility. And if you can't accept that, you're truly not intelligent. There, she is not accepting of it. She says her implant is pure and that it's pure connection. It's not channeling. It just comes in as as a as a fractal virus source that is possessing free will soul, and it's coming in as as a holographic simulation, perpetuated exactly. perpetuated as a physical reality when it is not that way. I agree with that one hundred percent. That's as far as I'll take it. That's what I'm getting from it. And she's free to experience that if that pleases her. But it is not the fact of reality what's being presented as, as a cult consciousness perception. Follow what's being given because it's the truth, the absolute truth, when it's not the truth completely. Cult of reality perception. What the, are, truth, the truth and the truth is never subjective. It always needs to just remain the truth. So that's what we're here to find, the truth, period. But is is that experience the real truth or is it like a perceived reality? Perceived truths are not true truths. Yeah. There's only truth, right? Yeah. And there's perception. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. There's only, there's only universal truth. If something happened, it only happened one way. Different perceptions would say it happened different ways. Mm -hmm. Because they believe it doesn't mean that's the truth. Yeah. It's only to them, but that's not the universal truth. Yeah, because they're having an experience in their own little world with whatever. You remove perception, yeah. you find real truth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't doubt that she's having an experience of some sort. I just don't think it's the real Anunnaki. That's all I'm saying. It's not the real Anki, as Anki was. He's definitely not a gray, so. No, no, and he's definitely not bald. I remember Anki having a full set of hair, but she says that beings can change and their appearances can change. So it's now a bald Anki that's kind of frail looking in this no. robe thingy. I don't see it. I don't see it that way, too, but that's her experiences, and she's allowed to have them. God bless her. Exactly. Bless her. Like, I don't have anything negative to say. It's just, again, different opinions, different views. We're allowed to have that with free will, and I should not be punished for not agreeing with something. Because I've done a lot of research, and a lot of my research contradicts certain things. So I should be free to say that to the public, and I shouldn't be demonized for it. No, you so shouldn't I attack anybody. I don't attack any individ individuals. Like I said, it's not who I am. I'm not no. here for that. I'm not here to battle you. I'm just here to tell my story, present information I've learned, uh, have awesome conversations with people and help heal people, man. I don't have any other expectations. Yeah. And as a researcher, I just like to find some truth in what is reality. And if, if it contradicts what's being put out there right now, I'll just say it. Just like, I don't think that's the way it is and leave it at that. That's it. You and I can have a quite interesting conversation, even if we agree or disagree on points, but we're not attacking each other. We're exactly. Just... That, that's what, that's who should we, we should be like this whole attacking crap. It needs to end because it's like, it's, it's like the new wokeism in the in ufology field. Anytime you're, again, you talk against what someone says, they try to cancel you. Yeah. It's beyond ridiculous. Me right. having these opinions, I've been attacked by different people because I, I don't agree. And it's ridiculous. I'm like, you have no right to even say that to me. I don't care about your opinion. Nothing you will say to me will convince me anything else because more than likely, I've done a hundred times more research than you have in that field. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot. It's to focus on, I don't have a photographic memory. I have to constantly read stuff over and over and over and over and then I can quote it. I do have a photographic memory and I remember a lot, but I also want to give people a voice to listen to what they've researched and discuss it intelligently and openly. It's like, oh, don't censor that because you're having an open conversation. I like to hear history of what is and what people have researched. 
So with you having that dialogue, I know you've studied it and it's not coming from a repetitive computer format of something. You're genuinely have studied the history. It took me two years to study this and I'm still studying it to catch up to what you've been studying for 10 years. Like for me, it took two years to, to understand what this is based on what I started hearing from her and it didn't sound right to me. So like I have to investigate what is right and wh what's going on to understand anything of anything. What is this? Like, what were these beings? Because I wasn't familiar with the Anunnaki, except the warning from Planetary Corp. Not, do not engage the Anunnaki because they want mm -hmm. to trick you and steal from you. I'm like, what? Okay, thank you. But I, it doesn't mean anything to me because it does not apply. It did not apply to me in the programs until I came face to face with Anunnaki stuff. Now it's like, oh, yeah, that does mean something to me, and I'll explore it. Why not, right? So I think I think it's pretty good conversation, very intelligent conversation and open-minded. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and and vice versa to you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I hope you have a beautiful, blessed night. It was a good talk. I look forward to our next one, Eliana. Me too. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everyone. Bye.